All right, stream. Uh, so we are back today. Today is actually the Rimian ship SDM for April, but I wasn't able to be on early today. So uh, this is the first one I missed in September. So it'll be interesting to see who all participates and who all uh, wins. Not saying that I was guaranteed to win or anything like that by any means. So there are a lot of people that can put up really high scores, uh, but it will be interesting to see what it looks like, what the charts look like later today. Uh, but yeah, since I wasn't able to be on early, man, it already feels like it's been a long day. I drink more anime girl type. No, today I'm trying uh, a new one I got this week called Emotional Damage. It's Strawberry Peach, which is fine. It's fine so far. It's not one of my favorites. It's not a bad one though. Um, honestly, if you want a peach flavored one, I would I would very much suggest getting Brand Risk instead. Um, but anyway, we are going to. Uh, I already feel tired. Like it already feels like it's been a long day and it's only eleven. But hopefully that'll go by the wayside once we get in. Uh, how's it going? Paul, Christoph, William, welcome in. Little girl, fiddle, their nickel, welcome in. There's something wrong with the stream or Steam Workshop. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I hardly ever use it, so I'm not sure. Both of them. Real challenge, starting four hours late. <laughs> Wait, what did I just hear? Why did it? Why did my alert minimize? It doesn't want me to know. Caboodle, thank you for the 11 months. Phelan. Thank you for the forty-five dollar donation. Thank you, Phelan. Resub bits and a donation. Chip lunch in the fridge. <laughs> uh, thank you, Phelan. Italia thirteen. A baker's dozen of months. Thank you, also Italia. Thank you, Caboodle, and thank you again, Phelan. All right. Uh, let's open this here. Notifications broke now. I hear them. Do you not hear them? Go on, Trisha. Uh, again, so for some reason, it doesn't show me the, um, the English version of your name. I don't know why on alerts. It just doesn't. And so I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know the name, <laughs> but I appreciate the four months also. I'm sure when you type, I'll see it and I'll, I'll know. But for some reason, my alert will not do the, um, the translated name. So, uh, but thank you. Thank you for the four months. Oh, I have, um, I have sound. I have music off on RimWorld right now because I was making guides the other night. There we go. Like, this sounds eerie. What's going on here? All right, let's get this loaded up. We can talk about um, DLC and all that stuff. Do, do, do. Anomaly is out on the 11th, but we are playing 1.5. Guacamole Gamer Fart. I, did a, I didn't get a whole tow of it. That was one of my samples when I first got a sample, and it was, it was fine. Yeah, it was decent. Of the guides, thank you, thank you. Yeah, two new guides are out. One about clothing, one about uh, the shotgun kill box. But speaking of kill boxes, this run is a no kill box run. And I also told people we do no kill box and we would do specifically um, charge rifles. So here we are, no kill boxes and charge rifles. And we're pretty late. We took the 11th and 12th off. Um, yeah, so uh, anomaly on the 11th, on the 11th. New colony option keeps happening every time your guys die. It does, yeah. Yep. We tested that, so... Uh, yes, for anyone that doesn't know, there's a there's a thing in 1.5 where if all of your colonists die, you get a... And there's no, you know, man in blacks on cooldown or whatever. You can't get a man in black. You'll get a pop-up that says game over, and it'll say, do you want to wait eight hours or whatever to uh, start again? And then you can roll up to six new colonists. In fact, at the beginning, that was that was worthless if, um, if you were killed by mechs because mechs would never leave. So I did reach out in the bug support or bug discord, development discord, whatever you want to call it, the developers. And I was like, um, I probably won't use this feature very much anyway, but this feature is going to be useless for a lot of people because anyone that dies by mechs, it doesn't matter because when they come back, the mechs will just kill them again. And so they did make it so that if you get a game over and it's by mechs, mechs will leave after two hours. Explain why you took the 11th to 12th off. <laughs> but yeah, two new guides are up, a clothing guide and a kill box guide. When is the vampire edit coming? I've I've been talking to the editor like every day. He's saying now that it should be done on Monday. Which, yeah, um, nothing against the editor. I don't really want to get into that side of it, but it is really disappointing that the new style of edit is going to be isn't going to be out until a couple days before the expansion. Because once the expansion's out, most people are going to be watching expansion content, and I don't know if that'll give enough days to get a real good test. So, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. It's, um, it's unfortunate is all I'll say. But, yeah, it should be out Monday. That's what I've been told most recently. Uh, did they 
pick spamming reroll on the game over pawns? They were all being saved to disc before. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah I didn't notice that. It's interesting. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Box. It's just a kill box because enemies are stuck in there with you. <laughs> They're stuck outside. Be cooler if the wanderers arrive in Outlander clothing instead of Synthread. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's kind of a cool idea, though. Especially for uh, people that are playing more casually and stuff. So, what were we wanting to do? Um, I'm not sure I'm going to get very more, many more people, honestly. I'll probably just keep with what we have. So, I think I'm going to start working on getting us ready for whatever ending we choose. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get... We got a lot of steel coming in now, so I'm going to get this all steeled out. Uh, we want to start working on bionics. We haven't already. It looks like we have not started working on bionics. We also got a healer mech serum and a res serum recently. It's kind of kind of crazy. Don't see those too often. So I guess we'll start working on bionic stuff. Looks like we are working on another charge rifle. So let's go ahead and do... Oh, how many crafters do we have in this? We actually have more than that. Um... Like, we could put more benches down. Fabrication benches. Hmm. I'm not so sure I'm going to research anything else, honestly. Like, yeah, there. If, if we got Cataphract, that'd be awesome, but I don't think we need it necessarily. So I might just get rid of those research benches and put another set of fabrication up there. Yeah, I think we're pretty good on this. What's out on Monday? Hopefully the single page edits, but we'll see. Dragon Tunnel Guide. Can't quite figure out why the unpowered turret is versus powered. Can you elaborate? Unpowered turret causes collision. Powered turret doesn't. That's the only reason you want it unpowered. So you want to cause collision? Unpowered turrets through a door does that. Powered doesn't. Powered does the opposite, so. You want it to be unpowered because it doesn't cause collision otherwise. Massive wall. That's a massive wall, yeah. Very, uh, very, like, long. A very long wall. Alright, so, yeah, let's get a couple more of these down. I know it's really spread out. Maybe I'll put them down here and I'll move these shelves up, which feels terrible, but... In fact, I'm almost... I'd all, almost rather just rebuild the shelves. <laughs> I know that's not quite... I think I'm going to. Instead of, like, clicking to move all these, I can just... Yeah, I think I will. I think I'll just be semi-lazy about this. They can make some more. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't feel like doing it. I could uninstall... Oh, no, screw it. I'm not... I don't want to take the time. Can't be bothered. We're gonna do this whole row. I know we don't have to do that, those end ones, but oh well. Oh well. Alright. We'll do another beacon up here. Good enough. Powered but enclosed. Well, enclosed in the sense that you have to have at least a door for it to see through even the door is closed yeah uh and it's yeah I, it's it's really unfortunate that it's gonna be out only a couple days before the expansion so i'm not gonna get a really good test i mean i can still test like day one versus day one but yeah it's uh it's unfortunate so i don't know this is what it is i guess Uh, Cowboy Kai, 33 months. Frosty Assassin, thank you for the seven months. Alexander Grayson, thank you for the resub also. Two months, two months. Very much appreciated. And you know what? Screw it. We'll just put these down here. I don't care. It's good enough, good enough. It's like to move multiple shelves. Uh, we can't really... That's yeah, not really what the, like, development bug Discord is for. Like, it's more about feedback of the stuff that is already... Uh, being done and, um, you know, bugs and bug fixes and stuff like that. So 
I mean, I wish I could just go in there and just request things that I wish the game had, you know, but it's not quite what that's for. All right, let's go ahead and start out with... A lot of times I'll start Bonic Arms. I'm just going to go straight to Legs. Let's do until we have X. We're going to put this to, like, 4. And we're just going to paste this to all of them. Uh, we're pretty close to Traders. Yeah, you can't copy all the bills at once. Yeah, I know. That'd be nice, too. That'd be nice, too. We're really close to Traders. These guys have just reset. They're both reset, so going and grabbing some advanced components would be good. We have excess food, so we could take the excess food, and I think we have some excess tea. Legendary charge rifle. Nice. What's the art on that? An engraving on this weapon depicts Stoltz places placing unraveling plants and self improvement. Back. Oh, it's a book. Okay, placing a book back on a shelf. I was like, what? A sense of accomplishment radiating from her under the soft glow of a reading lamp. I sparkle with newfound wisdom. Okay. A little, a little overboard, I think, there. Surely the book wasn't that good, right? Is there people can request features or something like that? Not that I know of, not really. Not that I know of. They'd probably be, like, inundated with... That. Man, we got lots of good weapons. Holy crap. Most of these are... Most of these are masterwork. Wow. I didn't re remember that we got almost all Masterwork charge rifles. Our damage output is ungodly. Love the Rimworld Guide. Thanks. Yeah, two new ones just came out. Uh, for anyone that didn't see, I put out a clothing guide and a shotgun tunnel guide. Mm -hmm. Laugh when I will. Like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, an anomaly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go get some trading done. I remember right, we were sending out Badger. Badger, yeah. Alrighty, let's uh, send you out with some meals. We'll send you out with a bunch of potatoes to trade off. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we got lots of Psychic Tea. We'll send you off with like 700 of that. Um, oh, we got our Persona Core. Forgot about that. Nice. Maybe we'll go ahead and make the ship engine. Uh, we could also get rid of a bunch of assault rifles. We could dump... Well, those ones will just smelt, I guess. But I told people I wouldn't stay on assault rifles this time, that we'd switch to something else. It feels bad, though, because I can't kite, so... But I'll do it. I'll stay on it. Just for this playthrough. Just for this one. All right. Go ahead and send you out. We'll have him stop at both trade places. Somebody copying the Dwellers run currently. No Sunblocker. Want to help out? Uh, so they changed it so that off-map Sunblockers can't occur if you already have Darkness. So you're more likely to get Darkness if you go Fluid and then don't go into Darkness until a Sunblocker hits. I don't know if that's, uh, that's what you have going on or not. Thousand hours, rain, never mirror the tunnel. To worry about friendly fire. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about too much, especially depending on as long as you're doing the peaking thing. And yeah, it should it should be okay for the most part. Base is looking good. Yeah, the hourglass is almost done, which means anomaly is coming. Is it news? Yeah. So when uh, when IDLG first came out, some blockers didn't care if you had darkness or not, and it. I guess what they considered too strong so they changed it to make it so uh, off map sun blockers don't occur if you already have darkness but you can't you can't get met clusters with sun blockers still it's just relatively rare but usually if you're going to go into darkness I would suggest going fluid first what's ideology we went fluid min max ideology so this is, uh, this is more of a 1.5 test than anything. This isn't like a specific kind of themed run. It's just a no kill box 1.5 test to see if the no kill box style worked fine. And also made my, I'm, I'm making myself not use, um, assault rifles in the, in the late game. You know, it sucks to do so. I really like kiting things as you probably are aware. How does that triple aircon with door in the middle work? 
Doors in RimWorld count as a one-by-one one room, and it just disperses heat. So that just, it even works under Overhead Mountain. Done. Powered turret still cause collision if you have a power turret somewhere else. No, not if they can pass to it. Yeah, we talked about dying the floor, yeah. Might, I might try to make time for that today. But no, uh, if you have a passable power turret, that'll undo collision. You think you messed up buying all the... Yeah, it can... Well, I don't know that it would be a mess up, but yeah, I can absolutely understand how, like, it'd be overwhelming buying the DL all the DLC at the get-go, yeah. All right, we're just going to go ahead and buy just the two advanced components, and then I'm going to pop over here... get theirs too. Same range assault rifle, so would an assault rifle kill box without collision be a good idea? Not without collision, because as soon as someone... If they all come in, as soon as they enter combat, they're going to balloon out. It, it depends on your difficulty a little bit, but if you're fighting like 200 raiders, and they come into your kill box, all grouped up, and then they hit combat and they balloon out, they will walk... They'll just encompass all your, your people and kill them. If you want to see... Um, how I ended up setting up a minigun kill box. Uh, go to my dwarf run and click on the very last episode. We did a lot of ship launch with a minigun setup. That was really fun and really good. Uh, but yeah, you can use kind of a traditional setup with miniguns if you want, but I would still cause collision. Do a Coca-Cola bottle base instead. <laughs> How do you use your center drop? strat that uses power turrets you put that in a different spot if you're doing a kill box so basically not you don't have to have your entire base open for for a raid to attack so basically you have an open path from where raiders can spawn through your kill box into where pawns are going to be like your barracks or where junk is but then outside of that you can have whatever you want outside of that is where i will put a turret um for them to go to so it just depends on your specific base setup yeah but you can absolutely use both. You just have to be cautious about the pathing from your kill box if you're using one to that turret. Uh, in fact, in the single phase run, we almost lost because I accidentally had an open path to a powered turret. Uh, I won't spoil it too much for those that are waiting on the single phase edit, but it was really awful. I just literally forgot that I had uh, the door open to the powered turret, and that's what happened. They ballooned over the top of us, melee locked everyone. It was really, uh, really not good. <laughs> when you have the issue in that case where you play on Strive to Survive, I mean, you can try it, but... the If the minigun hits... If, if you shoot the minigun at the first person that comes in, it's going to go through all of its shots, right? Even if it downs them, even if it doesn't, it's going to keep shooting and the next person going to come in. But yeah, the problem with miniguns are the war is the warm-up cooldown time, obviously in the Force Mist Radius. So you don't have to go all miniguns if you want to go for a minigun kill box. You can do a mix if you want. Um, in the dwarf run, we did uh, we did kind of a mix. Basically, we're using miniguns and, sh and chain shotguns most mostly. It was pretty fun. Defeat on losing is fun before you get AR as a tribal start. Happened with you. Social fight. Social fight. So it, it depends. I don't, I don't know what your stuff looks like, but basically what you can do with tribal on just losing is fun, not 500%. If you want, if you're having trouble with it, what I would suggest is working on wealth management. Like you can watch my wealth guide if you want, but basically stay low in wealth until you get research done. That's the easiest way. Just literally make a small barracks, plant flowers inside of it, only grow enough food to feed your people, make a small trap tunnel, and then just get research done. And your raids will be pretty small all the way up until you get research done. That's that's what I used to do every single time. I don't do as much wealth management in the early game anymore because I have other strategies and tactics and stuff that I've gotten better at over the years. But the easiest way to progress if you're starting out on like 500% or losing his fun or whatever is keep wealth super low. Don't have any wealth unless you need that thing or, you know, like it's helping defend. I always call it wealth that defends itself. So like having wealth in weapons and armor 
in bionics and stuff is great. Having wealth in like extra walls or fancy flooring when you don't need it yet, just it just makes there be more raiders, right? So, oh, they only had one component. That sucks. All right. Uh, I guess we'll just get other component. We have so much steel, so maybe I should just grab like gold instead. Uh, let's check the base scans here. We got uranium in the walls. We got so much steel. There's 300 golds. Lots of plasteel. Yeah, I think just grabbing the steel is probably the... Or, I mean, the gold is probably the way to go. I'll just save us from having to mine that. We just mine plasteel. Someone was saying that they feel like plasteel is being scanned a lot more. It, it kind of looks like that to me, too, but... I wasn't sure. I was like, uh, maybe not, but... In this run, we do have a lot of skin and plasteel. Uh, all right, we'll do that. Buy the gold if we can. Yeah. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, like I said, is um, if you're newer to those difficulties and trying to, trying to push the difficulty up a little bit, I would mainly suggest Working on, uh, working on wealth first. My expectation starts to call me wealth is 160. Mid expectations. Yeah, if I'm saying low wealth, I'm not talking like 80. I'm not talking 160. I'm talking like I would get to ship launch with 80,000 wealth. <laughs> like a long time ago. Like, this is my kind of have a chill vibe once you get things set up. Yeah, I kind of like the lighting too. Like at night, desert sand lighting. I'm enjoying 1.5. 1.5 is good overall so far. Like, used to when I would play super low wealth on 500%, like, if you go back to my my earliest 500% wins on YouTube, I would stay on dirt floors all the way to ship launch. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you have to do that or should do that. Oh, that's the biggest blight of all time. <laughs> um, I'll just let them deal with it normally. I'm not going to micromanage it. But I don't, I don't play that way anymore, generally. But you can. It still works. It still works. All right, let's turn off sowing while they're doing this. Oh, wait, at least they're not replanting. Uh, gravy girl and melee. So we'll get their gold as well. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be that extreme. But if you want, if it's like your first time doing those difficulties and you want to go that extreme with it, it definitely makes it easier. There is no doubt about that. All right, that's good enough. Oh, we don't even have enough. Hang on. Let's get whatever we can. All right, that should keep us making advanced components for quite some time. Get the lowest possible average wealth. Yeah, that's how I used to play every time. Doesn't dirty floor contribute to food poisoning? No, you're mistaken. So food poisoning from dirty cooking area has to be negative two or worse. Dirt floor is negative one, and it doesn't track dirt. So... Actually, the most efficient kitchen is a big room with a dirt floor because dirt doesn't get dirty. You can still get uh, from um, incompetent cook, but no, it's a misconception that cooking in a dirt floor room has higher dirt chance. It, it doesn't. It's a negative one instead of a negative two. So uh, we're going to need to mine the plasteel now. It's a lot of plasteel over there. Jeez. Nope. No extra food poisoning just for a dirt floor room, believe it or not.
Thanks for ruining bedrooms for you. Hey, play however is fun with you. <laughs> Let's go next. Uh, Jay, thank you for the 29 months. Jack, thank you for the 24. Jim, 41 months of Ember guesses. That's right. You know, thank you for the 16 months. It's a long time, guys. But Jerm, Jerm, uh, my wife and I should be able to go see Godzilla Kong on Tuesday. So looking forward to that. You think it's unintended? It's not like the developers don't know that dirt floor is negative one cleanliness and food poisoning is negative two. It's been like that since the like beta of the game, so it feels intended, but I guess most people just don't do it, so don't worry about it. But not only is it going to add to the other DLCs, I don't know. Yeah, I'm hoping, but I'm not getting my hopes up. So what I'm really what would be really awesome is if like there's a couple things with each DLC, but I'm not getting my hopes up. We've had we've only recently started to get a little bit of stuff a crossover. So for anyone that doesn't know, originally they were like talking how they didn't want to do any crossover because they didn't want people to feel like they had to buy multiple DLCs to get the full benefit of a DLC. That, that was basically the talk, right? And so then Biotech came out and we were like, well, isn't it kind of stupid that the um, like tribal parents have kids that can't don't have tribal meditation like that makes no sense. You have a tr you have a tribe. They have children, and those children won't meditate at the anima tree. They never learn how to do natural meditation. That doesn't make any sense at all. And so they changed that. And then after they changed that, they added a few ideologies that had crossover biotech. And so that's given us a little bit of hope that they'll do some. But I'm not giving my get my hopes up at a lot. Like it would be awesome if we get like new memes, new precepts. That would be excellent. A couple new genes would be awesome. Um, even like a couple new side casts, like a couple of small things from each DLC would be incredible. But I'm, like I said, I'm not getting my hopes up. Traditionally, I haven't really been too keen on doing that sort of stuff. But yeah, who knows? We can hope, we can hope. Actually, yeah, it's fun. Some new genes also. Am I today? Uh, I'm okay. I'm feeling too super well, but we'll make it. Ideology getting the most deal cross DLC stuff. Yeah, ideology and bio between ideologies, memes, you know, and um, and genes. Those two DLCs are the most customizable for the game so far. And right now, based on the previews, it doesn't look like doesn't look like Anomaly is going to give a tons of themed options, customizable, like, like with the genes and ideologies, you can mix and match so many things that you could have hundreds of playthroughs where you have different setups, right? It doesn't look like Anomaly is adding that sort of stuff, which is unfortunate, but hey, we still have one more preview. We'll see. We'll see. They don't do it because it blocks content well if that was the case you would think things like flood floodlights and wall lights and stuff like that wouldn't have been added to the base game and they wouldn't have rehauled all of ranching for the base game yeah so the doesn't really go that kind of conspiracy theory stuff doesn't really go with how they've done base game patches but if that was the case though like if, if they had made you pay for all that stuff too i would be like yeah you know what maybe you're right <laughs> you're right not only it looks more in line with royalty, yeah, it looks like um, it looks like a souped-up royalty, and not in the themes or anything, but in the story scope and theme of play, the theme of story, and not like one for one royalty is, you know what? I mean. Obviously, you know what I mean. But yeah, I agree. It looks like uh, if they had released royalty today with all of their current staff and and income and stuff. I have a feeling it would be more like in in the scope of anomaly. Yeah. I have royalty. Then why would you care if there's cross content that helps uh, casters or imperials? I'm yeah, not me, but that's just how some people are. I don't know. I made a joke in the most recent, so <laughs> really didn't see this. Why is your animals white? It's one point five. That's your sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheep are mine. Yep. Um, anyway, for anyone that didn't see, when I did the, the 1.5, uh, 
or no, sorry, the, the third preview thing. You can see it on YouTube. If you click on live tab, I did a overview of preview, preview two and three. My God, Rosa. <laughs> uh, Rosa, thank you for the $100 donation. Jesus. Thank you, Rosa. And Rosa's been such a big supporter of the stream over all these years. Um, Yeah, thank you, Rosa. I can't even begin to imagine how much support you've... I added it up in my head that you've given over all the years, so very much appreciated. Uh, where was I? <laughs> he just blindsided me with that. Oh, when I was doing the preview, um, I made a joke during the preview because for anyone that didn't see, preview number three uh, talks about a ritual that allows you to recruit unwaveringly loyal. And I was like, just wait, I can see it now in the comments. We're going to have people that are like, oh, they add unwaveringly loyal to the base game and they sell a way to get rid of it. But you can turn unwaveringly loyal off in the options anyway in the base game. And we mentioned that and I was just joking around about it. And um, sure enough, there's like, there's probably like six different uh, people in the comments talking about it. <laughs> so yeah, no matter, like I said, I would hate to be a game developer. Uh, you just can't win. There's just no winning. There's no winning at all. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just basically don't look at anything that people say. That's probably what I would do. Back when my wife was doing a lot of book writing and stuff, uh, when we were publishing books, uh, no matter how good the book came out and how much praise it got, it's not everyone's going to like it. And everyone's going to, some people are going to find faults with it and be upset about it, right? Or think it's not worth the value. And so we very early on just stopped reading all reviews. Like it's just, so I'm, I'm guessing quite a few developers do that too, where it's just like, all right, let's do our thing. It's going well. You know, we'll just, we'll just let it ride and we won't care about what, within reason, I should say. Can't please everyone, yeah. It's the same in anything, yeah. Any job, it's just the same in life, yeah. Rosa, tier three as well. You just lost one. Thank you, Rosa. 37 months, man. Yeah, that's a long time. That's a lot of support. Thank you, Rosa. Rosa's a legend, yeah. Rosa is a legend. Legend. Everyone wants to feel right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We can only speculate, which is, you know, I don't mind speculating. I'm not, I don't try to shut down conversation because it's speculation as far as like what the DLC might have and might not. It's fun, right? That's why I do those preview videos. But yeah, who knows? Thanks, Hans. <laughs> yeah, I wish they would let you just auto set the Twitch Prime, but I guess Amazon would lose too much money. And, you know, as we know, Amazon's not doing well. They have very little money. Shut down the conversation. Go on, Ethan. How bad it can be. We can mostly do... Mostly read everything, but the most insane people will keep... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like me with the YouTube comments these days. Like, YouTube comments haven't bothered me a long time. And I actually have a folder where I save the most insane YouTube comments to look at. Oh, yeah, I know. Thrones of Decay coming out at the worst time possible. Oh, uh, man. I'll probably be doing um, Rimworld DLC stuff probably daily for like a month at least. And then I hope to split the week over and, and uh, do Thrones of Decay, which might be a good thing because traditionally the Warhammer DLCs have always come out buggy when things have been overpowered or whatever. So it might be a good thing, honestly, to wait and see if they do any like post Thrones of Decay patches. So. Alligator Lizard, they were 16 months ago, Alligator. You'd love to spend some time looking through insane comments. Oh man, I've got some really crazy ones. I've got some that are trolls, of course, and you can tell they're trolls. And then I got some that you would think they were trolls until you look into it further. It's not a beanie, it's a toque. Jeff wants to go to Mars someday. <laughs> Building those bunkers. Do I know when the last preview's coming? No, I don't. Um, I'm actually surprised. Well, I don't know. Let's see. The game comes out on Thursday. So far, they've been like about four or five days out. Let's see. Saturday to Thursday. Yeah, I don't know. Early week, I guess. YouTube comments get bad for rumor content. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What? I've had like absolute craziness. Craziness. I'm not going to get into them at the moment, but God almighty. I posted some of them on Discord. I've talked about some of them on stream before. There's some really insane stuff. Uh, fuller of no. Well, I've shared most of them in the Discord. Can't afford the DLC. You'll be watching them. Thank you, thank you, Charlie. Think about the 26 months. Thank you, Charlie. 
they keep changing how to resub with Prime. Kind of. Kind of. I'm... I wouldn't be surprised to get rid of Prime, which would be terrible, but... Triangulate the next preview day. I'm feeling like it'll come out beginning of the week. They'll have the last review when they release DLC. Traditionally, that's not been the case, but yeah. Maybe. All right, we are working on our bionics. It looks like we got at least two, so let's go ahead and get those going here. We'll just go right down the line. Install bionic leg left, install bionic leg right. There we go. How are we doing on doctors? Let's take you off doctoring and you off doctoring. Actually, let's take these off as well while we're doing these surgeries. Make sure we have a pretty decent doctor no matter who hits. <laughs> I'm guessing that means you're on both screens at the moment, yeah. Won't be surprised if it comes out on Eclipse Day. Yeah, that's kind of what I was feeling too. Extravagant construction. I don't want to build any of these. Speaking of royalty, I might just start turning royalty off more often. <laughs> Unless I'm doing like a theme with royalty, I might just start turning it off more often because it clogs up the quests in such an annoying way. Like not just the quest that you get like build the structure, which is from royalty, but also the rewards. It's like, man, when I play vanilla, the rewards are actually good for quests because there's not that much stuff in the, in the reward pool, especially at this uh, wealth level and stuff like that. Raid. Explosives, explosives. But, uh, oh, and we're only neutral. Okay. Well, I mean, we can kill them pretty easily, but they're going to screw up some walls, and I can't kite anymore. What's the case where does it scale from wealth or is it just time? It scales with it scales with raid points, but also the star the star number the number of stars it has basically is a multiplier of of your raid points. That's why you can have like a three star tribal raid where they send like seven hundred people um, at at max raid points. So it's a combination, but yeah, as far as the rewards go, with all the DLC, the reward pool is so huge that you usually get crap and there's so many rewards from royalty and a lot of it is like instruments and l gear and crap like that so it's uh it's pretty annoying sometimes Max rate points, does that cap ever? Yes, it casts at 10,000. Just scale into your PC melts? No. Uh, max rate points is 10,000 rate points. 10,000 rate points. Randy can roll a 1.5, which is rare, but he can. So technically he can roll up to 15,000. Oh no, I had that set for a, a mech cluster still. So yeah, they, they can go to 10,000. And then quest can roll higher, of course, like I said, with the star multiplier. What would I miss from royalty if I don't use... Uh, if I wasn't using side casting? Uh, low shields would be the biggest. I don't even need them that much anymore. They would help during this, though. All right, so we got to be a little bit careful here. Everyone inside, grab everyone, hit the marksman command. We have a low shield. Yeah, that's about it. Unless I'm doing heavy melee, in which case, obviously, the royalty has amazing melee weapons. So we need to get out there and get that explosive, that rocket. There's one of them. So let's pop out. Okay, we got that one. Where's the other one? There's more than... More than one. There's another one, okay. Next explosive is coming down. It's explosive, that's right. There's the explosive.
Once that one's done, we can feel pretty confident of just popping out and getting where we need. Okay, like we can go take care of this guy. And we can take care of coming around the corner up here. That guy's already hurt. Honestly, rest. Uh oh. Someone actually got like headshot or something. Crap. you have frag grenade we gotta be careful there they were good chain shotgun we're good knife we're good skulls on your way okay what do you guys have anything it's all short range so you guys are still good Just stay up there uh long range come in you guys get around that corner skulls tins Okay, we're good. Just come back in. Okay. So how bad was that hit? What did they even get hit by? Oh, that's our genie, so. Yeah, bolt action to the arm. Okay. At least they hit the arm. Bolt action deals a lot of damage. Like baseline bolt action is 18 points of damage, so that can one shot. But uh yeah. It's a genie. So that's another kind of nice thing about genies is they're they're hard to kill because every Every time they take damage, you just fall down, <laughs> so. All right. How often do they hold open doors for baddies? Oh, a crawling? It, yeah, I've, I've had to get used to that. So it happens kind of frequently. That's another good thing about having these double doors. It helps with that quite a bit. But I've had it even with the double doors occasionally where it screws me over. Uh, they will... So crawling pawns will adhere to uh, restrictions on doors. So I've had to restrict doors sometimes for them to not crawl through the wrong one. Met clusters from royalty as well. Yeah, met clusters from royalty. Off map problem causers are from royalty. Abasia is from royalty. Yeah, I wasn't naming everything from royalty, just the things I would miss on a normal playthrough. Would I miss met clusters? No, <laughs> not really. Would I miss off map problem causers? Not really. I mean, they're very easy to deal with, so I don't know. They've made them very easy to deal with over the years. They're still crawling away from tending? No, they're not. I have to go to triple doors these days? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, charge rifles, like I tell people, like, a lot of times people ask me why I use assault rifles, and the big reason is assault rifles are just good at everything. They're just, they're not the best at every single thing, but they're really good at everything, and you can kite with them. So they outrange charge rifles. But charge rifles are still good weapons, especially if you are doing a kill box setup, like if you're doing medium range kill box, um, or this no kill box style also, although I do feel like assault rifles are safer in this setup. Yeah, they are still incredibly good damage guns. Somehow, whenever you build outer wall, all raids are sapper. Yeah, that's just bad luck, so. Sapper is one of the rarest raids in the game now. I'm guessing you mean Breacher, though. Since mechs can't be sappers. Um, but yeah, it's bad luck. Breachers and sappers are relatively rare these days compared to other raids. And the way the game chooses to do raids it doesn't work that way. I know it feels that way. I talked about that before too, where like, like all right, I'm going to build five wide walls around everything. And it feels like I only get breachers. It's like, maybe they're sitting breachers because I have so many walls. Unfortunately, the game's not smart enough to to do that <laughs> so opinion like wh what's your favorite game what's your favorite game no matter what you say there's gonna be people out there that absolutely hate it and it's gonna look boring or stupid or terrible to them so seven days to die yeah man that game that game's awful it's awful looks like that game was made in a, an engine from 15 years ago oh wait no <laughs> see seven days to die is fine but there's a lot of people that are gonna hate it Uh, I'm, I'm of the opinion, as far as, like, stylized graphics, stylized graphics seems to age better in general. But again, it's just personal opinions. Some people are not going to like it. It's like a lot of people will look at Darkest Dungeon 1 and they'll be like, oh, man, the artwork is a, is a masterpiece. I really like the artwork from Darkest Dungeon 1. And then other people are going to look at Darkest Dungeon 1 and be like, wow, they're just paper cut out bobbleheads, you know? So, yeah, if you don't like the game, you don't like the game. It's not a... 
the great thing about this day and age is there's like literally thousands of great games so there's gonna be something for you and there's gonna be lots that isn't for you the only question why Rimworld is so cool don't know the game yeah. well I mean you did say it looks like crap right so but personal opinion all right Seven days to die. How old is it now? It does feel like 20 years. It's been around a long time, yeah. Is, is it still listed technically as an early access? <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's one of those, right? Got 2,700 hours in Rimworld. Yeah, I'm about to hit 6,000 hours. Yeah, crazy. All right, so we got uh, our first set of Bionic Legs installed. So this is the extreme late game, by the way, as well. All left leg, all right leg. Still an alpha, alpha 21.2. <laughs> like the visual style of Rimworld, wish there were more like it. Yeah, but I can absolutely understand people seeing it and being. I hate this. I can't believe they haven't fixed this. It's because it's intended, they say. They release a new alpha build every 18 months. Uh, Dwarf Fortress is the pinnacle of graphics. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like, I really like pixel games as well. And part of that's probably nostalgia, but there's a lot of pixel game, pixel art games. And I like that graphic style generally. There are some people that look at pixel art and it's like, oh, I can't, I'm not playing this because it's pixels. So. Do you usually make bionic limbs for everyone and why? Because they're better than normal limbs. Look at Skull's movement with these bionics. 125% movement. Do I usually, like, bionics... Unless it's a replacement bionic, like Spine, it's always better to have a bionic for, mo for most reasons. The only thing that's worse about a bionic leg or a bionic arm than its counterpart is that it's a one piece instead. Uh, so this moving helps with everything. It helps with kiting, it helps getting to their jobs faster, it helps with everything, right? Everything that moving helps with, obviously. Um, but, like, it, the only downside is that it's a single part. So what I mean by that is a leg could actually get, you could get shot in the toe and the toe could end up taking some of that. And if it's sharp damage in the toe, then you don't even have to worry about it propagating to the leg. Bionic is a single piece item. But overall, yeah, it, unless it's a one for one replacement, like spine, like you don't need to give a spine to everyone. It caps out at 100%. Spine is just literally a replacement. But things like bionic legs, bionic arms, bionic eyes, uh, even the bionic jaw now is, is pretty awesome, yeah. Well, bionic spine is better. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not refuting that, of course, because you can't get anything. But it's a, as far as a percentage increase of stats, it is a one for one. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for replacing bionic spine before you get like the big ones, arms, legs, and eyes. Uh, and if you're using, well, and, and you know, detoxifier lungs and stuff are really good as well. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of good ones, but. What I would typically suggest, and I'm not doing it in this one just because I don't feel like it, I don't know why. What I would typically suggest is replacing the arms of your crafters first so they can make... One of the only ways in the game to increase the speed of crafting is replacing arms with bionics. So I would replace your crafter's arms first, generally. And then I would go through and replace what's bothering people. And then I would go through and do one leg on everyone to increase their speed. And then probably go through and do one eye on everyone to increase their um, their accuracy and damage output. And then just fill in from there if you want. But yeah, the in general, if you can replace something with a bionic, the bionic is, is better in most ways. Bionics, even on a genie, is it necessary? It makes them craft faster. Yeah, so necessary, no, but it does make them craft everything faster. So usually just do it. How do you have so much material to make everything? Once you get to mineral scanners and deep drills, you have infinite material. Yeah, bionic hearts are good. Yep. Do blackboard stack. Blackboard stack up to three. You can look at that in here, right? Connecting blackboards, three out of three, 160%. Yes, you can stack up to three blackboards. Um, but yeah, once you get scanners, so for all intents and purposes, scanners just create materials. They've done that since 1.2. So if you played a long time ago and haven't played since then, in 1.2, they made it so scanners are a research job. There's a mech breach. Oh, and I can't kite them. Oh, no. I would usually just kite them. 
Maybe I just use the low shield for this. We, we can just rip them apart with the low shield. We have one low shield, I think. Yeah. Anyway, um... So, once you get that, you can just get all your materials. Never used scanners before. I try to rush to at least one scanner and one drill before I run my map out of components. And then a fabrication bench from there. Yeah, I think I'm just going to use the low shield. We will destroy this with 22 master worker better guns, but. Twenty seconds. Why are you slow at the moment? Smoke leaf. So this one's going to shoot at the wall and then as soon as it does, you're going to pop out and kill it. How low is Twitch delay? Seconds. So I use the low shield to do it. Uh, we'll probably want to keep looking for more low shields. And in fact, let me do something here. We got low shield pack, critical. Uh, make low shield do forever. Let's move that all the way to the top. That way if we do get any... Ors. I think we might have one. We had a mech cluster over on the right. Did it, I think it all blew up, though. Yeah. Three components. Light words increase the learning bar, or they improve how fast kids get experience from the teacher. Hey, kid, go to the hospital. Uh, it's the learning rate. So, how quickly. How quickly children learn during lessons which are assisted by this. So, anytime the kid is, is at this, uh, the speed of it. What's the game's fast? Do you have a lovely new search function? I do, yes. But it's not just about searching. It's about, I, wanted, I want to be able to click and equip them uh, on who I want. as well. Freaking great. It's your own stupid fault for walking right over the bugs. Well, the Empire's now hostile. Sucks for them. Send them, the, uh, send them the skin of their people. Actually, I'm not trading with the Empire or anything, so having them an enemy is probably a good thing overall. 
Yeah, I'm just going to leave them as an enemy. Psychic and Sanity still work on breaching mechs? Yes. Berserk and things like that still work on them. You can't berserk a boss mech anymore, though. It's a good thing I decided to kill those mechs the way I did. Because now we have this raid to deal with too. No, oh, it's, uh, it's wasters. Okay. Well, it's kind of weird they don't have any explosives, actually. Not complaining, though. Sir, we just murdered several royals by friendly fire. What do we do? Sucks for them. Strip him. Okay, I heard some go juice. The there's we have to be careful of the assault rifles and the sniper rifles. Well, chain shotguns actually too. I didn't notice those at first. Lucky for going through colonists, uh period and comma. On Kohak. Kind of you to say. Thank you for being here. All right, they're dividing up. Let's go ahead and hit Marksman Command. We can go ahead and pop these guys right here. Back in though. We don't have lungs yet, so we gotta be careful. Um, These guys are by themselves. We can pop them. Okay, what do these guys have? They have a low shield, so let's just pop under that low shield. And then we can use that for these. What's the time on it? Uh, who's standing on it? There we, there we go. Okay, what does Pop have? Pop has a sniper. We want to be careful with that. Sheen pistol pistol i mean they can do damage too of course but those ones i'm not too worried about let's go ahead and pop out and kill those two and that's all she wrote all right cool oh we're eating mules now i need to spread out uh tables okay we'll do that we'll do that with some of the steel randy's pretty active today huh okay let's uh let's grab this stuff Less Eltex quest, yeah. Well, the crappy thing is, Empire still gives you quests, just as many if you're their enemy. It's annoying, and I never really thought about it, but I did two playthroughs before Biotech came out, the, the two right before, where we had to do every quest. We had to do every single quest. And I was like, I'm sick of building these structures, so I'm gonna anger the Empire. Anger the Empire, I made sure reward preferences were off for honor and goodwill, and guess what? The Empire, with their name in red, kept giving me quests to build structures still. It's like, what? How is this? Why? This shouldn't be possible. And I had to do them anyway, so... It's it's, it's annoying, but the Empire can still give you quests even if you're hostile with them. And, um... Have goodwill turned off. It's like... How are you able to make so many masterwork weapons? Production, production specialist? And I have lo two level 20 crafters because they're genies. With production specialists and a level 20 genie, there's a 50% chance of what they make being masterwork. It's absurd. Ideology truly is pay to win. <laughs> no, I just, I'm just kidding about those sort of things. But production, sometimes people ask me like, what's the best meme? What's the best ideology? It's like from a min-max standpoint, there's something in a tier of its own and that's production specialists from human primacy. Human primacy is number one for min-maxing. It's not even close. Like, production specialist is so incredibly strong. So, yeah, that's how. And for anyone that doesn't know, weapons don't actually get raw damage increase until you get to Masterwork. Before Masterwork, you're just getting accuracy, which does increase, you know, the theoretical damage of the weapon, right? Because it's going to hit more often. But you actually start getting damage bonuses at Masterwork and at Legendary, and it becomes absurd. Especially weapons that are already high damage weapons. So, like, charge rifles chain shotguns, 
Uh, even like bolt action, things that get a big increase from a percent increase to damage is, is pretty crazy. Yeah, so production specialist always get a plus one quality, always, and it can stack with uh, inspirations as well. Do you craft as many assault rifles as it takes to all be masterwork? I, I will at a certain stage of the game. So my priority is get any assault rifles in a normal playthrough, in a normal max playthrough, get any assault rifles. And then once I have the other stuff done, like my armor, and we have infinite steel coming in from drilling. Uh, yes, I will put in bills to make the masterwork. Yeah, I know they're still in walls. I'm, I was looking at, uh, I guess I could take the other ones. I was looking at Stokes having, nearly having a breakdown before I switched, but I can just leave him specifically in the walls. Do raiders still ignore children without weapons? They won't actively go after children without weapons, yeah. Yeah. Undrafted. If you haven't drafted a child and they don't have a weapon, raiders won't specifically go after them. Empire sometimes wants you to build a whole city, yeah. <laughs> They're tricking you to build sarcophagi for the empire. Yeah. I think you're right. What a great place to. What the crap? <laughs> I thought he was nature running, but he keeps trying to pick up a corpse. What's he doing? He's just moving stuff. There's no zone here. Oh, there is. Um, that's not just the allowed zone. Never mind. Yeah, of course there is. But what the crap? Summon Sky God. Okay. Sky God says, Mud wife, kill me. No, don't. What's going on here? I'm trying to figure out how this is happening. He's taking stuff and dumping it in a place where there's no stockpile. And there's empty shells back home. And they're both doing it. What? I'm gonna have to show this to the devs. Stockpile hidden? No, because then the other ones would be hidden also. Right? I can double click stockpile too. Yeah, there's no stockpile there, and we have shelves that are empty. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Weird. Huh. Show that to the the devs. Yeah, that's that's really odd. So I think what's going on, which shouldn't be. That that's actually extra annoying because he was dumping that in outside of an allowed zone. So they've been working on zone stuff. We know that. We've seen it in the patches. But this is definitely not intended. I bet you if I do this. They'll do it just fine. No double strand clothing. It's still growing. But it's, it doesn't really matter at this stage that much, honestly. Everlasting Toxic Generator energy. Uh, toxic Generators are incredible, yeah. As long as you can deal with the pollution or if pollution doesn't matter to you. I bet that's going to fix it. Yep. I'm going to have to show that to the developers. I know um, Smurf has been posting stuff like that in the development bug um, Discord as well. And so giving them another example. Let's see. How far are we on the Twitch stream? Uh, hour 12 minutes. Hour 12 minutes. Okay. All right. There we go. Yeah, weird. <clears throat> so what was happening is they were picking the stuff up in an allowed zone, and then when they were hitting an area where they weren't allowed to be, they were dropping it. You had the same bug yesterday? Yeah, that's not good. Not good. Fatty's cache of goodies. Full charge rifle kit on your four. Yeah, they're all masterwork too. Easy peasy. 
Any launch week today? I'll probably just do it tomorrow, because I don't know. I don't really want to start a new run tomorrow. We'll see. Well, they'll fix it for the release, full release 1.5? Yeah, I hope so. That's really not good. Really not good. Wonders of human privacy? Yeah, the, the wonders of min-maxing. This isn't even with a min-max base either, right? We just... We had a weird base, but... We could be even further ahead. I could have 35 people with with uh <laughs> with charge rifles of it if i really wanted but i'm not gonna get any more people heart attack Crap. normally i would go with more people but Twenty four, twenty four, twenty four. Oh, you got him we need to replace his heart I didn't realize uh, we had someone with a heart blockage still. Um. Right. And we're ready to do two more legs as well. Plasteel to craft that many charge rifles. I have infinite plasteel here. I'll show you. Look at the map. I've been scanning since like year one. There's literally tens of thousands of plasteel on my map right now. Any list of my mods? It's basically nothing. Exclamation mods will show you. But it's like literally nothing. You're going to be surprised. <laughs> I know most people are like, it's nothing. They have like 18 quality of life mods, which is fine. But if you want to type exclamation mods, yeah, it's. it's... How many scanners do I have? I have four. I've had four scanners going since probably late year one. But I mean, just here alone in this pile, we still have over a thousand plasteel. Limits minerals found. Nope. They changed that in 1.2. So scanners now just spawn new material forever. As long as someone is, is on, on them scanning. So yeah, one of the things I try to do is pretty early on. So I get to the weapon that will make me safe-ish. And then depending on my start, it might change some things. But basically, I try to get to um, assault rifles, deep drilling, and ground penetrating scanner as fast as possible. And then I get one drill and one scanner up very early game so that I have that before my map is out of material. And then I just let it let it run. I'm long range scanner plus in caravan quicker. Play that way if you want. I mean, it's fine. You can choose which way what you get, but it's definitely not quicker right now with all this crap in my base. Like, I can pull a thousand plasteel without leaving the base, and therefore all my the strength of my base is still here. I don't have to send these people off. Like, if I were going to scan plasteel and go get it, I unless I have like far skip and things like that, I'm going to need to send a group of people, a group of animals. They're gonna be, they're gonna need to be gone for a little while. They get ambushed on their way there or back unless I have far skip or I want to use resources to drop there and build and drop back. I don't know, it's just safer to do it in the base. And the earlier you get it, like right now, it doesn't, it doesn't matter for me. Like long range scanners can be good for components, but why wait when you can just go settle a map? So every map is gonna be full of components. You don't have to scan. So like right now, if I wanted to go mine a bunch of components, which I don't need to, but if I did, instead of long range scanning, I would just make a caravan, go over here, settle. I'd have two people run around and mine like 70 components and then I would just caravan back. Yeah, it's not as, uh, as, not as much as if you did the scans and hit them, but you don't need any time to do the scanning. You don't have to get to scanning, but it's just a personal preference thing too. It's gonna depend on your difficulty a lot. Like. Maybe caravanning is much safer for your playthrough than mine. But for me, I would just rather have everything on the map. That way I don't have to... I don't have to leave with any of my force, especially at max raid points. Yeah, the nice thing about long range scanner is that you can pinpoint what you want, though. You don't have to wait. Um, that is the nice thing, for sure. Like, if you want components, you can just say, find components, and it finds components. Having ships, yeah, like, well, yeah, modded things for sure help with it. We're not using any of those kind of things, of course. But another thing, um, 
like if the royalty ship that, you, that uh the, the ship that you can get for being a royal for having a royal the, the shuttle transport if that didn't have such a long cooldown that would be amazing for it but Rimmin 1.5 style that's right All oh, right, they have a half cycler. They just came with it. Down here looks pretty good. Build them as they come around that corner. These aren't impids, so we should be fine. We're just standing our ground, honestly. Marine gear and all this. As long as they don't have great bows, they can't outrange us. This corner can't outrange us either way. So we'll just keep an eye on great bows. Those. So there's a great bow. We'll see where he goes. I think he's still trying to get, yeah. They're trying to get cover for the great bows. So let's pop down here. We'll take this as cover. You got hit by a great bow. It's not good. Get around this corner. Right now, the only... Tr I mean, high-quality recover bows can be pretty decent, but they never come with high-quality, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I hit the armor. It's fine. I need to uh, get allied with some people again so that we have some call-ins to buy some time if we need it, if we have a bunch of raids back-to-back. -back. So we'll get this human leather, and then let's go ahead and make a pod launcher. Masterwork charge rifles are insane, yeah. It's insane damage. Are they the new assault rifles? No, I would still rather have assault rifles. Armor is really essential for the no kill box charge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would actually rather be using assault rifles. If we had assault rifles during that, I wouldn't have taken any damage. But just doing it for fun. Long range scanner is good for gold and early class. I, long range scanners are fine. Yeah, I prefer, so it doesn't mean they're better, but I prefer on map scanner and I just get mine super early. That way, by the time I need those materials, it's generally found some. Is plate armor any good for early melee blocking? It's good enough. Like, if that's all you have, yeah. Like, for instance, if you're doing... I put out a shotgun tunnel kill box guide uh, yesterday or the day before. And if you are doing a tribal start and it's very early on and you're doing that setup where you need the melee blockers or the melee blockers will help you a lot, then, yeah, having some plate armor is better than nothing. Plate armor is not great, but it's de definitely going to be an improvement for your melee blockers over, like... Just tribal wear, you know. Playing against Randy, yes. Randy. Have you ever had any psychic ships land without mechs to protect them? Yes. Now they're supposed to be fixing that. So what ends up happening is that occasionally the ship in an animation that you you usually don't see the animation of it, the ship itself can land on top of the mechs and just destroy them. So it kills all the mechs. Yeah, it's not new, it's rare. And they're supposed to be fixing it in 1.5. Um, yeah, now you can get ships so early that like, depending on your difficulty, you might not have a mech or might have like one or two mechs. But generally the only way that it comes without mechs is because the ship itself killed the mechs by landing on them. So, kind of a weird thing. Assault rifles better even with mechs or high armor targets. For my playstyle, yes. Because I if I have an assault rifle, if I have a like a handful of assault rifles, I can outrange centipedes and kite. I can kill hundred centipedes given enough time as long as mood is fine, right? With charge rifles, you cannot kite them. So for the kiting playstyle, assault rifles are better than and charge rifles, but yeah, it just depends on your playstyle, what you're doing. 
Both guns are very good in different uh, different scenarios, different setups. For my usual playstyle, assault rifles are just all around great. There it is. It's all bionic parts. Putting against the that's true, yeah. I've been noticing that it seems like minigun and flame centipedes are slightly rarer than they used to be. It feels like I'm getting mostly blaster centipedes depending on raid type. All centipede raids seem to be all blaster these days for me or most of the time. The centipedes that come with breachers seem to be all blaster and then the other ones seem to come with mixed raids. Remember the time when you used tons of heavy SMGs? Yeah, and heavy SMGs are still good. Like... Someone was kind of um, arguing that point in the in the comments on YouTube, and I'm I try to get it through to people that it doesn't mean assault rifles are better in every situation and are the best gun. They're the best gun for lots of things depending on style. But someone was like putting like paragraphs of math and stuff of why heavy SMGs are better in a lot of situations, and it's like, yeah, but I'm not gonna. In my playthroughs, I'm not going to specifically make additional types of guns for different situations that are hitting me. And the assault rifle is just good in every situation, so. But yeah, heavy SMGs are still great uh, at short range. And the great thing about heavy SMGs, they, a lot of close range weapons get most of their additional accuracy from being closer to the enemy, not from shooting skill. So those guns are still great on like bad shooters. Would I specifically make SMGs to put on my bad shooters instead of just giving them assault rifles with my normal play style? No, I would not. And that's that's kind of what um, started the debate in the comments that time. But yes, heavy SMGs are still great. Like even normal shotguns are incredible. Normal shotguns are one of the most accurate things in the game and do a lot of damage. 18 damage per shot. Super accurate, even at just normal quality. And you can throw it on your bad shooters. But am I going to make like shotguns as well just to sprinkle in with my normal style no it's a lot of effort yeah like if the game had some kind of sidearm system and i know there's a mod for that if the game had some kind of sidearm system then yeah absolutely it's, it reminds me of something else i'm asked pretty often there people are like wait like newer people to the game it's like you just wear your armor all the time doesn't it deteriorate like why don't you just put it on when a raid comes you don't have the time to do it like not even just a no pause but look at how many raids are instant or uh, like attack immediately, you don't have time. Like even with pause, right? You don't have time to have people go and put on whole other equipment sets, right? Yeah, drop pod raid, attack immediately. Like you just don't have time. Name upon hobo and give it to him. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be fantastic to have the best weapon, the best weapon in every scenario for the right pawn, but it's just not realistic. And you can make most weapons work in the game. We even did a whole playthrough with just bows, for instance, where we fought mechs with bows. It's up on YouTube. But I'm, I'm not going to make additional side weapons for, for everyone or whatever. Uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't set this. Okay, let's set this. Now, unfortunately, this is going to have a lot of people stripped down, I think. But do we have... Wait, I didn't move the textiles down, so I don't know how many textiles we have. Should have quite a bit coming in. Let's go ahead and link these, and we'll get more down here. Minus human skin. Human leather. Little content. Binging a lot of it. Thank you, Killix. Need clothing racks. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I kind of made my own that looked like it, but it wasn't really that in one of the guides. Game needs an IR visor to enable smoke tactics. But the mountains always make gas masks for everyone just in case of toxic raids. Yeah, I tried to get to like the detoxifier lungs and stuff because of that too. Yeah, it's frustrating. Or get jeans. There's, there's some options now at least. You get bundles this week on Humble Bundle? I haven't checked this week. Yeah. Actually, I should Humble if you're going to use my link, though. If I can move any DLC feature to the base game, what would it be? Hmm. 
maybe not features. It, so kind of like how they put floodlights and wall lights and stuff in the base game. Um, it would be nice if most items that are added from DLC are that way. So what I mean is like low shields. Even if you can't make them, you have to go buy them or something. Like low shields being in, in the base game. Things like that, you know? Like... It doesn't really make lore sense, but like mono swords and stuff, right? Items are, are the big one I would generally say would be nice, but... So not so much features, but items. Yeah. What's the point of detox kidney? So we went through that and tried to figure that out when they first came out. It's a weird thing. Like, some of the organs help with recovery of the toxin stuff and some help not get it. So I think kidney was one of the ones that helps you like get through the the toxin exposure faster. If I remember right. I could be misremembering. I haven't tested that since Biotech first came out, but we tested it in the dwarf run up on YouTube. I feel that's like I feel like that's what I remember though. A triangle base is the new meta, that's right. No, just for fun. Not only is adding dark side or something, maybe that's the same thing. Dark sight. Oh, I there's a gene that's like dark sight, but where are the best swords? Mono sword. The best craftable sharp weapon generally in the base game is long sword. Plasteel long sword. Okay, now we have an ally again. Good. Never thought the gameplay in modded would fit the lore and was here so well. Oh, yeah, Warhammer mods. I haven't played them, but I've seen them. Yeah, no bionic lung or kidney, but you do have the detox fire lung and kidney, which you can use for just normal organ replacement too, which is nice. Oh, right. We still only have one good cook in this one. Shell has her work cut out for her. Into buff bedrooms. It's fun, the new meta. Fun's always been the meta. I've not tested that yet. Do fire foam turrets interfere with how sappers work? I'm not sure. It'd be interesting if Rocket Swarm does also. If you end up testing either of those, let me know. Biotech's pay to win. <laughs> what is a good starting outfit for a new player? So basically, what you're trying to get to on a map, a non cold map, you want to do button down shirt. Pants, duster or cape, flak vest, and whatever the best helmet is you can get. You can think of a flak vest as marine armor for the chest. That's what we've been saying for, for like a couple years. Flak vest is like marine armor for the chest. You're trying to really protect the organs that are one shot kills. So the torso, hence the flak vest, and the best helmet, you know, the brain. Um, that's the big parts. Button down shirt gives you a little bit of defense on like arms and stuff, whereas normal shirts don't because they don't have sleeves. Um, flak pants generally aren't really that worth it over normal pants, unfortunately. I wish they would make flak pants a little bit better. But yeah, that's just the basics of it. Button down shirt, pants, duster or cape. They both have the same stats and same temperature properties. And whatever the best helmet is you can get. The No, game... In Game performance is not better in 1.5, unfortunately. We were hoping, but it's not. In fact, they're, uh, the only thing they got multi-threaded, which honestly, it almost feels like they shouldn't have used that word because it's it's a little bit of a buzzword and it's a little bit misleading almost. Not really misleading, but anyway. Um, yeah, it's actually slightly worse, yeah, which is odd. Um, but anyway, it's... Yeah, the only thing that's multi-threaded is the rendering of pawns. But honestly, depending on your, your computer, that was most likely not what was causing your game to slow down. It's not what's causing mine to slow down. It's more like the logic of what pawns are, are trying to decide to do and how much stuff there is to do and all that. So, no. And some of the mod makers of performance enhancing... It almost sounds like we're talking about steroids. Some of the mod creators of performance enhancing mods have tested... 1.4 versus 1.5 and find that 1.5 is actually a little bit worse performance than 1.4 which is um really unfortunate 
Fire is one of the biggest performance drains. Fire is a performance drain, and even more so now that it causes light. Capes take more work and look different. They're intended for nobles. Yeah, capes are a royalty item, so they do take a little bit more work. They look a little bit different. They were initially a royal, yeah, like for royals, but honestly, I just sometimes use them because they're cool. Improvements <laughs> to DLC, I wish. Game also start to lag in game on high-end PCs. Yes. Yeah. I have pretty much the best computer that you can run RimWorld on, and mine will lag also. Yeah, thrombos. Um... I can get them. Yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely wreck these Thrombo. I kind of want them to divide up a little bit, though, because I don't want to get hit by any of them. <laughs> Fire and snow, yeah. Otter, thank you for the seven months. Kit, thank you for the five months. Thank you, Kit. Bean, 12 months. Awesome full calendar year. Thank you, Bean. Thank you, Kit. And thank you, Otter. Growth moment. All right, here's one of the kids that just showed up, right? They showed up with Jealous. I'll see what he gets. Tough. Wow, kid. Wow. Good job. Way to go. This is another kid that just showed up to you. No, like one of my wish list items that I don't think we'll ever get unless they make a RimWorld 2. My my like biggest wish list item, honestly, is for the game to be so, so optimized and so and run so great on one of these computers uh, like mine that I could have a colony of like 100 colonists that are is moving perfectly without any slowdown right and there are other games that have that have that now maybe those games aren't calculating as many things as RimWorld, probably not but there are games that have that kind of thing and it's fun to see it's like a freaking ant colony right it's just a fun thing to have that option but there's two things one i think they would probably i'm not a programmer you know i'm not a coder i don't know but i think they would have to like remake the game from the ground up to get anything close to that so i don't think that's going to be worth development time or money unless we're making a new game and second we have to remember that the, the developers, like Song of Six, yeah, things like that, right? And those have different, yeah, but kind of like that. We have to also remember that the developers design RimWorld around being a lower pawn count game. There are things in the game to try to try to keep you from, from getting too many pawns. Now, you can overcome that, especially with DLCs, if you want. But in the very base vanilla game... The game tries to basically keep you at 8 to 12 pawns, and it will let you get into the high teens. You can get past it if you know how, of course, but the, the storytellers are kind of programmed to try to keep your pawn count relatively low. And so it's supposed to be a more like low pawn count, intimate story-based game. But it is a sandbox game at the end of the day as well, right? But so anyway, because of those two things, the developer's philosophy of it being a story generator... And the fact that I think they'd have to remake the game from the ground up to get it anywhere near that. I don't think we're ever going to get it as, as unfortunate as that, as that is. I hope I'm wrong, but that would be the, one of the best things to be wrong about. But I just don't see it happening. Is that designed due to technical limitation? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there's lots of ways to go over the population intent. Yeah, for sure. An idle clicker game. <laughs> Yeah. What other RimWorld S games do I recommend? I really, um, it's not quite the same. I haven't played it in a while. It's been updated, actually. But well, Oxygen Not Included is really fun. But I gotta tell you, Oxygen Not Included is much more sciency and managey than this game. Like, you. <laughs> it feels. Back when I played like a thousand cycles on stream of Oxygen Not Included. There weren't, like, any guides or anything out yet. Like, now there's probably lots of that stuff, so you're not as lost. But holy crap, it was so crazy trying to figure things out. And, like, I don't know how many bases we had on stream in the early days of Auction Not Included that died from, like, heat death. Um, like, it's a, it's a really fun colony management game. No combat, though. So if you want to go more of the management side, 
I would say Ashi not included. Uh, as far as combat that's like RimWorld, I'm not sure. There's a lot of games that are kind of similar, but don't write, don't, they just don't hit the mark for me, but. Does the Unstable Patch have Anomaly? No, that's on the 11th. I tried Stranded Alien Dawn. No, I've not. Uh, Daddy-O, thank you for the brand new sub. Thank you, Daddy-O. In a, like a jazz club or something. Something. You're playing Auction Not Included right now? Yeah. Amazing Cultivation Simulator. Yeah, I've not played that one either, but I've heard good. I've heard decent things. Is the best early game trait for Negative Brutality because it allows push pawn pretty hard. As always, Otter, I'm going to say... A Frostpunk, I don't feel like is like RimWorld. I mean, it's in the same strategy genre, but yeah. We need 200 IQ to finish Oxygen Included. Yeah, it was it was crazy. We did it. We went all the way a thousand cycles though. Um, so Otter, as always, the answer is that it depends. But my most sought after traits on Negative Brutality is typically either tough or super immune, because you can. It feels bad to set up a playthrough, a colony, etc. roll for a pawn, and then you enter, and then Randy hits you with a disease. Now, Cassandra can't hit you with a disease for nine days, but Randy can. And you hit a disease on day one, and you get food poisoning, and all of a sudden you just lose, and you're like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to set up a new run for another hour. So the things that allow you to not do that the most are super immune and uh, tough. So when I'm doing Naked Brutality, or a solo pawn in general, I typically will go after one or both of those traits to give me wiggle room to where I just don't have to restart the early game over and over. But uh, Iron Will is good, of course. Iron Will is good. But I have lots of ways to deal with mood. I don't have a lot of ways early on with Single Pond to deal with gut worms plus food poisoning, you know? Dawbinic leg like left. Dawbinic leg like right. Okay. Well, yeah, I haven't played that either. And there's also that new game coming out that I played in super early access called Norland, and it felt okay. It felt like it had potential, but that was in um, that was on like Steam three Steam Next Fests ago. So I know it's released now, I think, but I haven't tried it, so I can't really comment on it. How good it is? Have I ever done VFE Tribals? No. You b just roll the pawn with both super mean and tough. Yeah, it's a great combo, especially for. Uh, or uh, Naked Brutality. Yeah, there were some games like that I was going to try out, um, but then RimWorld DLC got announced, so... <laughs> what implants your colonists use? I'm not using anything. I'd, like, literally the only thing... I'm just going through and adding Bionics right now. Yeah, there's nothing else. Bionics and drugs. We look in an inventory for someone... Wait, did I not set that up in this one? No, we just did Psych AT in this, right? Go Medieval has potential. And the doors of the coolers, door required to be open? No. It even, is there a hole in the roof? You can use it under overhead mountain. Yeah, so. You don't need a, you don't need the door open. You can't have it open. You don't need it unroofed. You can't have it unroofed, but it works either way. Norland feels a little like Rimworld, but Strain Alien Dawn definitely gives you Rimworld feels as well. Been really enjoying it. Yeah, those were both games I was going to try out, but I just, yeah. Rimworld DLC got announced, so. Like full throttle, full steam ahead on RimWorld, so. Which I'm not upset about, but it's a little unfortunate when I was about to try all these things and then suddenly, <laughs> suddenly a RimWorld DLC hits. Like arm, or bionic leg left, bionic leg right. Drill and aggro arms, I don't really need them. I'll use them in some runs. Yeah, they're very good, but I don't, yeah. The only downside is, it's kind of weird that it, the downside of those is speed, but yeah, yeah, I, I know I've used them a lot, but I just don't need them in this. Like, haven't needed them. Just haven't needed them in this run. I'm worried about it. But yeah, I mean, if you're min maxing everything, then of course, yeah, you get every, you get all those things, right? But yeah, did we make a playthrough for anomaly? Yes. Time to play. Uh, yeah, my anomaly playthrough will start the minute the game is launched, and it'll be on the live tab on YouTube, and then it'll be on Twitch as well. You'll have Rimworld combat. Enjoy it more than XCOM sometimes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Rimworld combat's fine. 
Do I enjoy RimWorld combat more than like XCOM combat? I don't know. It's it's very different, right? One's a tactical. I mean, there's tactics in RimWorld, but you know what I mean. Turn-based tactics is kind of. I take a day off for Anomaly. Yeah, Anomaly on the 11th for anyone that hasn't hasn't seen. We just don't know what time. I hope it's relatively early in the day. But if I remember right, last time it was kind of late. It was kind of like 3 p.m. or maybe it was like 1 p.m. It was in the afternoon. Is the game releases for everyone? For everyone, yeah. Steam testers? I'm not... No, this isn't... You can do this. You can do 1.5. This isn't like... I'm not getting some kind of special treatment because I'm a content creator or something. Like, you can go on Steam right now, right-click, and, and do this. An anomaly is going to come out for everyone at the same time, yeah. It would be awesome if they if they wanted to contact me and be like, Adam, you can stream Anomaly one day early. Fantastic. But uh, they've never done that before, so I I highly doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> but hey, if it does, by all means. What are you looking for, Lukova? I don't have a command for it yet. Is your dwarf genome still available? Uh, yeah. So I updated my gene or my downloads page on my website. For anyone that hasn't seen, you can go to my website, adamverseeverything.com, and I have... Uh, I have a bunch of free stuff to download there. I have some themed playthroughs that you can do. Like, you can download the Melee Gods and play a Melee Gods yourself, which was a lot of fun. Um, actually, I need to make some more stone. Turn these on. There's also some blueprints there. If you use the blueprint mod, some other stuff. Uh, Rural has variables like... Well, I mean, games like that can have variables like that, too. Like, uh, Phoenix Point was a really good game. In fact, some of the people that made Phoenix Point are from their original XCOM uh, development team. And Phoenix Point was really good. I really liked it. Unfortunately, it didn't perform very well for them. But uh, I found it to be good. And my playthrough... I did a blind playthrough on the hardest difficulty of Phoenix Point. It's up on YouTube if you want to check that out. Not, not edited, just the full-length thing. And in that game, body parts were even more important than, uh, like, XCOM or anything. And you could actually, if you wanted, every shot that you took, if you wanted, you could go in and aim. And you could aim at certain parts, and certain enemies were at body parts that were weak. You could shoot someone's hand off so that they couldn't use their weapon. Oh, I would love an XCOM 3. Supposedly, they've been working on it. Was it Firaxis, right? Been working on it for a long time, but I don't think I've heard any updates on that in years, so who friggin' knows? I finished point, but didn't play it as much as XCOM. Yeah, yeah, same for me. Finished point also had a few DLCs that I never ended up playing. I just didn't have time to get back to it, but I did like Phoenix Point. It's pretty good. Definitely scratches that XCOM itch. Or at the time. Seen or not since? Yeah, yeah, lots of games. There's a lot of games that do body part targeting for sure. And it's, it's, when done well, it's a pretty good concept. Uh, Oni, thank you for the brand new sub. Thank you, Oni. Appreciate it. Oh, are you saying that it, the XCOM 3 thing that they were working on turned out to be the Marvel thing instead? So, wait. Have you seen somewhere that they're not actually working on XCOM 3? Because years ago, this might have been like five or six years ago. I don't, know, I don't remember. There was some kind of thing about them working on XCOM 3. Did they end up reskinning that as the Marvel thing? What was that? Midnight Suns or whatever? I hope not. What are the uses for shells other than explosive and EMP? You, you mean I, ID? Yeah, so the shells are just mortars and IDs, yeah. Hmm. Oh, there was an XCOM Chimera Squad. I don't remember that. No, no, Chimera Squad. I played that one. I like that one, actually. I, that one also got crap. Yeah, yeah. But I think at the time, we, they were saying that there was still going to be an XCOM 3. I actually like Chimera Squad overall. I did think it had lesser replayability, especially because all the people were named people. Like, they were all... Everyone you had was a hero unit. 
there was no like basic soldier to send out on the front line to take a grenade so your other people that you leveled up can you know could could deal with stuff but yeah my kind of, kind of i did that one as a blind hardest difficulty playthrough also um i liked it overall yeah i kind of forgot about command squad which i guess is uh pretty telling that it wasn't a memorable game but i did have fun while i was playing it yeah it's not bad for a small game yeah and it actually came out really cheap too compared to every like everything else that was out Everything you did in XCOM is the simulation. I'm trying Chaos Gate. There's so many games I want to try. Just don't have time. It's funny because April was going to be like a try a bunch of other games month and and um, play the new Total War DLC and stuff like that. And and uh, Ludian's like, nope. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The replay of Camera Squad wasn't great, but it was a uh, good, like, inexpensive. I'm I'm glad I played it. I'm glad it came out, but it wasn't super memorable. Can the new cables explode? No, they can't. Super Bender. Thank you for the three months. Thank you, Super Bender. The new cables are one of my favorite parts of 1.5. Raiders don't attack them. They don't get set on fire. They don't have z events. And they, they cost double steel, which is just, it's super worth. Super, super worth. Food's okay. Yeah, I forgot all about the coming here squad. Like I said, that's pretty telling that it wasn't a memorable game, even though it was fun at the time. Uh, Devil Strand is going to be coming in real soon, so let's just switch all these over to Rice. And let's get some more concrete down so we can make sure that we're getting everywhere we need to quickly. Raiders can still smash in cables? No, they can't. That's what that's one of the things I mentioned. Raiders don't attack them. They don't set on fire. Uh, they don't catch fire. And uh, they don't have events. They're incredible. Superbender. Thank you for the 10 gift subs also. Thank you, Superbender. Very much appreciated. And I still haven't watched the newest season of uh, Futurama. Again, just no time. I got to make some time to watch that, though. Uh, thank you. Sounds like your average weekend. We, we have different benders in mind, yeah. It's the Walmart parking lot strategy. Again. Is the construction hauling noticeably better? Uh, not really. I mean, it's just different. Yeah. I've seen it do really screwy things also. Unfortunately. Go on, Cav. Welcome in. Accidental explosions or lightning strikes hit underground cables. Uh, I haven't seen any of that happen, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't specifically tested them. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you can watch it on. Are you? Are you serious? We're gonna end up getting these guys angry with us, also. Well, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> These dug too deeps keep happening when visitors show up. Franchise game, the only thing got released was Marvel's Max Sons and haven't announced any else. Left the company, found his own. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't notice that second part. Those pillars scattered around outside the base. These, those are the new floodlights. They're like 10 times the size of a normal light, but only take 50 steel and 50 watts of power. They're incredible. Pretty good. Good stuff. So good, yeah. 1.5 edition. I need more cooks. Mm. 
Let's have you start training on cooking. It should be able to level it up decently well off making these drugs. Willing added on yeah yeah it's pretty awesome yeah can't I I would not guess they would have added that either but I'm just using the whole base of the animal pin I shouldn't be but I am oh, I guess I didn't really need to set that for that but. Uh, the ASMR of concrete. Are they useful for giving light mining or mountain? They're useful for anywhere where you need like a large area of light. They're just like a normal lamp, only a huge radius. How many disco balls you have in your base? One. It's one. Let's go pineapple. One disco ball. Is that enough to qualify my base as a club or not? You're the expert at this one. Let me know. All right, let's get this stuff copied over. There should be a raid cap too, so we can just start doing. Yeah, yeah we we've been at raid cap. You know what I'm saying? We can just start doing whatever we want. <laughs> That'd be pretty incredible not to be at raid cap right now with all that we have. So we got the Devil Strand coming in. We're going to be making some more clothes out of that. We have a little bit of cloth. Keep going with these legs here. I don't use a fridge. Just usually don't need it. I don't make enough meals that they'll go bad in a typical playthrough. And I usually don't make more food than will go bad before we use it. So, for instance, corn lasts 60 days unrefrigerated. So, it's like, just don't make enough corn that's going to rot in 60 days. And if you do, just trade the excess. Uh, we're at 356,000. Well, yeah, we're way over raid cap. You like how my in-game bases end up, like, North Korea style? Concrete the entire landscape. Right. Concrete and floodlights. Yeah, so typically, if I'm using meals, I will only make enough meals. Actually, we should increase that. To where they'll eat them before they go bad. And then I just don't overproduce. And then if I do overproduce, that's on a year-long growing map. It changes to no map. All settings cranked up to the hardest wouldn't be possible because your people would need to eat constantly and you would get no yield off your crops. So you would just die. Like all of the settings all the way up. Yeah, everyone would have diseases all the time. And yeah, you would just die. <laughs> Unless maybe if you did like a... If you started someone with like genes and bionics and stuff like that where they didn't really need to eat very much normally something like maybe that person can survive long enough to expand their influence but it probably wouldn't be very fun it'd be very slow no i haven't done one of those no resource once you get deep drilling yeah I have an ever expanding freezer. It's funny because the first like thousand hours I played the game, uh, that's the first thing I tried to get. I thought it was super important. Like, if I started tribal, I was like, all right, the first thing we have to get to is a freezer. We have to get to a freezer. You use kids for hauling and sweeping? Yes. Yeah, I leave them set for that. Yeah. And then that changed over time.
most important research? It depends on your starts, but some of the most important, let's say that you're starting tribal. Usually what I do, why do you build so ugly? Yeah, I build the same way every run. Yeah, I just try my best to make it ugly for you specifically. That's the only reason. It's so crazy. Like, people will see a run like this, or a couple, and just... I have 6,000 hours of content. The previous run that I did was a sanguifage-themed run in a mountain with eight royal bedrooms with royal beds and gold everywhere and shaped in, like, occult ways. But yeah, every single time is just, uh, is just... <sighs> concrete barracks every single time. <sighs> I have, like, every kind of run you can think of. 6,000 hours of content up, almost, up on YouTube. But, anyway. Ugly is in Eye of the Beholder, again. I've had a lot of people come in and it's like, oh, this hourglass layout is pretty cool. It's nice. And then I'll have people come in and it's like, why do you always do this layout? <laughs> uh, Alright, so research, research. So, uh, if you're starting with tribal, depending on your map, what I usually do is I knock out complex furniture really quick, and then I get stone cutting. This is so that I can get them on beds for the extra comforts and stone cutting, you know, so I can get stone walls, obviously. And then I'll get electricity and then I'll try to get whatever gun I'm using on them. Now, this can change a little bit on maps. Like if it's a cold map, you might want to try to get complex clothing sooner, get some parkas or something before winter hits. But in general, stone cutting, complex furniture, electricity and a weapon. Now, after that, Things that are very important are whatever weapon that you want to use, like you feel comfortable with. If you haven't been donated good weapons, sometimes you'll get donated good weapons and you can skip, right? So like for me, it's very important to get a couple of bolt action rifles because that allows me to pull sieges in. Uh, they're very good. Like it allows me to kite. So I'll try to get to this, but sometimes I will have some early raids that just drop off some bolt action rifles, right? So if I have that, then maybe I skip that. But uh, aside from that, some of the best, most important researches in the long run in a game, in my opinion, is deep drilling and ground penetrating scanner. If you have both of these, you have infinite resources. If you build one deep drill and one ground penetrating scanner before your map is out of resources, you never have to leave your map for resources if you don't want to. And then fabrication bench to make your own components. Once you have these three things, you... If you don't want to, you just never have to leave your map. You can just make infinite components. You can mine infinite materials. So I would say these are like three of the best or strongest or most important. But as far as other stuff, it just depends on your playthrough quite a bit. Um, obviously things to defend yourself with electricity. But again, like if I'm playing tribal and I'm on a desert map, maybe I rush to air conditioning after electricity because there's not a lot of wood for passive coolers and heat heat stroke could kill us all, right? So it's going to depend quite a bit, but used to, I would rush mortars a lot in recent um, years. I've started doing that less and I've started relying on pulling, which is dangerous sometimes, pulling mortars with bolt action and just getting free mortars. But what is my energy research path? Um, so again, it depends a little bit, but if I can swing it, I generally try to rush geothermal power, sometimes even on tribal. Now, there's sometimes that I'm not able to do that because, again, maybe the map gets cold, we're starting as tribal. So a lot of times I will get like one um, wind turbine, one uh, solar panel, and one battery, and that'll be enough to survive on even through a winter until I can get to geothermal. But yeah, ge geothermal is pretty incredible. I do try to get to it as soon as I can in most playthroughs, I would say. When I finally grow Coco, unfortunately, Coco was changed at one stage to be worse. I don't understand why. In fact, um, Smurf and I were reporting it as a bug to see if it would get changed. And uh, they basically said that it's not going to get changed. So at least it's not for this patch or DLC. So what do I mean by it was changed to make it worse? So back in the day, Coco could be used on caravans for recreation. So you know how your caravans now just don't get recreation and, unless you have them stop and rest manually? They just don't and people will get unhappy. They'll start breaking down. You just don't get recreation anymore from anything. We used to. That was one of the reasons why Coco existed because that was something that they could use for recreation on caravans. But 
then people complained that, oh, they're actually eating the cocoa for their food as well. And then they're not able to. And so for whatever reason, the developers are like, all right, well, they just won't use cocoa anymore. They just won't recreate. They won't use any. They won't consume anything for recreation on caravans anymore. That was the change that they made. I'm not sure why. And that kind of got rid of the main purpose of chocolate, of cocoa in the game. Now, there's no real reason to make it. Like, because you can make other things that do the same thing but better. It's not a good cash crop. You could do something like beer or something, or sake tea for mood instead. It's It doesn't give a lot of nutrition. So, I don't know. Cocoa went from being, like, the thing you wanted for caravan recreation back in, like, 1.1 earlier to just almost being useless unless you just want to do it for whatever reason, but... So, addiction, if you remember right. Ah, uh, no, Psychic T is still the same. Yeah, Psychic T is still safe on adults every two days. So, I'll put a caveat on that about Psychic T, by the way. So, if they're 18 or older, Psychic T every two days will make it so they never get addicted. However, there's something that a lot of people don't know, and I didn't know this until Smurf and I was were doing the... Um, I have a trait tier list and guide out. And something we discovered during making that is that if someone has chemical fascination or chemical interest, they will take drugs for recreation if they're in their pockets. So if you have a drug policy that has whole two psychic T. Oh yeah, we're taking it every day because I don't care at the moment. Anyway, if you have this on a normal, we're, we're uh, high life, so this doesn't really matter. But if you have this normally, you have to be careful with any of this. Like, let's say we wanted to hold a go juice on everyone for for some occasions, right? So that's already in their inventory and we can use it if they really need it. You have to be careful because anyone that's chemical uh, fascination, kim ponds as we called it, will end up just drinking that go juice if they're scheduled for recreation, which is kind of crazy. But so you could have that happening as well. So I'd be careful with that. Um, if you're not already, you might want to make it so your chemical fascination pawns are just not, um, not set to recreate, just set for anything as to recreate, or just don't have them carry stuff in their pockets. But it's part of the theme. Everyone just likes chocolate now and again. Yeah. Got two things. Well, the LMGs for your tribal colonists early. Yeah, it always feels good. Yeah, to pick up good weapons early because you can skip the research for a while then too, right? Let's go and hit people. Welcome in. Chocolate will be the dark ritual component <laughs> for Anomaly. <laughs> there was some talk about base design. Are there general rules to go build after? So, as always, my thing with Rimworld is do whatever's fun for you. But... If you are min-maxing, if you only care about doing a run where you're min-maxing, maybe you're trying to do like 500% for the first time or something like that. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the best thing in the game is a single superstructure, one big building, one big square, with concrete flooring and statues. That's just how it is with min-max stuff. Now, most people don't use that, right? But if you are doing super min-max, that is the best. But you can do even 5% no pause. One big room, yep. You can do 5% no pause even with like, you know, room setups or village setup, you know. So it's it's really just do whatever you enjoy. But let's turn on Devil Strand, only allowed ingredients. We're gonna switch over to Devil Strand if we can. Yeah, so play whatever's fun with you. But if you are trying to like whatever, let's just say you're trying to beat a harder difficulty for the first time and you want to go more min-max than yeah, a single giant room, unfor unfortunately. Sounds a little boring with one big room. See, I, I, I've never understood that. I was I was saving some, um, some value on this, but I don't think I'm going to worry about it anymore, actually. This is in the new guide that I just put out, but... 
See, I've never understood that because someone will be like, oh, it's so boring that you build the same way every run, which I don't, first off. But then you'll go to and see this person and every single time they're like, all right, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make four bedrooms. And they'll do these four bedrooms the same way every game. But for some reason, this isn't boring. And that's fine. Maybe it isn't for you. It's always kind of mind blowing to me where it's like making one big room is boring, but making the exact same small rooms every game isn't. And that's fine. Maybe it isn't for you, but we've been saying in the eye of the beholder all game. So uh, boring is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> yeah. so, anyway, I play a lot of different ways. So like I said, funny thing is we did a um we did the single phase themed run with like big pretty rooms right like royal rooms for everyone and then literally the run before that we did a solo mechanator run obviously he had his own room and then before that i did the bow only run where i made a giant circle base it was like a target was the base and then we did those three runs right in a row and then the fourth run i made a giant barracks and i had a bunch of comments that were like why do you always just make this only Four rooms, not boring. They made a movie about it. <laughs> so anyway, um, whatever kind of playthrough you want to see, I ha I'm pretty sure I have it. So. The eye of the beholder. That's right. You don't want to be in the eye of the beholder. I think you'll build for your first anomaly run. I haven't decided yet. I think my very first anomaly run, I'll do no kill box to see how the new threats react to no kill box, but I haven't decided how I'm going to actually have the base set up yet. what you do with those four rooms that count yeah but it, it is interesting like most people have a style they build with similarly most of the time right it's whatever do whatever you want the melee gods is still my favorite run of all time melee gods is so fun i can't wait to do melee gods again we're gonna do a melee god run of of anomaly at some point and man with all the new stuff they're showing with anomaly the melee gods i didn't think they could ever get stronger no kill box, ways of zombies, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just build all future as uh as hourglasses. Oh Jerry, you have your base. Isn't that a lot of steel? I have infinite steel, I don't care. Like, even after that, I have twenty seven or twenty two seventy, and but look how much steel we have. We have hundreds of thousands of steel on the map. Look. Literally just in our walls, we have tens of thousands of steel to mine, so. Anyway, I didn't think the melee gods get any crazier. For anyone that didn't see, the melee gods didn't start out easy. Like, there were some really rough moments. We almost lost very early on. But my melee gods run, once they got everything they needed, they could literally be hit with multiple doomsdays and not die. It was crazy. And that's not modded. That's just DLC stuff. But now, Anomaly seems to be adding these serums and these um, rituals and stuff. Yeah, I can't wait to see what the melee gods do in Anomaly. That might be one of our first few playthroughs. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Optimal builds, once you know the optimal build. Yeah, it is It is tough sometimes, yeah. I, that's why I try to do specific themed runs every now and then, just to not build that way. Custom Xenotype is so handicapped in a bad way. No, not exactly. No, I have done runs where, like, everyone's in capable of violence, but they, they didn't have, like, bad genes also, yeah. Cypher Anomaly? Yeah. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Any gods and no weapons. Press X allowed run. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they would do. It'd still be really tanky, but we'll have to see what all anomaly adds. But it's looking like melee gods are going to be extra nutty. A melee god variant run. Sleepless gods added no sleep and tribal start sidecast. Super fun. Yeah, so for anyone that wants to do a melee gods run, first off, like check out the series. It's my favorite uh, from a gameplay perspective. Like it was just a lot of fun. Such a different way to play. But there's an edited version, a full-length version, if you want to watch it up on YouTube. But if you want to play your own Melee Gods run, 
you can download the scenario and the genes and everything, uh, the ideology, all of it, if you want on my website. It's free. Adversaryeverything.com. There's a downloads button. You can put it in your own game and you can do your own Melee Gods playthrough. Uh, a lot of people have done that. And uh, it's always fun to see the the stories like in the Discord of people doing it. Anything specific for the first Nolly run? No, because I don't really know what all to do, right? So the only thing I am thinking right now is that I'm going to do a no kill box run to see how the new threats react to no kill box. Um, but aside from that, I don't have anything specific in mind. I also don't think I'm going to go overkill on pawns. I think I'm going to try to keep myself under like 18-ish pawns. Because I don't want to just... I've never used vanilla sidecast expanded. I don't think I want like the first DLC when I'm experiencing everything new to be like, all right, let's just sit tight and get to 35 pawns of the assault, masterwork assault rifles because I can't imagine them adding a threat that 35 masterwork assault rifles with like shooting specialists couldn't just wall of DPS through, right? And I, I don't want to do that. So I'm thinking my first playthrough, I'll probably stay in the teens of pawns and I will do the no kill box style. So but that's the only things I have in mind so far. Maybe that will change once we hear like the stuff in the fourth preview, but so far that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. You like your wall DPS? Yeah, it's fine. It's really strong. Flamethrowers only. Who's my favorite named pawn in this run? In this run, I don't think I have one. In general, there's a lot, man. 6,000 hours of, of gameplay. I don't know. There's so many. The first ones that always come to mind is like Hysteric from the original Melee run. Christopher from the Melee Gods run was great. Um, it's This is a recency bias, but the kid from the Sango Phase run. I'm so sad that the edit for the Sango Phase run is still not ready because I feel like not a lot of people are going to experience it because the editors tell me now that it'll be on Monday and that's just a few days to watch it before everyone's going to start watching Anomaly stuff instead. And... The Sango Phase run has some of the most, like, crazy RimWorld stories of maybe any run that I've done. And a lot of them are centered around the kid. The kid. So I can't wait for you guys that haven't seen it to watch that. I hope you have enough time to watch it before, or maybe you'll want to watch it still, even with Anomaly out. But, uh, yeah, really crazy run. Yeah, you're probably had a crazy start on the Melee Gods run. It was actually, I thought we were going to lose multiple times. Floor Baby. Yeah, Floor Baby, Mortar Baby, those are memorable. I'm thinking the next preview will probably be Monday, but I have I base that on nothing. Yeah, the Sango Phase run was really long, too. It's like a 14-year run, so... The Kid is a legend, yeah. The Kid Jimbo. It's crazy. I don't want to spoil any of it, but... Yeah, it's such a crazy run. You're going to binge watch the Sango Phase edit? Thank you, yeah. Oh, God. Accidentally closed a raid letter. What was it? Prepare for a while. Tribal. It's mixed tribal and mostly melee. So we could probably go out, even though we, we maybe shouldn't. Let me, uh... They only have two great bows. Yeah, we can we can deal with this pack, no problem. This being a split raid shouldn't be a big deal. Baby girl, you're a little bit slower. Go ahead and get in. I keep trying to take cover behind that chunk. <laughs> okay, that's just that one group. Okay, back in. How many great bows does this one have? One? Why do they have so few great bows? Works for me though. Oh, Raven got hit by a short bow. <laughs> How embarrassing for you, Raven. Okay, 
It, it just hit her armor. I didn't... Uh, oh, what are your pawns you kidnapped, teleported from the cultists? Yeah, we talked about that quite a bit, too. Uh, it's just going to depend on how long that ritual takes, because that's that's pretty brutal. Yeah, it sounds like it could be brutal. So, like a raid, it's basically like a, like a siege, it seems like, right? So, a siege that shows up, but instead of hitting you with mortars, they're, like, vacuuming your colonists out to kidnap them. So, it's just going to depend on how long they have to set up to do it, right? If you don't have a lot of time, let's say it's like six hours or something, that could be really brutal. And it also looked like they were very spread out. So if they are really spread out, you can't really mortar them either. And at first I was like, oh, okay, well, that's not a big deal. You, have, you can't mortar them because um, it's tribal. You can go out and kill them. But then as we were looking through the picture, they had guns. So it's not just tribal cultists. The cultists have like chain shotguns and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. That That's going to be one of the fun parts about the DLC, though, is figuring out these new threats and how to deal with them. It, that has the potential to really suck, though. For sure. Yeah, Jane Deere and something to watch for, yeah. Have you ever built a mega base? Is it covering the whole map? Whole map? No. Mega base? Yes. I did a run back in 1.2 when um, Wealth Independent Mode came out. That was a 20 year run, super long. That's That one run was like 250 hours or more. And we had, it was on a big size map. Most of the map was covered and we even had golden roads and such. Such a long playthrough. We had like 20 ship uh, reactors up at the same time. So crazy. But yeah, I guess that's the closest I've had to building the entire map, but. Oh, that's true. The tiny map. We built the whole whole map on the tiny map. Binge watch Mechanitor run. Ender Speed ran the third base like crazy. Only two episodes. Yeah, not a lot happened in the third base, unfortunately. Randy was pretty quiet, and we also rushed through the the wealth pretty quickly. So, yeah, I hope we get a couple new side cast. Not betting on it, but I hope so. Seems like I need a new mega base run. I was hoping performance increase would allow for more of that, but yeah. I might get rid of the horses soon. I think I'll go do one more trade and I feel like I'm just going to get rid of them. I don't think we really need them anymore. Already back to 4,000 steel. Accord, thank you for the 35 months. Happy days, thank you for the 13 months. Are you happy days? Willy Wonka run. All kids must grow chocolate. <laughs> thank you, Accord. Thank you, Happy Days. The tiny map, I think, is the first playthrough I put up on YouTube. So that's been like... I think it was like 1.1. Holy crap. It's forever ago. That was right after royalty release, I guess. Right after royalty, so... Wow. Yeah. Quite a while. Quite a while. Might have been like... Five years ago. Ever scan for nearby resources mining? I generally don't. I typically just want everyone on the same map, especially playing against Randy. By early game, if I need more components and I can't buy them, I will typically go sell another map and just mine that map and bring them back, but... Any Argonexus run tends to be a little bit meh. Yeah, that one was so low, though, so... It's a little bit more dangerous, of course, but. Your bases cover the entire map on every side of the world. Well, you can only have five bases, so. Base tour, not really much to go over. We have a giant hourglass barracks. We have our workstations in the bottom part here. So lots of fabrication benches and things like that. Uh, and then in the top, we got all of our food production. We have a paste dispenser just in case we get behind on meals. Uh, and then over on this side of the barracks where we are sleeping in our little hospital area. Yeah, not much else. I don't think we're going to use the prison much anymore. Other than that, it's just a big double wall, like almost castle wall. And pretty straightforward this run. 
straightforward. Leg left, bionic leg right, okay. Bionic leg left, bionic leg right, okay. Seal still looking good. Ever get bored of RimWorlds? Uh, I mean, of course, yeah, but it's my job, right? So I tell people it's kind of like asking a cashier or something. You're like, like if you've gone to the store and you've had the same cashier for like two years, going there and be like, man, I've seen you in here for like two years. Don't you ever get bored of cashiering? Don't you want to do something else sometimes? And they're like, uh, yes, but it's my job. <laughs> it's a fun job, but it's still a job. You love doing payroll every Sunday. I, uh, Trisha, you might like this. I have a payroll story. Do you want to hear a payroll story? This just happened to me. It's one of the things I was dealing with yesterday. Frustrating. Frustrating. You know what? I don't care if you want to hear or not. Was it you? Crap is right. Why don't you use stereotype? I know it buffs research speed, but generally it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So putting any flooring down buffs research speed by 6%. And then after that, I'm, I'm not even researched at the moment. Then after that, the next biggest one is actually going to a normal research bench. Cause that's like another, if you compare it to a, a, a advanced research bench to normal, it's like 25% more just baseline from the bench. And then after that, the multi-analyzer gives 10%. So by the time I have like the funds and the defense to, to deal with sterile, tile bloat and making raids bigger it just doesn't matter anymore uh especially with books now you can increase you can increase research 20 percent more even with books like it i mean we researched everything in just like two years time like why do i care you know making it even faster i don't know it was just pawns that were idle anyway but yeah if you want to use it for it that's great you want to hear the story all right here's the story so um to free up some of my own time I decided last year that I would have a tax company do my business taxes because it's it's not super complex, but it is like an S corporation. Uh, and so I also was like, uh, you know, with the setting this up uh, to save myself some time, even though it's not a hard thing, I'm going to have you guys do payroll for me as well because they do that as well. Right. And so we get that all set up and the first bit of payroll, I'm doing it quarterly. So the first bit of payroll comes out of my business account, goes into my my personal account, right? So that's just what it does. It goes out of my own business account into my personal account. And so that happens. I see that happen, right? But the amount that comes out of my business account is the exact same amount that goes into my personal account. So I contact them. I'm like, something seems off here. Are you guys sure you're, you're like paying the, the taxes and stuff on this? Or like... Are you sure you're doing the self-employment? Well, not self-employment, but you know, all the Medicaid, all that crap. I'm not going to go over it. And they're like, oh, it's set up correctly and we have everything in place. And yeah, it's going to pull that out and it's going to pay them. You don't have to work, worry about it. And I was like, all right. Okay. And so it goes through. And then uh, they're doing my business taxes for last year, obviously like now, or they were. Uh, we did an extension because they, they need to do a bunch of other stuff. But anyway... They call me in and I go there and the main guy that's in charge of it all, uh, we sit down. He's like, he's like, I'm not sure which of my employees fault it was or how this happened. He's like, I don't do the payroll. You know, he employs someone that does the payroll. Like it's, it's a business, right? So he does the actual business taxes. And then he has another person that does payroll and another that does like personal taxes, whatever. It's a company. And so he says, yeah, he's like, I'm not sure how this happened or how it got through. Uh, he's like, I sat down to do your business taxes this year, and, and apparently we didn't withhold any of the money or pay the government any of the taxes that we were supposed to withhold for for payroll. And I was like, what? He's like, he's like, somehow they set it up that it was just taking money out of one account and putting it into the other without taking any percentage of it and paying the government. And I was like, I tried to say that, and someone told me, he's like, he's like, I'm really, I apologize about this. And so what they're doing is now they're going to do all my tax stuff this year for free. And so that's going to save me a lot of money, but I'm probably going to have to pay a penalty. I'm sure I'm going to have to pay a penalty. But I couldn't believe that I went in. They were like, so we basically just had it set up. So it's just transferring money from one of your accounts to the other. And we aren't actually, we haven't paid any taxes on it. And I'm like, oh, fantastic. So now I'm going to have to pay all the taxes as like a lump sum, which is going to really suck because that means estimated taxes didn't get paid. Um, 
they're gonna pay the penalty. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we talked about. But I was like, what the crap? <laughs> like, it's really frustrating. Is that's that's the reason I didn't end up getting a stream really yesterday? Is because I had an appointment at the tax office going over all this. And he's like, I'm gonna personally make sure the payroll goes through this time and try to figure out who did this and how it got through this way and whatever. But yeah, it was uh, it's pretty frustrating because it's the first year I've had someone else do it instead of doing it myself to free up time. And now I'm in there because of it, but crazy, crazy. <laughs> it was just literally taking the same amount of money out. And just, just let, they were just moving the money between my two accounts and doing nothing else. It's like they, they even sent me an invoice. Like at the end of the year. Okay. Your bookkeeper retired December 22nd. Your CPA died February 23rd. Your counting has been a nightmare since. Ugh. Yeah, so. And so I've been taxed off as a nightmare. I'll stick to being a wagey. Yeah. So that's uh, that's what happened yesterday. There's my story. What are the best books I found in this run? We haven't. So let's take a look. I haven't looked through them in a while. Uh. There they are. I don't have a lot of them left. I think we got rid of some of them. I think what, this is probably, yeah, excellent quality ones. Here's a good one. Construction all the way up to level 12. Maybe a tax book. <laughs> you between your accounts or half what they charge you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they're making it right, hopefully. If they screw it up again, obviously, I'm just going to go with someone else, but... Uh, kind of another story piggybacking on that. When I was initially looking for a tax place to deal with my S corporation stuff, a lot of people wouldn't, a lot of companies wouldn't that are nearby in Indianapolis. One of them I contacted and to set this up and they called me back. And then the person on the phone was like, they like glossed over this. They were like, yeah, we're happy to do your business's taxes for you. Uh, we do have a minimum. So we typically only do business taxes for a business that's making roughly about 1200 per hour. I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back. How much? And so they were, they were only a, per, a place that did like big businesses. But uh, I was like, excuse me, uh, what number was that? Did you add, did you add three zeros to that? 1200 per hour income on a business, yeah. 1200 not 200 1200 I'm not making anywhere near $1,200 an hour, yeah. Uh, it's crazy. But this was, uh, I, I just called, like, so many companies in Indianapolis just trying to see, get what they did and the deals and, or whatever, see what they would do. And some of them were like that. It ended up being, like, just for huge companies, so it's funny. Uh, yes, yeah, billable hours, yeah. $1,200 per hour, billable hour. It's like, no, I'm just a little bit off from this. Just a little bit. You're married to your account? Accountant? Nice. They should pay the penalties. They will. Yeah, he told me to, that if I get anything like that, just to give it to them and they take care of it. So, Watch the shotgun tunnel guy. Nice. If there is known range that a colonist can shoot their own wall, even the one they're next to, it's changed in 1.5. They can shoot even the one they're right next to now. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Before 1.5, colonists wouldn't damage a wall within five tiles where they shot. But they changed it 1.5. Why don't I floor everything? Speed. Let me show you. Look in the bottom left. Walk speed out here, 87%. Walk speed on concrete, 100%. Walk speed on the sand, 76%. Walk speed on concrete, 100%. Movement speed. Very important in room worlds, especially on a no kill box style, because I need to be able to get to places quickly. Bonic leg left, bonic leg right. All right, so that was my little tax stories that happened recently while uh, while we were getting these bionics made. Oh, the ads vlogging. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we have a factor deal going on at the moment. Sorry. Guys, I really like Factor. I I probably should have been talking about it more. Yeah, let me move the ad because I kind of had it there for the, the other stream. I'll move it really quick. Uh, those on YouTube aren't even seeing it because this it's a Twitch only thing. But I'll mention Factor really quick. For anyone that doesn't know, 
every single time Factor offers me a deal, I'm going to take it because me and my family like it so much. It's... It's... On, on the deal, if you get it on the deal, it's super worth it. It's really good. Like, my wife was asking... She was like, can we do... She's like, can we do Factor while you are doing the streamathon stuff? And let me move chat as well. Because it's it saves so much time and, it's, and the food's good too. We've tried a lot of these companies and this has been the best one. And I'm not just saying that because it's the current sponsor. I talk about it all the time. Uh, so if you haven't, on, on, on Twitch, you can do Exclamation Factor if you want to get the deal if you've never gotten it before. I will say that if you do the deal and you're only doing it for the really cheap first couple boxes, make sure it's a subscription. Make sure you turn it off. I have no qualms with that at all, but really good. All right, let's see if that's... Uh, let me know if that works for you guys on Twitch. Yeah, so Factor is a prepared meal, meal service where they deliver meals to your door, and then you put them in the oven for about eight minutes... And, uh, yeah, we've, we're going to do it throughout the streamathon for this because it's a little bit more expensive, but with the deal, it's a really good deal. And it saves not only time on cooking and things like that, it saves time on trying to figure out what we're going to have for the week and also going and getting the groceries. You may or may not have bought like 30 meals on the deal and then turn it off. Yeah. Take advantage of it. Yeah. It might be up on YouTube as well. If you guys want to type Exclamation Factor on YouTube, if you're curious about it, you can check it out. If it doesn't work for you, then the link is on my Twitch, though, uh, in the below the stream and at the command. There's the wrong body parts. It's been a while. Yeah, I used to do... I'm a lot more careful about that now. Installing the wrong leg, yeah. Stopped and restarted a bunch of times. Extremely worth it on the first box. Yeah, if it was... So, like Soul Saber saying, if it was always the cost of the first box, we would literally have it every meal. There's some really good food. Like, I was surprised. I've tried all kinds of them. And, uh... Yeah, it's, it's really good. I will tell you that if you're like me, a single meal might be, like, lunch size. My wife and my daughter have a single one for dinner. Sometimes I'll have something with it. Like, I'll have that and, like, some bread and stuff. Or I'll have two of them. But they are, they are lunch-sized for, for, like, me. I'm 6'1". I'm, like, 6'1", 180. And I generally would eat two and, like, a piece of bread with it for dinner. So I'll, I'll let you know that. How long do the meals last? I never freeze them. So if you don't freeze them, which we don't, um, they're good for about a week. Depending on what the ingredient is. So what we usually do is when we get our box of them, we get them on Tuesdays. We go through and we see which one's going to go bad first. And we'll just put them in that order and eat them in that order. Can you pick the day it arrives? Yes, we pick Tuesday for mine. Not the end of normal meal prep each week. Yeah, it's actually good. I just wish... I mean, with prices going up everywhere, now it's even a better deal. Especially if you get... It on like my sponsor deal when it comes up but man you end up freezing yours yeah we've never fr uh, frozen ours we just eat them in order they'll go bad but do you need to build a freezer for factor no yeah i think um yeah it also depends on how close you are to like a one of their like meal prep places like for us we can pick like anything like monday through thursday or something but I have had people tell me that they don't have access to as many days to, to choose. And that's probably distance from uh, from the supply or something. Going K, welcome in. None of yours had an expiration on them? Really? Yeah, that's interesting. They just told you Tuesday was your earliest? Yeah. We were getting them on Mondays, so I switched it to Tuesday. All right, so right now we are going through getting bionic legs on everyone. And I guess I can go ahead and start building a ship. Just to make sure that we're going to have everything for it when the time comes. Also, let's go ahead and get these moved down. These new chunks. All the chunks there. I have plenty of space for a ship, yeah. Of course, a month in a fridge, it was fine. Really, yeah. No, we always eat them week of, but it's a really good deal, honestly, if you get it right now. Uh, another, like, I'm not supposed to say this, but another full disclosure, disclosure thing on the factor thing. They are basically giving me... Man, how do I say this? Um, 
They're giving me, aside from just a normal payout, they're giving me a, a certain amount of money every time someone orders it. And the amount is relatively substantial to the point where if you are buying a small box, I'm probably getting all the money you buy from that first small box on the deal. So if you're doing that just to try it, you're basically donating that money to me and then getting some food for it. It's really nice when the stream gets a little bit bigger during times like this because I can negotiate things like that. Like before, they would have been like, you can either just have an affiliate deal or we'll pay you like whatever, a flat, a flat amount. So exploit. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that, but they'll probably they would probably catch me, but I'm not going to do that. But um, yeah, just just to let you know how it, how it works. Uh, question. Thank you for the four months. Sad, thank you for the 17 months. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, question. Lillian Darkheart. How's it going, Lillian? Will you do your first dolly run with all DLC enabled? I haven't decided. I've really been trying to decide how I want to do that. Oh, God. He might be dead from friendly fire. Well, nah, it's, it's fine. He didn't get much friendly fire, so. Yeah, mo mostly bug hits. Okay, we're fine. Lots of dug too deep today. Enigma, thank you for the bits. Thank you, Enigma. Buying a house in the US so you can use the deal. <laughs> Free subs, it doesn't have your code. Uh, no, only on your first box, yeah. Only on your first one. Soup kitchen. I'm in Canada, so it is too expensive here for you. Do you like their food? We'll check out the deal for you. Yeah, like I said, it's super worth. I mean, it's different for everyone, of course, what is and isn't considered worthwhile for you. But I will say, in my opinion, on the deal, it is super good. If they ever have the deal, take it. Because the food is actually good. I've got a lot of good food from them. What am I going to do with all this freaking steel? <laughs> Add it, ship launched, and cable violence run. Um, What was the wealth on it? Do you remember? Because I feel like that's probably not the one. This one looks quite similar to the last run. Yeah. Last run, we used, we used a kill box. We used a giant barracks, and it was temperate forest. You'd switch over to steel floor. Yeah, there's no real reason to, but yeah. Okay, she's done tending. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just build that ship first. We'll go from there. Yeah, I used... I was talking about it earlier. I used to really do wealth control, and I would do ship launch with like 80,000 wealth, and then we would end ship launch like 115. That was a long time ago, though. That was when I would use, like, heavy SMGs on 12 pawns for the entire ship launch. <laughs> Crazy. Back when mech, mech center drops were a thing. Yeah. Got insects in an ancient danger activate. They were inside a mountain, multiplying and digging away. By the time you found them, they were massive. That sh yeah, that's a... Were you, are you using any mods, Sindori? Because otherwise it's a bug, yeah. Do we know the price of Anomaly? No, still don't. Both of the platforms got ads at the same time to answer your question. Oh, crap. Uh, what was your question? Oh, okay. Um, time for an... Are you still there? Okay, you must be. Okay. Uh, so your question was about the sh new shotgun tunnel guide about damaging walls. So unfortunately, as of 1.5, they changed it so that pawns can damage walls that they are standing by. Before 1.5, a pawn with a normal type of gun, not like explosive or something, couldn't actually hit a wall within five tiles, but that's no longer the case. So yeah, as of 1.5, your pawns are going to damage nearby walls um, at the cover behind. So to, to kind of show what it would look like. So let's say, let's say you have this setup, And these plans are your pawns. So you have a pawn here. Let's say you have eight pawns and they're shooting this way. Okay. So whatever, you probably get the idea. Like 
obviously you wouldn't have this kind of setup, but let's say this is what it is, right? All right, you have these eight pawns. Before 1.5, none of these walls would take any damage from anything other than the enemy shooting at them. As of 1.5, this pawn will damage any walls around them that they're aside from the one they're standing behind. Now, it hasn't changed friendly fire, so they won't hit this pawn, but this pawn is going to damage any wall in the direction that they're shooting in, aside from the one they're immediately standing behind. And the only reason they can't damage that one is because they peek. It's, it's pretty unfortunate. So it just means that in most kill box setups of any kind now, you're going to have to repair stuff more often, which is kind of frustrating. But now why do they change it? Does that ruin the shotgun tunnel? No, I just put out a shotgun tunnel guide that goes over it. So uh, if you haven't already, I put out a shotgun tunnel guide like yesterday. Single row is fine. Single row is fine. Yep. Uh, Ma, thank you for the brand new sub. Thank you, Ma. Hopefully I'm getting your name right. Hawkeye, thank you for the brand new sub also. Thank you, Hawkeye. So why did they change it? So used to, if there was a wall here and you had a pawn that was shooting... I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but let's say you had a pawn that was here. This pawn, if they were shooting at an enemy here, when they missed that enemy, shots weren't able to hit walls within five tiles. So what the bullet, bullet would do, instead of hitting the wall, if it didn't hit the floor and it didn't hit the person, it would actually shoot through the wall. So you would have instances where this shot would actually damage raiders over here or even over here or whatever. And so they fixed it because it didn't make sense to have people sometimes missing and their bullets going, materializing on the other side of a wall. But in doing so, they've now made it so that you have to repair a lot more. So it's unfortunate, but uh, it makes sense like why they changed it. But it's weird that they chose to fix that and they didn't choose to fix some of the other stuff in the game. I don't, I don't know. Like that barely ever happened. And you couldn't really, like, rely on it. You couldn't reasonably build something to take advantage of it. But you can still build a burn tunnel where people walk into a thousand Celsius temperatures and just die, right? So it's like, maybe that's just something harder to fix. I don't know. But anyway, that's how it's changed. That's how it works now. Shotgun tunnel still works. You just have to repair it more often, which is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, my shotgun tunnel guide came out yesterday or the day before. It's up on YouTube if you want to check it out. And it goes over all this stuff as well. Videos also have barricades that are being destroyed a lot faster than walls. Even use plasteel. Deal with big raids with it. I mean, you can see it be big raids be dealt with with it in the video. It's the same way. Yeah. It still works just fine with it. Like I showed every raid type in the video. Um. Now it's going to get destroyed faster with the mirror setup. So the mirror setup is going to kill faster, but also destroy walls faster. But. It's funny because you think, Bra yeah, Brains had a um, had a mod that fixed it without causing the other problems yet. Yeah. The line of sight fix or whatever. The family doing? They're doing all right. They were asking. Not the peaking. Yeah, yeah. They want damage the peaking wall. Actually, when they first put the change out, you could. Oh no. You could, but they changed that. Did they ever fix the insect targeting bug? I don't know. I haven't ran into it in a while, so I hope so, but I haven't seen a patch specifically mention it, so I don't know. Game, you streamed it. Watch you. Over those people. Thanks. Appreciate that. This gives you Fallout 2 Enclave vibes. All right, you guys are gonna have to fight for your lives against this rat. Surely you can overcome. Pull out a club out of nowhere. This guy looking for charity is armed. Hmm. Hmm. Pawns cannot damage the wall that they're peeking from. That single pawn can't, no. When 1.5 first came out, you could kind of do that. Oh my god. There were so many weird things that 
So the other crazy thing is when they were trying to fix that thing that I was showing about the invisible bullets uh, or the whatever, the bullets phasing through walls, it caused a lot of like 10 other problems they then had to go out and fix. When they first changed that in 1.5, you could actually have a pawn shoot themselves. And then pawns were blowing themselves up, uh, with trying to throw grenades from cover. Uh, mortars were blowing them, their, their selves up if there's anything nearby them. Like there's so many problems it caused. I wish they just left it alone. Uh, Cell Dune, thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you, Cell. Appreciate it. Yeah, so again, just while this stuff is getting done, I'll talk about it. But when 1.5 first came out, if Raven was standing in this doorway, occasionally Raven would shoot the door they're standing on, destroying the door they're standing on, and potentially shooting themselves. That's just crazy. And then they fixed that. And then they made it so that, uh, and then it left it where that if you're throwing a grenade from here, grenades could land on the open door that they're standing on and blow themselves up and kill them. So they fixed that. And then that introduced this problem where if you are throwing a grenade from cover like this, sometimes the grenade would land on the wall in front of you, even if you were just throwing it like over here. And so they're blowing themselves up and they fixed that. But then it turned out that if anything was near a mortar, mortars, even though they shoot up, were actually hitting friendly fire on things nearby and just exploding and killing everyone. So <laughs> I wish they just left that friggin' thing alone because it caused so much trouble. I thought that was a feature. <laughs> JR 71 months tier two. Thank you, Jer. Never get to a year. <laughs> Man, that is so long. Well, we were talking about Darkest Dungeon earlier, actually. You were you were around back in those days. That's where you're came from. Yeah, it's one of those things they fix one thing and it causes ten other problems. But it is what it is, I guess. I click like left, I click like right. Okay, let's try this again. You got rid of the bullet teleporting and I succeeded. We did succeed. All right, getting the ship made. Maybe we'll build some other kind of silly stuff for the ship. That happens a lot too. It's it's interesting the kind of stuff that they fixed in this patch. There's things that have been in the game since the beta that we thought was like, why haven't they fixed this? It must be because it's really hard to fix. And then suddenly they just fix like 90% of them. Dropping. Yeah. Well, they don't anymore in RimWorld, thankfully, but. Star Traders Frontiers. I've not played that. Uh, we need some uranium, okay. Got plenty of steel, so let's go ahead and move the... What is that? That's plasteel. Uh, where's some uranium? I know we have plenty. Yeah, there's some. Go ahead and move some of these. Pull out some uranium there for the ship stuff. enough they fixed the breach cheese yes they fixed the breach cheese too yeah lots and lots of things they fixed corner punch singularity 1.5 fixed singularity kill box exploit yes yep singularity is gone in 1.5 if it dug too deep triggers gonna i don't think so yeah missed shots we'd be shooting from this side so missed shots would probably destroy this stuff it's not gonna miss that far away ghoul liver for the last time that's not my name uh oliver they were the seven months thank you oliver <laughs> hey you got capitalized the right letter letters all right ghoul liver well i'm not coming back for an eighth month if you're gonna call me ghoul liver uh oliver thank you for the resub This is how we got into the taco making incident, you know? Does colony wealth ever cap out so raids get, stop getting stronger? 
There's a short answer and a long answer to that. The short answer is yes. The medium answer is 10,000 raid points is the cap. The long answer is there's a lot of things to add to raid points and wealth is only one of those things. And depending on your difficulty, you may or may not ever be able to hit the 10,000 raid points. So for raid point calculation, the game stops calculating wealth to raid points at a million wealth. So if you're on like 10% difficulty, you're you're just never going to hit max raid points. It's just You're just not. But on 500%, you're going to hit raid point cap at like 200 to 250,000 raid points. Yeah, that's what the game uses to send raids. So basically wealth adds to raid points. The amount of colonists you have adds to raid points. Your animals add to raid points. All those things add to raid points. And raid points determine how many enemies are sent with a raid, but it also determines raid types. So for instance, there is a certain raid point level where you can't get sieges yet. It's pretty early on. There's a there's a raid point level. I think it's like it's pretty low too, like 700 raid raid points where you can't get mechs yet. So is it better now? No, no, no. <laughs> well, at least the O and Oliver is, is capitalized. Uh, Oliver, thank you again. You can think of raid points kind of as, yeah, like raider budget. Yeah. And there are certain raid types that also have a cap that is lower than others. So that's why, like, in the very end game on max difficulty, breachers look so small. Breachers cap is 50% raid points. So breachers, you can think of it like it costs 5,000 raid points for them to send that breach raid. And the other 5,000 are spent on the units that they sent. But really, the cap of Breachers in the late game is 5,000. Whereas the cap on, like, a normal raid, it would have been 10,000. So, like I said, short answer, long answer. Short answer, yes, raids eventually cap and no, no longer get larger. Long answer, there you have it. Okay, Royal Ascent right now. And one of the Cell Arcs, Genesis, Jealous, Depressive, Neurotic. Constant breakdowns of power armor and persona weapons. Uh, if you have a casket, you could put them in it, Nate. Always equip melee weapons all the time when using the shotgun box. Equip the melee weapons only when needed. So the answer, so there's, there's, I should have maybe put this part in the guide, Kono, but basically you want your front, your two front liners to have melee weapons if you can. And the reason why is what happens sometimes is if your frontliners that are in the melee block position have guns, they will try to shoot at an enemy. And if they're on cooldown from shooting, or like they sh they got their shot off, but they're still on co cooldown to the next shot, or they're still in the aim, um, like animation, the enemy that's coming by could just walk past them before they have enough cooldown time to attack and melee lock the person that's coming in. So, yeah, it's pretty important to have your frontliners, if you want it to work completely well and efficiently, it's pretty good, to, it's pretty important to have your frontliners not have ranged weapons. So, even like bare hands or, uh, yeah, melee weapons or whatever, just on those melee blocking positions, or the shotgun tunnel specifically, if you don't have three, if you have two there. Hopefully that makes sense. Can I call us again, crawling towards the animal medical spot instead of a hospital bed? <laughs> Is that a known bug? I haven't had it happen yet, so I didn't know about it, but definitely sounds like a bug. Melee weapons that can be thrown. Like a Pila. I mean, a Pila is a ranged weapon. All all ranged weapons have a melee attack also, but yes, any anything that could have them have a warm-up cooldown time from shooting or throwing would be detrimental it wouldn't necessarily make it not work at all, but it would be detrimental to the setup, yeah. It depends. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. It's looking good. So getting those bionics done. Looks like we're ready for the next one. I think colonists have dive, only eleven have. Do you print colonists counts too? It's that's bugged, and I don't know why. There's a there's this whole thing in here is bugged, and it's been bugged for like ever. So it'll actually not give you the correct number of threats either. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. It'll also count faction pawns. So like if you've arrested someone 
and they're your faction and they die, that'll also count as a colonist being killed. Like, these numbers in here, for whatever reason, from major threats down, seem to screw up a lot. I don't know why. It's been like that a long time, but... It is possible you might have lost a faction pawn in this counting, or... Like I said, it's also possible that it's just not correct. Freaking surgery's failing. That's why the Neanderthal ran over your melee blockers, you think? Yeah, I might want to put that in the comments. So it's very... It's not super likely that people do that, because I try to say melee blockers, so I feel like people know to use melee in those positions, but I should put that little addendum there just in case. And we're already through all that gold. Jeez. There's 300 more. I know we've scanned quite a bit more, but it doesn't look like there's any in the immediate wall there. Surely gold's the smaller ones. Yeah, like there. Oh, there's some gold right there too, I just saw. Or like a pot, yeah, like who knows? Abasia, Ritual Pawn, who knows? You have multiple bases, you have it to five bases, yeah. You have it to five bases, all your bases have their own expectations, they all have their own wealth uh, and raid points separately. So if you have like a base that's, that's max raid points and you have another base that's like a single pawn living by themselves and squalor, uh, they're gonna get barely anything on raids. The thing that's shared, though, are events like, for some reason, if you have a colony on the other side of the planet and you, like, take an organ, that person immediately is unhappy about it. And the other thing is population intent is now shared between all bases. Is there an end for underground resources? No. Is it mineral scanners or anything? Yes. So in 1.2, they changed it so that mineral scanners are a research job that, for all intents and purposes, just spawn new resources forever it's not discovering them it just spawns them now back before 1.2 i know it doesn't really matter now but before 1.2 you got one scanner and it didn't actually scan as soon as you made it it revealed all material under the ground on the map and that was it that was it for that map that was uh, that's all you got so they changed that 1.2 which i really liked that change the level of beauty is good for the shotgun tunnel um, I mean, as your expectations go higher, you want it to be higher and higher. The biggest thing is beauty here for it. So having just any kind of statue of normal or better quality next to each shooter in the long run will be good enough for beauty. Been shared between colonies. Go down and one. No, each colony also has its own. Yeah, its own raids and stuff. Yeah. So like if you're playing on Cassandra, Cassandra will have a cycle at both colonies. Yep. Or Randy, for instance, will fire at both colonies separately. All right. Gold coming in again. Yeah, it's so crazy. Like, <laughs> we, we said before, like, they're what? Immediately calling the person? Hey there, how you doing over in that, uh, that new settlement? Oh, it's going really well. Yeah, I'm just calling you to let you know that um, I know how much you hate it. We just tortured a prisoner and stole his organs and then butchered him. And some of us over here ate his meat. What? Why are you telling me this? I just wanted you to be unhappy like the rest of us. Bye. <laughs> like, what? Okay. Thank thanks for reaching out. All right, have these reset? It, but it's instant. It's instant. Uh, let's see. Speaking of humane leather. Uh, I want to keep quite a bit of this because we're actually taking one per day, which is quite a bit. Quite a bit. Oh, I meant to dump those bio-coated. Got a lot of them. I'll just smelt them. No, I'm going to I'm gonna dump them. I don't... 
we we have like infinite steel and I just don't want to take the time. Change my mind pretty quickly. I sell some of these also while we're gone. Helped you realize you developed a lot of habits early on that only now realize should have changed because of game updates. Yeah, there's a lot of things that happen like that. Yeah, so one of the things that happened yesterday, for instance, is someone in the YouTube comments was talking about how you want to make sure the enemies are in the dark when they're shooting at you because enemies have lower action in the dark. That changed in the beta. That was changed. You can go back and look at the patches. It was changed in beta 19. So at darkness outside of memes, precepts, etc., has not have impacted accuracy for like nine years or something. <laughs> like maybe eight years. But, you know, if you never read that update and you never looked into it, you would just think that's how it works from then on forward. And it does it not anything against that person or anyone that thinks that. It took me a long time to realize as well. But there are a lot of things like that that change over time in the game, that change fundamentals of the game that um, you might still be doing and there's no reason to, unless you just want to, right? Obviously, but didn't seem worth it. You never realized the change you just mentioned. Yeah, it just spawns resources forever. I mean, look at this. We have literally hundreds of thousands of resources on this map. Tens of thousands just in our wall. You ever try to make the factions harder or easier by changing their ideology precepts? No, I thought about it, though. Like, making it so to make sure no other factions have darkness than going darkness, yeah. knew about that change gonna know yeah so it makes and it makes a lot of logical sense right it's like all right i want or or the opposite makes a lot of sense i want my people in the dark and i want the enemy lit up like in real life right that way we have better accuracy but it doesn't work like that in the game there's there's very little realism of course which is fine all right so we're out to get as many advanced components as we can and if we have excess we'll grab golds uh, excess tradables. Let's just grab the components first off. This one reset also. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I have a, a mini guide up on YouTube about lights. But the short of it is you basically always want your people in lit areas. Because it increases their mood. Or more so, it doesn't decrease their mood. Darkness decreases mood and decreases movement speed for biological units baseline. Or humanoids, I guess I should say. Alright, so we're gonna need another double bed, huh? Uh, whatever. Who was it? Cam and Raven. Okay. So, Raven... Go ahead and make it so you can't have kids here. Oh, right. Our ideology doesn't allow them to lay together yet anyway, but... Imagine if scanned resources increased wealth. Yeah, that would suck. That would suck. So, light does not make mechs slower or animals slower. Or, I mean, uh, darkness. Darkness doesn't make mechs or animals slower, but it does make uh, humans slower. But it's not too much yet. It's been pretty pretty straightforward today, honestly, so far. We're just kind of getting things ready for a ship launch. Overall. Things are going well. We're getting bionics installed at the moment, though we failed several surgeries, unfortunately. What's the best hospital bed? Oh, there's a poor one. Get rid of that. There's a legendary... The bottom left? Okay.
Okay, let's get another one of these made. Llama. Masterwork, nice. How come it's never having insomnia ever sleeping with lights on? I don't know, man. This would be terrible. Imagine sleeping in a room with 20 other people and there's a floodlight at the end of your bed. Oh, no. We finally... Oh, no. <laughs> we finally got screwed on Badger. It was only a matter of time. He can't beat six imps by himself. So we're gonna have to make him a new charge rifle. Unfortunately, it's a legendary one. Sorry, Badger. It sucks. Fastest death in the game? Uh, I've had a lot of fast ones. The one that's most memorable is back when I was doing the 20 year runs. So this is when... Uh, Wealth Independent Mode first came out. I had just like the best map of all time. We called it at the time. We found some other ones. All the time, no drop pods. You think I have time to drop pod people over and save him on no pause? No. Any, anyway, um, I, we were, we found like one of the best maps ever. At the time we were calling, we found better since, but at the time we were calling it like the, the God Seed, right? It was such a good map. So really, really good map. And started out uh, Naked Tribal Brutality, just so just a single pawn. I'm settling by this mountain and the mountain is... I mean, there's an anima tree right up against the mountain. Super good. And there's also an ancient danger there. And on like day one, day zero, like the very start, right? We're not even saying one over there yet. Randy sends us a, a big trade group. And I'm like, oh my God, we can, we can use this. We can open the ancient danger and the trade group's going to take care of this. And it was wealth independent. So we were trying to rush ahead of the wealth curve. So Wealth Independent just means the game gets harder based on time rather than uh, raid points. And we're playing that 500%. So I opened the Ancient Danger and I I deconstruct. That was before I was doing the corner thing. I was really trying to open it to get them to attack it. I open it and there is a Lancer that insta shoots and destroys the brain of my character. <laughs> so like, oh my God. It's like, I'm using this map again. Screw it. Let's go again. But it was just like, Perfect. It's like, oh, we're going to get ahead. We're going to get ahead. Open this so the traders can kill it. Pop open a single Lancer. Headshot. Brain destroyed. Yeah, so that's the most memorable day one death I think I've ever had. Frustrating. Well, at least it happened that early, you know. Ice Sheet Tribal frozen to death on day one, yeah. We just got a huge raid because of a dropped waste packs. One huge raid from the other side from Randy and one big mech cluster at the same time. If you close all your doors, that raid that spawned will attack the mech cluster and then you can just deal with whoever wins if you want. Well, the infinite mode ramp up. You can, you can put it on... Um, when we first tried it, Psychic ship. Crap. When we first tried it, we tried against Cassandra and she was hitting a raid cap on like day 40. It was nuts. But yeah, you can you can change it. Okay, we're gonna wake these up. Uh I don't have low shield. Gotta be careful. Actually, I think we just destroy it with these, honestly. Single Diabolus, okay. <laughs> Cam, let's grab... What do you have? Excellent. Uh, grab the EMP. Actually, no. We have someone that has a brain implant. I don't want to... For that 83, okay.
Come on. Is there a smart guide on temperature heater schoolers? No, I don't have one of those. Are which mechs worth using? Got ways to... Oh. Yeah, mechs are enemies to everything else, so... Like, if you can ever lock the doors and have mechs fight animals or... Hey, masterwork. Or whatever. An engraving on this weapon illustrates an empty necktie. The work reminds the viewer of mercy. <laughs> like... Person just read like 50 shades of gray or something. Not that I know anything about that. And usually for this kind of work, the image is bordered by eight eels. An open door on the open tile so drop pods can't land there. You don't have to have the door open. It's up to you if you want it. But, uh... Now, as far as drop pods laying there, they're not going to land on it if the door is closed. If it's open, you might want to like zone a chunk there or something. Oh. Mm. Max worth it, Legendary, other big ones. Ah, uh, they can be good, yeah. They can be good. Shields are great, like, um, it's almost like a shield belt for your shooters, if you have it, yeah. One more hit. Uh, this doesn't really matter, but... Right. So the Diabolus is the main thing. There it is that we have to be careful of. Everything else should be kind of fine. There's also quite a few tests are on though. I'm gonna use Marksman Command. Creepy Girl, are you? A freaking half cycler. Raven has food poisoning, okay. So I'm basically gonna try to use these guys as uh Human shields here. Oh god. Only fire. You guys gonna get the tester on or not? Gotta get that tesser on there. Okay, go. It's on cooldown. Okay. Alright, unfortunately we had a bunch of friendly fire on those guys, but... For the most part, not a big deal. We can re-ally them. Yeah, the Thermo was doing a pretty good job too, huh? Psychic addiction, whatever. Music busted? Nope. If you're hearing music problems, it's probably the Twitch bug. So basically, there's a Twitch latency bug where the stream tries to micro catch up. You mainly notice it on, on music, not any other game thing. 
that's happening to you, you can either reload or click on the gear on Twitch and turn off low latency mode in advanced settings. Find a way to reliably but safely mentally break tortured artist bonds. Uh, I usually just build them into a wall and let them break and then I open it back up. I mean, eat the is pretty useful. Yeah, yeah. Music's fine on YouTube. Yeah, it's a it's a Twitch bug. Yeah. Twitch has super low latency, but sometimes you run into that sort of thing. God, we're like single volleying them. That's crazy. And another raid. It's the Empire. Tanked immediately. Oof. I need to re-ally the Empire. <laughs> this is getting kind of scary. Kind of wasn't thinking about them showing up with their own uh, shield belts and stuff. Forgot about that. Shield belts and mono swords and stuff. Psychite T costs more than Yayo? No. I have Psychite T because we're taking it ourselves, so I'm just giving the excess away. TP guard, thank you for the raid. Thank you, TP. Good day to me. Thank you, thank you. Good day to you. Watch this. <laughs> oh no, what are we gonna do about the Empire? Hey, leave us alone. Modern Minecraft. Hey, we just got word from back home. They just dropped a thousand drugs on our front lawn. Leave them alone, leave them alone. <laughs> it fixed the gift value a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's better. That death was it on the map where you played your cursed fluid ideology run? No, that was much later on. Yeah, this was this was when royalty was the the newest DLC. I think you're glad you find the guides useful. Cheated. All right, guys, we've done enough damage. Head home. Wait, wait, what happened? Boss called in. He said they just gave us a big, huge gift of drugs. Uh, whoops, I grabbed the wrong thing there. Drugs? Yep, let's go back home and take some. Okay. Oh, well, that, uh, like 400,000 or something. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, four, almost on the dot. Wow, look at that. You know, that works. 
Yeah. Any faction that you can ally, if you ally them while they have enemies of that type on the map, they'll just leave. How do you know how much to give them? Uh, for me, it's just experience. Like, I knew that would probably get us... I knew it would at least get us neutral, and I was hoping we'd get to allied, and I was... I was, like, almost right, but not quite. How does no kill box even work? Uh... We just go out and kill things outside of the walls. They attack the walls, and we go out and kill them little groups at a time. Uh, Tippy, thank you for the four months. Thank you, Tippy. Igor's retailer gets updated 1.5. That run was so fun. Yeah, Igor was fun. Wasted Waves was a lot of fun. Yeah, hopefully all that gets updated. All right, this kid came to us, and look at that. He rolled nimble. Nice. I need another cook. More construction, more medical is always good. I'll just grab construction. He didn't get too high of learning tier because he came to us already, you know, not... Not great, so. <laughs> yeah, didn't you see? You just bribe everyone with drugs. No, it's mainly just fighting outside the walls, yeah. Entire map's the kill box, after all. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but the... The thicker your walls in this... Kind of play through the better. It buys you time to go out and kill little groups at a time. Looking forward to playing the new DLC. And it's like Z levels, you understand? Uh, not exactly. So it's... It's faking a Z level. So what it is, is... From, from what we know from the preview, is like... There are these caves that if you click on, it produces like a, a battle map. Just like... It's the same Z level if if I did an attack job from the Empire right now, right? It's another little combat map, but it's it's a cave map, so it, it like makes it look like it's a Z level. But we'll see, we'll see. But that's what it looks like from the preview. Pseudo Z level, Z level lights. Four never happened to you before. Have four big ones at the same time. Close the doors surely help. Yeah, just make sure you remember to reopen them when, when you need to. Go on, Barton. Welcome in. This was a friendly, humane leather drop. Why is no one playing Phoebe as storyteller? Uh, Phoebe is just the easiest storyteller. She's I find her kind of boring. So, Phoebe... BB has a cycle like Cassandra, so you can know when she's able to attack, when she's not. But unlike Cassandra, she can only attack one time before she goes on cooldown again. So maybe that's the kind of style you want, right? Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I typically don't use V because uh, it was kind of boring. What are we doing on those? Okay, we're good. Uh, I still hate that they changed this. This was changed like back in 1.3 or something. I still hate it. They, they did it so... Well, I make sure you have to micromanage it so it completely undoes the reason they did it. I'll be right back. Flex. Give me the brand new sub. Thank you. Flex Remington. Appreciate it. I'll be right back. Green table is not worth a comfort. Not after excellent beds because they don't do anything. So basically, a bed has a comfort cap. And if you get excellent or better beds, so I made sure I made excellent or better. Once you get to excellent or better, it only takes one attached item to cap comforts. And a dresser can connect to like as many beds in that area as it can reach. And so at this stage with excellent or better beds, I only need a dresser to make all these capped in comfort. Right back.
trying to sleep five feet away from someone doing brain surgery. <laughs> uh, Durant, thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Perry Persistent is the best. Perry Persistent was okay, but he is Cassandra with more minor events. Like, at, at the beginning, I thought he was going to send more raids, but he doesn't. It's literally a modified Cassandra. So, Perry Persistent is, is Cassandra's raid cycle, but with more minor events, which is fine. Is traders and trade ships frequently based on storyteller? Uh, yes, within reason. So, each storyteller has an average amount of traders they send per year of each of those two kinds, and a time between they're able to send another one. So, yeah. What kind of schedule? I have a scheduling guide up. Like, it's really detailed. So I changed my schedule a lot throughout the entire playthrough. There's the schedule guide with timestamps. Right now, I'm just using a very standard schedule. But during ship launch, I'll probably use biphasic or triphasic. Who here even has a dresser they use? I have a dresser, yeah. What's your favorite total Warhammer 3 Lord to play as? It's tough, man. I will tell you. So the thing of, I really like Total Warhammer 3. It's one of my favorite games to play. It's unfortunate it doesn't do well on the stream. It's funny saying it doesn't do well when I average like 400 on it. But you know what I mean compared to RimWorlds. Um, but every time someone asks me that, I start naming off like 10 Lords, which I think is a pretty good sign that the game is just a really good game. I really like it. But I will tell you some of my most fun playthroughs of all time. And some of them are surprising. Some of them are not. My most fun playthroughs on Total Warhammer 3... Ikit is always fun, so he might be one of my favorite legendary lords. Ikit is so fun to play as. The workshop is just crazy. Being able to nuke someone in Total Warhammer is just absurd, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I love playing as Tarox. Tarox is when you want to do like a Wrecking Ball playthrough, and you don't really want to think very much, and you want to, you know, smash through things. Tarox is, is that. So Tarox campaigns are a lot of fun. But I'll tell you the most surprising campaign. There's a lot of campaigns I really liked. The most surprising campaign that I ever had in Total Warhammer 3 that I enjoyed way more than I would have ever imagined was Silostra. It's still shocking to me how fun Silostra was. Most people, I've never seen much about her, and a lot of people th say that they're she's their least favorite of the Vampire Coast. But she was my favorite of them, and the playthrough was super enjoyable. So... It's hard to pick a favorite. I really like the game, and one of the things I like about the game is how varied all the different legendary lords are. But, uh, yeah, I don't mind talking about Total War while we're doing Rimworld. No worries. So. The last year was a lot of fun. I love Amerco, so it's not really all that bad. It was such a fun playthrough. With Silostra, we had Mortars and, like, a Carronade on turn, like, three or something. And that was back when every miner settlement... So this is the beginning of Immortal Empires. Whenever every miner settlement basically had a wall. So you, we were doing like... Every battle was a siege just about. Or a miner siege. And having all those carries and stuff. Plus she gets a legendary hero, the Damned Paladin. Which was really, really good. And... Um, Van Geist's Revenge, the ship spell, is just one of my favorites. I know, isn't that crazy, Hysteric? Like, early on, we had the, the damned paladin going out, and they would group on him, and then Silasa would drop that ghost ship on top and just get, like, 1,200 kills. It was a lot of fun. But, anyway. Playing right now? Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> this, this is completely selfish, and I'm sorry. I don't really hope this, but I was like, hopefully Thrones of Decay is, is delayed a month. So I can play it on release after the Rimworld DLC has died down. <laughs> People that are waiting for Thrones of Decay are like, no, don't you put that evil on us. But anyway, I'm sure I'll eventually play it. And honestly, it'll probably give me some time or give them some time to work out the inevitable, bu inevitable bugs and overpowered crap that always comes out at the beginning of the expansion. Speaking of Thrones of Decay, anyway, don't you dare say that, yeah. Thrones of Delay is what you want. <laughs> That's right. Thrones of Delay. All right. Oh, you need a stomach, huh? Let's get one of those made.
Halt it, close the door, save this run. Yeah, yeah, so the enemy of my enemy might not be my friend in RimWorld, but they are a tool that I can use, you know? New Dawn of War. I'm excited for Anomaly. I'm excited for Anomaly, yeah. I can understand some people not being, though. Unfortunately. Races modular. I saw that, yeah. I'll buy the whole thing anyway, but... Yeah. Why am I never using mechs? I just did a Mechanitor run, like... Like, two runs ago. Like, I consider these 1.5 runs, like, a group. And then before that, I did single phage, and then right before that, I did Mechanitor. But usually, yeah, mechs are extremely... All the worker mechs are extremely good and extremely strong and are ex super worth it. But I typically just don't use all that stuff unless I'm doing a themed run around it. Any guesses on the price of the new DLC for RimWorld's DLC? I have no idea, but here's what I think. Almost everything is going up in price. I feel like it's going to be more than the previous DLCs. I think it's going to be like five bucks more. I wouldn't doubt it. I have no, I have no, I'm basing it on nothing other than everything is releasing more than it was. Yeah, hopefully not, but I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, yeah, the mech, the mech workers, even just the lifter and the clean sweep, just having those two around is super nice. Why do you bother with red mushrooms? They're the third best textile in the game. And it's not its not even close. They're, they are the best textile that you can make yourself in the whole game. So if you are on a year-long growing map, there's no reason not to make double strand because it's the best textile that you can get. Best textile is the best textile you can make yourself. So the best tech, the two best textiles in the game are Hyper Weave, which you can't produce, and Thrombo Fur, which you can't really produce either. And then Devil Strand is just right behind those three, and then everything else is way behind it. It's 20 bucks, that'd be amazing. And we shall see. Red mushrooms open your mind. Oh, new golds, not inside the walls, okay. Hmm. Man, I wish some of that wasn't over Red Mountain. It's kind of annoying because I can't put stuff there to... I was planning to, but... Let's, uh... Finish off these bionics, finish off the ship. Yeah, that's why I said you can't really produce thermo fur, right? Not without a mod. The gestation period is so long. I... I I do think it would be nice if they made it so that Thrombos were shearable. They're already so hard to get in the base game. Like, even with Animal Specialists, right? It's really hard to get Thrombos going. They grow very slow. They have very long gestation period. Like, Thrombos are... They eat so much. They're really good animals. But if they added the ability to shear them, that would be incredible. Even if it was slightly worse than, like, getting it... I don't know. Like how they did with Muffalo, Muffalo right? Yeah, I don't know. Panther fur or bear fur have better defense than Devil's Rand? I don't think so. Yeah, better um, hold properties, but. Because you're wanting sharp defense. How long slow must killbox maze be for the raiders to give up before they hit your actual base? Uh, I did like a 40 by 40 one time, and all raiders gave up before they got through it. 40 by 40, by 40 tunnels with slowing every other, and they all gave up before they were done. Even with Gojuice. Sharp defense is bullets, yep. Yeah. yeah, we just need advanced components. Uh, wait. Oh, did I run myself out of the pla- Oh, we ran out of plasteel. I can't believe I went through 2,000 plasteel. Okay. 
So let's move those. Went through 2,000 plasteel like it was nothing. I know we have more around here somewhere. Yeah, let's go ahead and pull this amount up. There's not a lot there. We'll go ahead and grab that. I know there's others somewhere too. All right, and then, yeah, there's a lot right there, okay. Ponds use recreational drugs early or only when they are about to break. So what I normally do in a playthrough, I'll show you. Let me make, make a new one. Depends on the playthrough a lot, what I end up doing. But in like a vanilla playthrough with not not a lot of other things, I will make a new drug policy. Or actually, I usually edit this one. What I'll do is I will schedule almost everything. And so like beer every day, but like only if you're that low. So this is an if statement. And carry one in inventory. Smoke leaf. I don't really like smoke leaf because it lowers consciousness. It's safe to take once per day. But I don't want them taking it as often because it's going to hit consciousness, right? So I might set this one lower, like before one of the other thresholds. Ambrosia is also safe once per day. Not very addictive. So maybe take Ambrosia if you are, you know, if beer didn't help out. Because we're not going to have a lot of it. So this is what I will do. Especially with like the safe stuff. Like tea every two days. But only if your mood is below like 60. Or whatever. It'll depend on the, on the setup when I do this. And which of these I do and don't do. But in general... I will do this pretty often, especially in vanilla, where you have less ways to manage mood. And these are if statements, so um, better take mood or better take drugs than middle break. Yeah, yeah. And especially if you do safe dose in intervals anyway, for someone with normal adult body size. Like someone can take psychite tea every two days if they're 18 or older and never get addicted, as long as that's the only psychite they have. And so you can even do this always, like, and, it, and it's fine. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now for mood. Um, but yeah, I, I will put these, just remember these are if statements. So they will take every day if their mood's below 75%. Every two days. Uh, I think Ambrosia's every one now. I have some laying around. I can double check it. I'll look and see if I have it you know, laying around. Uh, I don't have any harvested. I'll double check. Usually don't have a lot of Ambrosia, but we did do a uh, SDM run where we had a lot recently. Permarel wiki, it's in the game too. You don't need the wiki, I'll show you. All right, so all this information is in here. Right? Here it is. Safe dose, dose interval for adults. 1.6 days. Interesting. So yeah, I guess set it for two. 1.6 is interesting. I've never had a trouble. I've never had any trouble setting it for one. But. But yeah, that information is in the game. If you click on any drug and you click that, it'll tell you. But. Yeah, I, I would rather them... The addiction chance on things like that are very low, too. I think most of them are less than 2%. So, honestly, I would rather them have a beer every day than... Even if they eventually got addicted, than have, like, an extreme breakdown, but... Is Ambrosia a fruit? Yes. Uh, if you hover over their need for ambrosia, their thought is something like, I can't stop thinking about that delicious fruit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you can look in the policy, too. That's right. That's right. There's the there's the information panes. I kind of forgot. Hard to get addicted to and even draw mood. It's really tame. Yeah, yeah. So I, w I wouldn't worry too much about it. Bagel thing for the 19 months. Thank you, Bagel. But like I said, I might set that rule up differently per run, depending on how much of stuff that we have, what other 
kind of things we have for mood. Does the adaption factor take into account slave down and deaths to reduce raid points? Slaves, yes, because slaves are your faction. Yep. Takes into consideration faction members. Yeah. There we go. Now we're making that again. Look at all that gold. Nice. Sorry, Ambrosia with shrooms? No. It is a fruit. A soft, rare fruit. Tips to knock out enemies other than shock lance. Even the melee attacks, the ranged weapons guy? No. Even less now. <laughs> yeah. So as of 1.5, so there's something in the game called death on down chance, and there's something in the game called population intent. So basically, the higher your population, the higher chance that when you down a raider, they're going to instantly die. And used to, there was quite a few ways to not do that. But now the only way is through bleeding and shock lance. That's it. Yep. Used to, temperature would do it. Not as not in 1.5. So. so you can either bleed people and then like kite them around or put them through a tunnel until they fall over. That won't trigger death undowned. Or you can shock lance them and have chance to fry their brain as far as prisoner death on down chance goes or uh enemy death on down chance that sucks drop roof on head still works yeah the bleed box still works yeah raiders are not going to drink beer yeah <laughs> there's no way to make raiders drink beer i mean if you manage to yeah but we could say that about a lot of things right well, if you manage to have a raider get gut worms, and then, yeah, but they're not going to. Blue box got buffed, actually. Yeah, pretty much. It's weird. You stack pizzas, you have a pizza tower. Try it with lasagna, you'll just have one lasagna. It's true. Lasagnas just keep getting bigger. To become an amalgamation of delicious noodles. Just be careful, I'll say. You might create some kind of lasagna deity. Have you guys seen that? Uh, I don't think it's real, but there's this thing where, like, there's a certain lobster that technically they don't die of old age, and so the older they get, the bigger they get. And they typically die, you know, of, of other things. Disease and being hunted or whatever. And so this group of people were like, you know, if we get one of these lobsters and we just keep it alive no matter what, it'll keep growing our entire lives. And then we'll hand it over to the next generation. And if they keep raising this lobster, become a giant lobster deity. It'll live hundreds of years. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, be careful. You might do that with your lasagna. Church of the Lobster. Lobster Cthulhu? Yeah, that's what they were saying, yeah. You know a way to make a non-violent person fight? Like, fight your enemies? No. no. They can still melee block, but they are not going to fight. And they can fight when they're having to break down in some situations, but that's just like... Or if they're berserked or something. What am I drinking? Today I'm drinking a, a new flavor that, I've, that I'm trying this week called Emotional Damage. It's okay. It's definitely not one of my favorites. It's not one of the ones I'm going to reorder. I've heard, I've seen some other people say that they like it. It's strawberry peach. But to be honest, there's another peach one that's way better called Brand Risk. Brand Risk is one of my like top five. And if you're wanting like a peach flavored one of these drinks, I would suggest Brand Risk over Emotional Damage. What mods? Type exclamation mods, but basically nothing. Exclamation no mods will tell... Exclamation mods in the chat will tell you, but it's pretty much nothing. No pause and P music, pretty much. Emotional damage, yeah. It's it's fine, it's just not what... It's just whatever.
King English, thank you for the seven months. Thank you, English. Be crushed by the weight of your own sub streak. Maybe, maybe. We have people up in the 70s now that haven't been crushed yet, though, so you have to get there at least. All right, we're almost done with... I think I'm just going to go... Did we get your stomach made? God, I just remember the last run that we were just taking everyone's tongue. Uh, we already did your legs. Um... Yeah, so not yet, not yet. But I think after I do bionic legs, I don't know that I'm gonna go, the, I don't, I don't know that I wanna take the time to make them even stronger. Like we're already in pretty good shape. Does your stomach used to be an insta kill? Yes. I think that was also changed in like 1.2-ish. I remember the patch notes that was like, stomachs are no longer a vital organ. And I was like, wait, what? funny earlier we were just talking about how i haven't done that in like a long time Maybe the devs don't have a stomach i mean it's true you can survive in real life without a stomach as, as well but um you can't berserk pulse your own pawn right i don't know like what, what will an incapable of violence pawn do if you put them outside of Neuroquake safety range and Neuroquake? Would they then, when they're berserk, would they go attack stuff? I don't know. Maybe. Two left hands, two left legs. Seeing the new tutorials? Yeah, thank you for watching this. How's it going? It's going all right. Psychic addiction, don't care. Wait, wait, wait. Did I, uh... Yeah, I have Psychic on... Well, maybe I shouldn't have it on every day. I'll do every two so it's safer. Uh, we were producing so much Psychic that I didn't care that they were taking it every day and addicted. Surgery failed. I swear, every time I don't watch the surgery, it fails. Yeah. Having fun with no pause at the moment? Definitely harder, but it's quite fun. Yeah, I, I really like it. Really fun with the no kill box strategies as well. Going, David, welcome in. All right, there's that stomach. Okay. Let's see if we can get that one done. Going out, leave a lurk though. Thank you, thank you. Be safe. 17 times 2, 44 months. Going 17, back again. Box surgeries and Rimworld, the iconic duo. Yeah. Drawback of pawns having items in their inventory. For example, can you have your pawns carry cataphract armor all times without being slowed by it? You can't carry stuff like that in your inventory without a mod, yeah? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. The only exception is if you're, like, getting ready for a, for a caravan, but, like... Wait, 17 times 2 is actually 44. Now you can't resub ever again. I did. Thank you for the 39 months. But then they're going to eventually caravan if you leave it. So, yeah. Yeah, if there's a mod that allows you to have your stuff in their pocket, then sure, but... Can you see the percentage of chance surgery failed? Also, then Vitals Honor was a guarantee. Yeah, there, there's always a chance to fail, unfortunately. There's, there's a base chance to fail of 2%. Uh, just like there's a base chance of... of a 20... a level 20 cook making a... In, Making a, a meal that has food poisoning from incompetent cook. 
level 20 chef can sometimes have incompetent cook food poisoning, which is frustrating to you. Can you see the heater and cooler set up in my base? Sure, here's the coolers. They're just venting into a door that deletes the heat. And we don't need heaters in this map because it's a hot map. But yeah, I just have coolers venting into a door. Using the door kind of like a chimney. Uh, do I have a plan in mind for my first? So typically with a first DLC, first playthrough of DLC, I will play it relatively standard with not like additional challenges because we don't know what's going on. Uh, what I plan on doing right now, unless we've learned some different stuff with the fourth uh, preview, is I plan to do a relatively standard run, no kill box, to see how the new entities react with no kill box. And I think I'm going to uh, try to keep a little bit lower pawns than I would normally do in like a real min-max run because I don't want to go in with like, you know, 35 assault rifles and just have a wall of bullets to just kill all the new stuff without seeing what they do, right? Like that's, we don't know, but that, I doubt there's anything that they can put in the game where like 35 masterwork assault rifles and shooting specialists aren't just going to delete. So I'll probably try to keep myself around the teens of pawns in the late game is, is kind of what I'm thinking right now. And aside from that, I just play relatively standard. As far as like base layout and stuff, I don't have any plans specifically at the moment. Um, it looks like we're going to have to build slightly bigger base because of the containment stuff. But again, that's just based on what we've seen in the previews. So yeah, no, no super specific plans other than probably no kill box and probably relatively moderate pawn count. I saw you. I explained the washing machines. I don't know what you're talking about. Washing machines? Oh, you're talking about the speakers? These are speakers from Ideology. So there is a dance ritual in Ideology, and speakers are one of the things you have to have for it. Washing machines. Yeah, I can see that now that I zoom in, but first I was like, what? <laughs> well, bugs spawn on the new power lines. Can you use them to prevent infestations? I haven't tried that. I doubt it, though, because bugs can spawn on other stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I doubt the new power lines block bugs from spawning. If you end up seeing that that's the case somehow, yeah, let me know. But I have not tested it, but I, I would be surprised. An organ is gay for the first time. Yeah, it seems pretty rare. Damage reflect monster. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, I never thought of them as washing machines either, but zoomed out, yeah, they look like it. <laughs> okay, to drop quite a few mods, use the lower difficulties, great content. Thank you, David. What would it take for me to lose this run? It would take... An explosive pirate raid that I run out of the doors to try to kill someone and they get a doomsday off and it kills everyone. Outside of that, I can't see us losing this run. But that's fine. Like this run is for testing 1.5 stuff with DLC for the most part and just seeing how things are functioning, see if anything's changed with the the no DLC or I mean uh, with the no kill box stuff. But yeah, honestly, I think we're pretty much much good. Oops, all scythers. Have any tips for f starting on ice sheet map? It depends on how cheesy you want to go and what you consider cheesy. So if you don't care about any kind of cheesiness or whatever, you could literally set up like pain is virtue, ideology, or rough living uh, for temperature. You could also start with jeans that allow you to be more comfortable in the cold. And that makes it a lot easier. If you don't want to do that, then I would suggest starting as Rich Explorer and using your silver for an initial um, spot and having ideologies to either call in more people that you can strip or use or to call in animals that you can kill for food. If you don't want to go that route and you're wanting to go like true classic like 1.1 naked brutality ice sheet, then there are ice sheets that you can roll 
which there is a very small portion of the year where they are not cold enough to give you hypothermia. So you could roll maps until you find one of those and then start on the map and try to get some stuff done quickly by like punching the couple of rabbits on there. Uh, hoping you get an early raid, you know, using Cassandra so you're guaranteed an early raid. But yeah, it depends on how cheesy you want to go with Ice Sheet, honestly. Like now there's, if you, if you consider those cheesy, which I guess they probably are, uh, but nowadays with like genes and ideology and stuff, you can actually make Ice Sheet start pretty, pretty normal. I mean, obviously it has its own problems, like not being able to get chunks and, and things, but yeah, just depends. The base. Melee gods, no walls. Yeah, I bet they could do it. <laughs> I bet they can do it. See, it's much easier to go 20 on one 50 times than it is to go 20 on 50, right? And when bigger groups come, we just duck in, let them divide back out, back out, shoot those couple, go in, that one's by itself, shoot that one. Now those ones are coming around, so we'll go down to this door, kill these couple. They're coming off the wall one at a time. We have enough firepower to kill these five too, whatever. Those ones were focusing on the wall. Back in, we'll pop out and get those two focusing on the wall. That one got pulled over, so we'll kill that one. Like the no kill box style, once you get enough firepower, is pretty pretty good. Honestly. You have to be rebuild a lot of walls, but aside from that. Oh, this has been taking your fingers left and right. Yeah. Yeah. Pain is virtue is so strong. I just love the comfort. What if they remove the ability to get pawns using death on down? Because we'll be able to also use the new abduction mechanics. I doubt it. Yeah, I'd be shocked. Because they didn't do that when they added ideology join rituals. And they didn't do that when they added children to the game, right? So I, I would be shocked. I mean, who knows? I'm not a developer. But I would be pretty surprised by it. Wear jeans, find strippers, punch rabbits. Got it. <laughs> Why didn't I mortar the mechs? It would have been a waste. Why would I waste my barrels on it? I'd much rather spin 50 sandstone than barrel uses on, on scythers. I wasn't worried about them at all. Prepare for the grand week? Mostly. You know, there's subathon. Yeah, we'll see. Mostly prepared. Yeah, I didn't want to waste any uh, materials on any of that, so. No reason to. Okay, she's about to have a big breakdown, so we're just going to put her to sleep. Anyone else gets into orange or red territory, we'll put them to sleep during this as well. Keep in mind, for example, for every pond you have, you need about X amount of food growing. Yeah, so as always, it depends on your map and stuff like that. But for anyone that doesn't know, the game is balanced on normal, like normal difficulty, like 100% difficulty, that 20, 20 of any of the three main crops, rice, potatoes, corn, in normal soil, if harvested and planted immediately, is enough to provide simple meals for a single pond forever on year long growing. So from there, you can kind of, you want to over make a little bit. And then if you over make too much, you can just trade off the excess, right? Um, but from there, you can kind of adjust that to what you have on your map and your playthrough, like rich soil, you're going to want to use either rice or corn because they have higher fertility sensitivity. Hydroponics, you're going to want to use rice for the same reason. Um, as far as meals go, 
typically I'll do about three meals per person in the late game. And then I'll pause until it's down to like one meal per person or two meals per person. Marbles again. <laughs> uh, McBoof, thank you for the four months. I like the marble streams. I'll go to YouTube to sub. Thank you. Appreciate it. We make spaceships, but not barrels. That's right. How long have you been streaming this session? Uh, like four or five hours, four hours, something like that. Not very long. Four and a half hours. Yeah, four and a half hours. I had to look over. I couldn't remember what time I started at first. We did make a lot of packs of survival wheels. I might have them eat those sometime, but we'll see. All right, Plasteel is looking good again. We'll keep mining it, though, for now. Hydroponics good outside? Yes. So, so hydroponics are double fertility over rich soil. So rich soil is 140%. Hydroponic is 280%. And you only need sun lamps and heaters for it if you're going to have it indoors. So on a year-long growing map, you can just throw hydroponics outside and it's better than rich soil. Yeah. Hydroponics do not get z event outside. No, they don't. Sun lamps do. Hydroponics don't. Yeah, so anything that uh, super benefits from fertility is awesome that you can put in there. So mainly rice and um, uh, and cloth, but um, you can also get your hops growing in there too if you want. Unfortunately, in 1.4, they changed the fertility sensitivity of Psychite because they wanted it to grow fairly well in, in polluted soil. So now Psychite isn't as good in hydroponics as it used to be, but yeah, hydroponics are super good. good. Like, remember when I was talking about the amount of crops you needed to, to have a uh, colonist live forever on simple meals? So baseline for hydroponics, it's seven plots of rice, not seven basins. So this doesn't happen in practice, but if if you harvested on 100% difficulty immediately and replanted immediately and turned that into simple meals with no, no like loss or anything, like it was just perfectly being done, it only takes seven plots of rice for a single pond. It's crazy. Thought psychoid dies in polluted soil? No, they changed it. Psychoid and Toxa potatoes grow in, in polluted soil. The waste pack pollution, yeah. Now, we're not talking about defoliator. Defoliator still kills both of those, but in polluted soil, Psychoid and Toxa potatoes grow. And that's because wasters, yeah, wasters need it. My favorite biome is Boral Forest. Player event, your rice dies, hydroponics, is that normal? Yeah, so oddly enough, um, the the flares and stuff like that, they're very short, but if you get a max length flare, it can be just long enough for rice to die. It happens just right. Oh, my child addicted? I don't care. We got plenty. You love the Boral Forest aside from the marshiness. At least it doesn't have as much marshiness as like swamp maps. All right, almost done with this. Oh, yeah, vanilla. Gotcha. Yeah, hydroponics are super good. There was a flake whirling tree. <laughs> Be pretty cool, yeah. Nature focused waster colony. <laughs> Guarlins that grow mushrooms or something. Boral surprise mechs. Mechs can't come out of lakes. The new water mechs can only come out of ocean, creek, and river. It would have been kind of cool though to see mechs coming out of the swamp, but. An anomaly, am I most looking forward to fighting its anomalies or using them for my own purpose? 
using them for my own purpose. What's your view on modded power generators or plants? Are they too overpowered? My view on modded stuff is the same as my view on this game in general. Use whatever's fun for you. If you are using like atomic power or something where you put one device down and it powers everything you need for the entire run, you never have to worry about anything again. Is that overpowered? Yes. Is it fun for you? If the answer is also yes, then who cares? Use it if you like it. So uh, for me, I play pretty close to vanilla. Almost, almost always. But yeah, I'm always I'm with single player games, especially single player sandbox games. I'm just a big proponent of do whatever's fun for you. Like unless you're doing a speed run that's like has rules or in competition or it's multiplayer or whatever, just literally do whatever's fun for you. So yeah, there are absolutely mods that are overpowered. Like there's a lot of mods that are super strong. Like even a mod to just make your own fertilized soil is incredibly strong, but it makes sense with real life, right? To an extent. Um, yeah, use it if you want. It's fine. There are no mod police or rimworld. Well, there are, but don't listen to them. <laughs> I was about to say there aren't any rimworld police, but as soon as you go to Reddit, you'll run into like dozens of them. But you know what? Their badges are made out of plastic. They are fake. You can just do whatever you want. It's fine. Just have fun. Yeah. If you're having fun, you're playing right. Like Rimatonics yourself. Yeah, I've never played with any of those. They look extremely powerful. Now there is, now to kind of piggyback onto that, there are some, some people that are like, man, I've used this overpowered mod for so long and I don't want to use it anymore because I feel like it's making the game too easy and I can't make myself stop. If that's the case, then I don't know. That's, that probably goes more into like psychology type thing. I'm not going to be a, a psychiatrist on the stream, but uh, you might just have to go cold turkey on that mod if that's, if that's what you want. FBM, open up. What is this biome? We are on arid shrubland. And using 40k mods, which throw balance. Yeah, and that's completely fine, yeah. Just do whatever's fun with you. Whatever you have fun with. But yeah, you'll run into people that are like, Oh, you use the kill box? Ew. Still think that's a funny story I was telling about the other day. Where I finally got one of those people to post the screenshot of their base. <laughs> you guys here for that? Some of you? I guess you were, but... Ugh. I had so It's not true anyway, and it doesn't bother me at this point. But I had someone comment on a YouTube video, and they were like... They're like, you just always play with a kill box. And it's so boring. And it's only for noobs. They literally said this. I mean, it's probably a troll, but still, they were like, kill boxes are for noobs. That's not how the game was meant to be played. If you're playing with a kill box. Um, you might as well turn the difficulty down. And I was like, well, I play with and without kill boxes, whatever I want to do and have fun with at the time. And I was like, what difficulty do you play on out of curiosity? And what mods do, they, do you use? And so they posted 500% and a mod list. In the mod list, they had things like embrasures, right? Embrasures? It took the bait. No, no, no. It's, it was fine. It was just, it's funny. I, I know. But, so this one's probably a troll, but I do run into people like this pretty often, especially, and I think everyone does, like on Reddit and stuff. And so, I was like, okay. I was like, do you have a, um, how is your base set up? How, how do you, how do you defend without a kill box? Do you already know the answer, right? Because we do know kill box a lot. And I, I tell you that they had like a big base, right? Like a huge base covers a bunch of the map, like bigger than this, like four times the size. And then over in the corner connected to their, their, their base, they have this. It was really similar to this. Like, there was gaps every so often like this. And they had like barricades through whatever. And then the inside here was just full of modded turrets, which is fine. It's a fine way to play. Play however you want. There was like 50 turrets in here. And when I was like, oh, okay, you don't use a kill box. And I was like, 
so what is that? And they're like, that's a killing field. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I just left it at that, but didn't say the picture. I think I do have the picture in di on Discord. It was just really funny. It's like, all right. <laughs> so I don't know how many times people have been like, oh, kill boxes, ew. And then you're like, can I see a picture of your, of your base? Yeah, here it is. And they have embrasures with anime cat girls standing behind them shooting one hit kill laser beams into groups of enemies blowing them up and it's like all right that one was probably a troll but you run into that a lot yeah pretty funny if your kill box is big enough it's not considered a kill box anymore yeah <laughs> hey play however you want you want to play with anime cat girl mods that destroy things with laser beams from across the map through a wall that you can shoot out of and they can't and you want to say that that's not a kill box sure that's fine. Have fun with it. Just let other people play however they want as well. More OP than a kill box. Yeah. Embrasures are very, very strong. Ever done an explosives only? No, I've talked about that for a couple years. And then here's the thing. I was going to wait and see if the DLC added new explosives. So far, it doesn't look like it, though. Uh, where did they get this anime cat girl mod? Just for research purposes. <laughs> Streaming at 4K? I am streaming at 4K, yeah. What do you have against anime cat girls? What? Anyway, I again, like I, I bring this up. None of it bothers me at all, especially these days, but I bring it up to drill home that point that if you're playing the single player game in a way that you're having fun, then that's all that matters. Screw those other people. People that gatekeep the way you play a sandbox single player game is absurd. And some of them are trolls. Some of them are unfortunately legitimate, but who cares? Just play however. I've actually had people come in the stream before and be like, is it okay to use this? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Someone came in not long after I made the singularity guide. And they were like, they came in the stream. They're like, hey, I just saw your guide on YouTube. And is it okay to use this? It seems pretty exploitative. And I was like, what do you mean? Is it okay? You're gonna lock you up. Yes, it's okay if you want to use it. <laughs> no one's gonna ban you from RimWorld for using a kill box. You're good. Don't worry about it. Anyway, always fun to talk about. Reminds me, um, I just uh, listened to a podcast episode. Uh, Conan O'Brien, actually. I have a bunch of podcasts I listen to while I'm in the car and doing stuff. And so I was listening to a Conan O'Brien when he was talking to this fan and she used to be Mormon. I won't get into any of that. And he was like, did you drink alcohol after you were done? And she was like, yeah, after we left the Mormon faith, my husband and I went into the bathroom and we both sipped an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> That's like, it reminds me of that. It's like, all right, I'll use this mod, but I'm not going to tell anyone about it. Tynan will ban you. Yeah. Any plans for that? No, I don't have any plans for it. I would like to try it out. I just don't have time. Love Conan. But yeah, it's a long way to say, yeah, just play however you want. Yeah, do whatever. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely overpowered mods. They're mods that make the game harder. They're mods that make it easier. Uh, but as long as you're having fun, if, if you do find yourself not having fun, then definitely trying like a 180 can help out, you know? Like, if you haven't done a vanilla run in a long time, maybe do a vanilla run, see how it feels, and you might be surprised. You might be like, oh, this is actually more fun than I remembered. Or the opposite, if you're getting bored of the game and you haven't tried a lot of mods, there's so many mods that change the game. Yeah, just have fun. Pay a fine, yeah. I don't know, yeah. So, I, I don't know. I'm hoping the next preview is about ghouls. It sounds like it should be, right? Was I misreading that? The next... It should be at least part of the next preview, right? Yeah, I hope the ghouls are good. I hope they're, it's not like slightly better than Gwarlin Meleers or something like, I don't know. Pause the OP. Uh, Expedition mods, plural. But yeah, I, I, I mean, there's no way to know until the preview. I'm hoping that they make at least good melee blockers. It would be really cool if they are maybe good enough, but not overpowered in order to do a playthrough that's like, let's do an all ghoul defense playthrough. Will that be possible? I don't know. I hope so, because I really like doing themed runs and little challenge runs like that. So 
I'm really hoping that's the case, but at the moment, yeah, we just don't know. Will I make hundreds of different theme runs? I'm worried that this DLC won't have as many theme run opportunities. That's one of my worries, and hopefully it's an unfounded worry. But when you, it's, it, we've been saying that it looks more like, as far as like, playthrough related themes, it's looking more similar to royalty. Like there's not a lot of royal themes you can do. You can either go with the royals, you can betray the royals, which is nothing these days, or you can do like tribal casters, right? So at its core, maybe that's like three themed playthroughs of just royalty. Ideology has like tons of different ideologies and memes and precepts that you can mix and match. Um, biotech has so many genes, so many genes that you can mix and match. So like biotech and ideology give you so many varied options. So far through these playthrough or through the previews, it's not looking like I hope I'm wrong, but it's not looking like there'll be tons. I, I hope I hope we're wrong, but yeah, we'll see. Ideology is crazy. That, yeah, yeah. Ideology and biotech and especially the combination of the two add so much variety and customized old playthroughs like themed playthroughs. Um, yeah, I, I hope this adds some, I hope it's not just like, all right, we do one playthrough where we are cult people. We do one playthrough where we fight cult people. And then we do one playthrough where we use ghouls more or something, right? But that's what it's looking like so far. Ideology can string the enemy too, yeah. Maybe the horror themes can be combined. I almost feel like I hope the horror themes are a one per playthrough, but I, it's looking more and more like it's not based on the previews. But I was kind of hoping like, all right, you do one playthrough where you deal with the thing, the parasite, and that's the whole playthrough. But it's not looking like that from the from the previews. But again, who friggin' knows aside from the developers? I guess we'll know in a few days, right? But now if that's the case, then yeah, we could do a playthrough of each of the kind of horror tropes, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe you can disable them individually. Yeah, at least in the scenario. Anyone explain how the cooler works? Sure. So basically a door is a one by one room. Rooms disperse heat. So you can you can vent up to three coolers into a door even under overhead mountain and it will delete the heat. It doesn't have to be unroofed. You can unroof it, but it doesn't matter. But doors just delete heat and you can delete the heat of up to three coolers in a single door. Hope there will be something you can incorporate in every or most playthroughs like ideology or genes yeah we'll see i'm wondering too you can think of them as like a black hole for heat yeah it sounds like there will be new endings as well it's interesting because it sounds like multiple endings like it's it says something about you'll be able to choose right so i don't know hopefully that's not just one ending with like literally you click one choice over the other but we'll see Oh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to check that out, too, yeah. Conan O'Brien stuff, yeah. I've been watching Conan O'Brien forever, man. I've been watching him as a... Like a teenager. Me as a teenager, not him, obviously. <laughs> Wonder about ghouls a lot. Yeah, I'm really wondering about that, too. The serums and the and the rituals sound like they have the potential to be incredibly strong as well, but... Yes, we wait and see. Oh, that's going to get rid of some of those, but it will. More plastic down there. Let's throw this in. Uh, you know what? I want to leave them all together because if we get a dug too deep, I want to know immediately. Like, all right, that's definitely up north, so we'll go up north. Is there a balance to cooler? a balance to coolers to heat so basically i think this is what you mean so basically in rimworld your pond's perfect temperature with no other things in mind is 70. by default coolers are set to 70 and heaters are set to 70. so if you put a lot of heaters and coolers into like a, a giant one room base by default they will work whichever one needs to work to keep the base at 70. 
So you don't have to worry about manually like turning coolers or air off. A long time ago, I would do things like stagger coolers so that it they weren't needed or like it wasn't using them if they weren't needed. But now I just get a little bit extra power. So what I mean by that is like when I was newer to the game, I would have like this cooler at 70, this one at like 68, this one at 72, this one at 74, you know, like stagger them. But 70 Fahrenheit. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I know I got to I got to remember to which is, is like what, 20? 20, uh, 21, 21 Celsius. Okay. Draw all creatures you capture. Wait, I didn't see that in the preview. Correct. Did you see something on an implant that allows you to control all creatures? I didn't see that at all. Team runs would be a world overhaul. God, yeah, that's on my, that's top of my wish list. I got to tell you, that adds a lot of global map. Yeah, I would, I would like that too. I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, did anyone else notice that? Because I didn't notice that. That would be crazy. Be like Mechanitor, but with monsters. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice that myself, but. You go to Ice Sheet, so it, yeah, overlaps at negative 40. You don't have to worry about it, yeah. All right, so, uh, how many more people do we need legs on? I think it's just the kids, right? How long until you grow up? He's almost grown up enough. That one's not. I'm right. Change where all the creatures are slowly taking over, like XCOM. You've noticed that they have edited the blog posts sometimes after they've been posted. Interesting. Yeah. Is Naked Retality on Ice Sheet even real? Yes, you can do it. The school desk not actually need chairs? No, the chairs only give comfort. Doesn't have anything to do with the learning. That's true with all chairs. Chairs are in workstations. Chairs give comfort. They don't help the workstation in any way. Got a breakdown after just the first leg? Yeah, maybe. I think so, Peanut. Yeah. <laughs> Would landscape base be better than portrait because of the uh, screen shape? Probably. Oh, yeah. If you wanted to super min-max the ideologies of other factions, you would set all the factions that you could to uh, be nudists, right? Yeah. Set everyone to, like, nudist body purists or something. <laughs> everyone shows up naked and upset that they're taking drugs to attack you with and stuff. Yeah. The only thing you need tables for are chairs and, like, chess tables... Stuff like that. Some of the recreation places and, and tables, yeah. How do you deal with pawns addicted to go juice? You can either supply them with enough go juice that it doesn't matter. You could always um, just let them have their breakdowns and things. Or you could... There's several means to make it so that you wait out the time without them being able to take it ever. And without them breaking down, for instance, you could remove their legs and then after they're done with their addiction, then you just give them new legs. Like there's 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 things you can do, right? Okay, we're gonna need another spine. So you can say, hey, leg is legs are a privilege. You you can have legs if you're no longer addicted to go juice. So you give them peg legs, then you remove the peg legs, they have no legs, you leave them in the bed until they are over their addiction and then you give them bionic legs. It, it depends on which part of the game you're in, of course, but... But you, you got options, right? How evil do you want to be? Cut off their legs and wait it out, yeah. Legs are a privilege. And upon crawl with no legs in 1.5, yes. 
The only thing a pawn needs to be able to crawl is manipulation and consciousness. Manipulation and consciousness and they'll crawl. What happens if they remove their arms? They can't crawl. Yeah. Do you mean will they will they not be able to drink go juice because they can't pick it up? No, unfortunately. <laughs> no breakdowns of that movement. No breakdowns of that movement. So 1.5. No prisoners can't crawl. Prisoner, prisoners can't crawl. You don't have to remove arms on prisoners. The raid point base naked would get more pawns. Yeah, but they'd be super easy to kill. Yeah, I've showed that before, the recreation tab. Yeah, recreation tab is very good. It'll show you what kinds they need for their current expectations. What? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good information to all kinds of pains in the game. One spot open for the coolers to work. Um, You have to make... Well, these ones are unroofed, so I'm just not worried about it. But yeah, in general, you don't want this up against a wall. Basically, you don't want this door touching four things. That's what it... You don't want this door touching four things that are considered walls. And that's... For it to work the best, it seems. Do parenting. You see an early shotgun tunnel in your current playthrough, and despite following your path and guide, a new shotgun tunnel guide pawns are able to run through the enemy who is in melee. Are you using melee weapons on them? And are you blocking their way in I have to see the exact setup but don't use a ra range I should have put that in the guy that's actually the second time that's come up today don't use ranged weapons on your melee blockers that's the most common I'll have to put that in the pinned comment you want your melee blockers to have melee weapons even if it's like a friggin log or to have just fists yeah, let me know. These ones are unroofed, yeah. So I'm, I'm not doing the exact... This one's literally a chimney. Do a guide on making guides. Making long stories in a log. Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to see it. But if, if everything else is the same, I would just bring one of those pawns over in front of the tunnel. If you have that happening. That way they literally can't come in. But especially early game. Now, do you mean they're like walking over the top of them or they're walking through between them? Because if they're walking over the top of them, then that means you don't have collision somehow. If they're walking between them, it probably means that you should just, you don't have enough firepower to hit them before they get into melee lock. And so you probably want to move a pawn temporarily over in front of them. How can you get some longer lasting move buffs in the late game? You can use schedules like biphasic. So my scheduling guide up on YouTube, you can check that out if you want. It doesn't just go over biphasic, but scheduling is very powerful. You can make the environment and rooms that they're in more impressive. Like this one's unbelievably impressive. You can use drugs. And if you really need to, you can also switch over to things like fine meals. If you're doing any kind of ranching, fine normal fine meals actually don't take additional amount of resources. So it's the same amount of calories in, it's just that half the calories are meat. So fine meals, if you're already producing meat and vegetables, are actually really good. Uh, if you are overproducing vegetables, you can make vegetarian fine meals if you really need to. But yeah, the answer generally is schedule, beauty, drugs, food. Melee log defense only playthrough. <laughs> Melee gods with logs. We have so much steel. Um, you know what? Sometimes we have to run around here with the guns. I don't know if I want to do this, though. No, I'm not going to do that. That's going to make raiders run faster. Tunnel, you build a turret and move him closer instead. Yeah, let me know if that works for you, but I should put a little addendum. I thought I hit all of them until today. It happens sometimes with guides where, like, I'll go through what I think are going to be all the questions that are asked about it. And then 
I'll go over like 10 or 15 different things and it turns out there was one small thing that I that I didn't think of myself being a question ahead of time even if I run the guide by other people so definitely could be the the case here too what rimworld traits do I have in real life I don't know traits Let's go with, like, hard worker, not industrious. I've always... No matter what I'm doing, I'm always, like, went all out on whatever. Whether it's, like, making guides for this game or when I did traditional work before this. Aside from that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Great wise. Melee gods with only logs. The caveman playthrough. <laughs> Misogynistic? You mean masochistic? <laughs> That's just a big difference. You think I'm misogynistic? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, gaming masochist, yeah. Masochistic in a gaming sense. Sickly. Not really a sickly person as far as, like, catching colds and sickness and stuff. But. Change anything about the game? What would you change? Um... Like one thing, I would want the world overhauled so the world is more worth going out into and more alive. The other thing is probably more varied threats and enemies that are smarter. Those are probably the, the main ones. Okay. Yeah, there's always going to be more questions though. That's what I mean. Like, And that's fine. Like, no matter what, how much I go over in a guide, there's going to be... I can't cover every single thing or think of every question that's going to be asked, which is fun. All right, who needed that spine? Oh, you don't have bionic legs either, huh? Or knew I hate yeah, I don't. <laughs> That's why I was like, I think they typed the wrong thing. Oh, you mean it joking around like how pawns can be? Yeah, yeah. You can get a pawn that's misogynistic, misandrist, and kind. It's like, wait a minute. It's like those, like, really... I don't want to get into anything about anything. Anyway, it's like sometimes we'll see those, like, really, really old, like, super sweet ladies. But they're like extremely racist like you know what i mean and it's like whoa <laughs> whoa dead calm maybe you like to be able to sell your services as mercenaries that'd be kind of cool yeah the empire already has one quest kind of like that you know exactly those kind of people i'm talking about too they're just comedic kind of yeah but i don't think they're trying to be That was your Nana. Weird thing to learn as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> that person's like, I'm complicated, yeah. All right, let's finish off this ship. I've been waiting to try to get the Bionics done. We're almost done, though. Like, I'll wait. We just need those two legs and we're good. You've met one of them? Oh, yeah, I've definitely met them. He man woman hater. <laughs> he man woman hater club. That's right. I will always remember that alfalfa le letter though. Like, as long as I live, I'll remember that from the was that like late nineties Little Rascals movie. Dear Darla, yeah. got so many good parts in that. You are scum between my toes. I love the ending. You are scum between my toes. Love alfalfa. <laughs> Perfect. What do you think about the medieval stage? It really seems like it doesn't exist. That's another one of my... So, I've been saying for a long time that 
I would love a DLC that was like RimWorld Eras or RimWorld Ages. I've been talking about this for a couple years. There are a lot of games that have like cultural progression and um, world stage progression, almost like world research. Like even look at like Civilization or Age of Empires. So having something where you're in like the Neolithic for longer and you literally can't because the thing is you can start out as tribal and you can have assault rifles within days. Like if you know what you're doing, like you could literally have assault rifles in a couple days, hit some ancient dangers, you know, go to a trader, get back, mass research with five people. You can get to, you can go from sticks and stones to assault rifles in a couple days, which obviously there's a lot of things in a world that isn't realistic, but it would be pretty cool outside of mods to have it so that the stages of the game, the eras like that are more persistent. Now, if you haven't watched it already, when when they released the teaser image for uh, the next for Anomaly, I did a stream. It's up on YouTube. You can go to my YouTube channel, click on live. And I did a stream where we went through like the old, um, all, all the content from RimWorld as far as like official lore and stuff, right? So we went through the, the lore document. We went through the original Kickstarter. And it was talking about lots of different worlds that are stuck in certain eras. And I was like, man, that would make a great... It would make a great thing for RimWorld, you know? Make there be, like, joint factions that have shared research. Stay in the Neolithic for longer. Stay in the Medieval for longer. It's also talked about, like, steampunk worlds and stuff, right? Those things would be really cool, and there's a lot of, like, potential content they can do with those things. If I don't know if that's on their radar or not, but yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement that, like, the stages of the game, especially once you know how to get through them, last, like, no time at all. No time at all. Now, when I was a newer player, you know, I would be on the tribal phase for like a year or two because I didn't know you could rush research like you can. There's a lot of things I didn't know and it would. But once you learn those things, yeah, you can just rocket through everything. Love medieval Rim World, Rim World mods. Yeah, they're really popular too. Dark Ages could be cool. Yeah, there's so many things to pull from as well. And there's things from that that would actually be fun throughout the game, right? Like like you have trebuchets throwing chunks, and I know there's mods for that. You can use that even later in the game. You have deep drills mining up chunks that you you launch at like sieges. It'd be fun. Had a big mod list have Russian themed runs, starting with zero research, progressing. Nice to have something. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, without all the mods. Semi random research is an interesting one. Also, the new wall lamp. Wall lamps are great. Yeah, wall lamps are a good addition. I don't like them as much as floodlights, but that's personal preference because of how giant, all the giant rooms that I make. But yeah, I'm glad they added them. Okay. All right, all the legs are done. We'll get uh, an extra set. Let's get the ship done now. Uh, need this. Start tribal and require yourself to complete every research in order to slow down the progression. Yeah, and, and you can even put, if you really wanted, you could put research at slow, but the thing is the rest of the world isn't, right? So you can do that. You can handicap yourself that way. You could, but it would be cool if like there was a mode where enemies had to progress as well, right? Because even if you put your research on very slow with ideology and you, sti you stick on tribal stuff for longer and slow yourself down for the theme of it, Pirates are still going to show up with, like, <laughs> Doomsday Rockets, right? But If they didn't add Floodlights, would I be using Wall Lights more? Or would I just... Yeah, I don't know. I, th I was wondering that, too. I would probably still use them in buildings. But outside, I would still be using normal lights, probably normal lamps. So much of the map. Yeah, yeah, the world needs it rehauled, I feel. If you had to do something, yeah, I think RimWorld Eras or Ages would be an, an awesome thing, but, yeah. People joke about, about me being a developer, which I'm not <laughs> at all. You can definitely tell, because I had no idea, like, the horror stuff was coming, specifically. And I keep talking about how much I want, like, archaeology and world stuff and government and eras and ages and water stuff and map stuff and caravan stuff. 
We got none of it. None of it, as far as we can see. So, you can rest assured that I am not... I'm not with the, isn't that what a developer would say? Yeah. How often do I intend to interact with bioengineering? Biotech? Uh, genes, if I'm doing uh, almost any playthrough, genes are something I keep an eye out for. Because genes are super strong. I'm not doing it intentionally on this one, but almost every playthrough. In fact, the single phase playthrough, we had lots of different gene packs that I put on different people for different needs. Gene pack for prisoners, gene packs for slaves. Um, yeah, it was, uh, genes are really good. Really good. Very customizable. Sure, developer. Yeah. <laughs> Someone even commented on one of the, uh, they were joking, of course, on one of the preview videos, and they're like, look how hard he's trying what he is developing the game, and he knows. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Jeans? No, the the G, the G jeans. Sorry, no jeans in the base game. That's why. That's why you go by your middle name because your first name is Tynan. You think research should add wealth? Maybe. Make the game look easy. So, a lot of it's just knowledge based, you know? It's knowledge based. It's time. Practiced time. Sounds like a developer named me. Ever use slug turrets and the other big turrets? Uh, I stopped using them. They're just, they're just not really worth it overall, especially on the harder difficulties. Just turrets in the game just aren't super great. I would just usually rather put that into something else. That I can control more. Who am I sending to space? Traditionally, we send an animal to space, but I'm not sure. I wasn't even planning on doing a ship launch in this run, but we're running out of time. DLC is about to come out, so. Might as well. Never seen me and Tiny in the same room. Hey, he replied to one of my, uh, he made a comment on one of my YouTube videos about the expansion, so. You think I could possibly figure out how to make another YouTube account? Come on. When does the DLC come out? The 11th. Use uranium just because you have it. Is there a reason? Uh, it's something that we don't use much of otherwise. It has high HP. So in the off chance something gets through and is attacking the walls, we want it to be able to withstand for a little bit. It's not as high HP as Plasteel, but we actually need Plasteel for other stuff. <clears throat> have I ever been to Canada? No. Did he actually comment? Yes. Yeah, he commented. I didn't think it was him at first. So on the very first video I made for Anomaly when we were speculating, he made a comment on there and I saw it and I was like, ah, that's just someone that's made their, cause you can make your YouTube name whatever you want. And I clicked on it and it was his account. It had the original videos from like 11 years ago when he was like, first look at my game, my game I'm creating RimWorld. And I was like, hey, it's him. So, I mean, you made that comment. Yeah. You say I have a positive relationship. I don't really have much of a relationship with them at all, honestly. So, I mean, I guess it's not negative, right? So, I have like, yeah, I, yeah, so it's just no real relationship, right? Like last, the last two DLCs, they sent me a key for the game when it came out. So that's about what I'm expecting this time, which is fine. I, I, and I don't even really expect that, right? But that's what they've done traditionally, so. What did he say? He said, you guys, you guys are awesome, smiley face. I have his OG feet videos. You thought you two required you to use your real name for everything? No. Are you not a developer if you clicked double, or if you fix the double click all by yourself? <laughs> I am pretty proud about that, but yeah, I, I didn't fix it. So... 
So... You know what? With all this excess stuff we, we have coming in, we might as well just make marine armors. I usually don't, but... Make marine armor. Um... Wait, Gravy Girl, you're not a production specialist? Oh, man, look at you. Jeez. Hmm. We lose planting on her. Thing where when you use limited mods, they all feel OP, but if you use like 50 plus mods, too much content bloat, random reactions that make the game way harder, yeah. Maybe I am tiny and don't realize it. <laughs> Fight club style. People do often come in and say, Hey, has anyone ever told you you look like Edward Norton? Do you think people have asked Tynan if he looks like Brad Pitt? And if so, how come I got the short end of this deal, huh? Can you ship them? Human leather there to prove it? Yes. Can you use uranium other than like, yeah, yeah, there, it would be nice if there was more uses from it. Yeah, it's good for blunt weapons, but you're really not making a lot. Edward Norton is a fantastic actor, though. What did Tynan comment on your video? He commented, you guys are awesome, smiley face. Oh, the barrack shape. Thanks. I can go to the comment if you want me to. Remind me at the end of the stream. If you can't find it, I'll show it to you. Got it saved. Gravy Girl, do we have enough people doing planting that I can switch you over as well? Yeah, it's fine. All right. What's the first rule of Fight Club? Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Fight Club sounds made up. My performance in American History X. That is a really good movie, but a really brutal movie. God. Just remembering the ending of that movie. Ugh. And the beginning. Anyway. Underground ground scan ritual. Thanks, David. In the middle. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, actually, more and more scenes are coming back to me, and it's like... You watched American History X in fifth grade. Do you mean that's how old you were? Or did you actually watch? Sh surely you didn't watch it like in fifth grade, right? The teeth. Uh, yeah. uh, no curve stomping for me, thanks. Ugh. Brutal movie. Really sad movie. Really sad movie. Uh, do you think you should buy, they should buff recon armor? I I do have an idea that we were talking about the other day for power armor. So recon armor right now is in a spot where you just basically never use it unless you just get it. It's like too expensive and it's actually worse than flak vest uh, for protecting important organs. So I think with power armor, they should make it so... There, there's a couple things they can do with recon armor. One is they can make it so it increases your speed a little bit. I would probably use it then, honestly. If it gave me it gave me a little bit of a speed boost at the expense of maybe a little bit of armor on the chest like it does currently, it might be worth using in on certain pawns and certain scenarios or maybe even on your whole colony. So that would be a good start. But the thing that I would really like to see is that recon armor has a chance to make you unstoppable. Marine armor has a better chance of making you unstoppable and cataphract makes you unstoppable. So for anyone that doesn't know what unstoppable is in RimWorld, it's a gene uh, that if that person gets hit with damage, they don't get stopped. So, like, guns in RimWorld, weapons in RimWorld have stopping power. The stopping power basically is like kind of like a stun. It slows you down for a little bit. And so if they made it so the armors had... Yeah, it's basically stagger from other games, yep. But RimWorld calls it unstoppable, and it calls it stopping power, yeah. But if those power armors gave you like that, that would be really awesome. They would be more worth using for sure. But... Unstoppable does not mean fight to the death. Unstoppable in RimWorld means that you don't get staggered or stunned when you get attacked.
So I think either of those would be kind of nice, but. I don't see them doing it, but it would be nice. But yeah, recon armor's in a pretty weird spot. You want raiders to be unstoppable, though? Yeah, that's the trade-off, right? <laughs> Locust armor's your go-to. Redu pain reduction, yeah. That's the fight till death stuff, yeah. Pain shock threshold. Going, Morden. Uh, I know the devs watch this. I now know 100% that the developers watch. I think I told... We talked about it the other day. So I'm in the developer Discord. Not not developer. A development Discord, which you can join too. It's just a bug Discord. And when 1.5 first came out, um, there were some developers in there fixing things as I was showing and testing it. <laughs> so I did a 1.5 test stream. And I literally went in there on the bug report thing and saw that they were talking to each other and they were fixing things as I was showing it. So definitely some some devs watch at least sometimes. So it was pretty pretty interesting to see. Very like surreal to see the developers talking about my stream. <laughs> but really cool though. Yeah, when I say the development Discord, it's just, it's a bug report Discord. Anyone can join it. If you join it, just make sure you're like, you know, actually trying to help out bug reports and stuff. It's like QA department, yeah. A play tester salary, I wish. <laughs> People are going to be like, isn't that a kill box? Doesn't count. Doesn't count. How much is my wealth right now? Uh, I would guess 450. 470. 470. 470,000. Yeah, I saw that about Discord. It's unfortunate. That's how it goes with everything, right? An awesome new service is made that, that there is a need or a want for. It becomes really popular. They need to become more profitable. The, the line must always go up. They ruin their own service. Another service is born to eventually start the process again. Yeah. Will I ever make another 20-year run? I don't know. We've almost done a 20-year run a couple times on accident. So my first Arconexus run was like 18 years or something. Yeah, specifically, I don't know. Blazy, thank you for the 25 months. Thank you, Blazy. Harry, 28 months. Thank you, Harry. I kind of decided to go charge rifles just for fun. I haven't used them in a long time. Are the underground resources unlimited? Yes. Yeah, the scanners will scan forever. The lamp takes almost an entire geothermal power. Yes. Hey, let's do some uh, fun thing here. Maybe I on how to stop playing with downloading to previous saves. Oh, you mean like reloading previous saves? If you don't have the self-control not to do it and you don't want to do it, then the only thing you can do is put it on commitment mode. 
But I don't think there's anything wrong if you are having fun with reloading. Because also, I have to look at it like, for me, I I know I'm going to play more. Like, I have infinite, infinite time. Like, it's my job to play this. I'm going to play it for many, many hours every week. So, for me, getting to a point in losing sucks. Like, if we get all the way to ship launch, something goes terribly wrong and I lose, you know, that sucks. But I'm going to be at ship launch again not long. For someone that doesn't have as many hours to play a week or a month or whatever the case may be, like... How are you going to practice ship launch if you lose? It's going to take you like three more months of real time to get back there. So I would say, first off, maybe try only reloading at catastrophic things. You save scum like a boss if you want to. Again, do whatever's fun with you. But if you're not having fun with it, because there seems like there's there's no stakes, I would say maybe only reload like if you are going to lose or you're set back to the point where it's like you have like hardly anyone left. Like reload and retry those fights. But I know there's some people that are like, oh no, I got an infection, let me reload. And that's fine if you like doing it. But, you know, it's up to you. Yeah, like, for instance, if if this kid gets to his next growth points and you're playing, and you're not playing commitment mode and he doesn't get what you want, you could reload and have it again. Like, that's pretty excessive. I mean, still do it if you want. What if you're, if it's making you not have fun you can't, like, stop yourself or whatever. Maybe try, like, Honest Man mode instead of Iron Man, where you only reload if something actually catastrophic happens, or just put it on... Put it on Commitment mode from the get-go. But yeah, if you're having fun, it doesn't matter. Keep playing. How are you having fun? So I'm doing this before the ship launch because if we're running around kiting and I need... <laughs> this is really excessive. <laughs> if I need to uh, have someone stop because they're starving and eat food. But we have infinite steel, so screw it. Reload, save, by all F for the game. Yeah, but it's going to be a, a closer save, yeah. I played Dwarf Fortress. Yeah, my playthrough of Dwarf Fortress is up on YouTube. It was fine. The game that inspired Rimworld. One of the games that inspired Rimworld, yeah. It was fine. Had some things I liked, some things I didn't. But overall, it wasn't a great stream game. So I did, um, I played it for about a week. The VODs are up on YouTube if you want to check it out. And then I, I stopped after that. I have anyone that does art in this colony? What time is it? Four, okay. Realize you to your kid getting all negative traits, so I being max and learning. Yeah, that's fine if you want to do it. Like, like I said, the main thing is like, why are you wanting to get yourself off of reloading? Is it because it's not really fun? There's no stakes anymore? If that's the case, then yeah, it could be a problem, right? Here we go, speak of the devil. The devil. All right, let's see, kid. Kind. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. Uh, I do need another cook, but he didn't get that. We'll still get this. Um, the passion on him. We can always raise that up, maybe. All right. Nice. Jealous, tough, kind. Nice, nice, nice. When was the last time I reloaded? I don't think I've ever reloaded. Other than like a bug or something, yeah. I don't think I've ever played on anything other than commitment mode. What games do I play on my own time? I don't have time to play games off stream generally. Um, but I like all genres of games. Back when I did have time to play games off stream, I would play a, a lot of different things. But one of the things that would surprise people is I was playing... I never really talked about it, but I was playing Apex back then. This was a couple years ago. I was playing Apex Legends. And then it turned out that I ended up getting a, uh, a a bounty, so a Twitch sponsor for an hour of Apex. And it was when I was playing Apex a lot, without people knowing. And I got on Ape, Apex on the stream for a bounty, and I went out, and we ended, I ended up getting a win on the very first time out. Top kills, top damage on the team as well. And people were like, wait a friggin' second. <laughs> but yeah, I like almost every genre of game. I just don't really have time to 
play them as much or get good at them anymore, but it was really, it was a really fun moment. I think I saved that VOD specifically because of that. <laughs> or just leaves the last, yeah, yeah. You can also change your reload interval. I think you can put it like down to like a half day or something if you really want. Well, that sucks. A YouTuber went so far to say that RimWorld's trying to actively take the wind out of sails. Yeah, those people are ridiculous. Yeah. I'm an update and immediately after it was announced, Anomaly was showcased. Yeah, well, the, the people that are saying that have no idea what they're talking about because you so far, RimWorld DLC has been like clockwork. Why do people think that me and a bunch of other people were like, there's probably going to be a RimWorld DLC soon. It wasn't because we know anything. It's because literally the amount of months of development between every DLC has been the same. So for someone being like, oh, they're releasing a RimWorld DLC because they're trying to smother Dwarf Fortress is absurd. So... <laughs> Is there a mod that auto saves like when a raid happens? I don't know. That'd be an inter interesting one. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me know if you find one of those. I wouldn't use it, but I would tell people about it. They were complaining about the release date because it was the same day. It is silly, yeah. Inspired by the CLC? Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to be on the fence about it. I see why, too. Only maintain your core pawns. The rest is just like you can do whatever you want. Slave Rebellions are fun. Uh, if you haven't tried Dongo, we did a run with a mod called More Slavery Stuff. If you haven't tried that mod out and used a lot of slaves, you should try it out. If you're not, like I said, if you're not opposed to using mods, it's pretty crazy. There is a mod that does it? Okay. Elf Fortress. <laughs> Funny thing is you can be a fan. Yeah, I don't understand... It's human nature, like tribalism is human nature. God, one of the examples that I... So, early on, the stream's primary game was Darkest Dungeon. And I would play some other games that were, like, similar. But I would have people come in and be like, this is literally a clone of Darkest Dungeon. I was like, okay, why is it a clone of Darkest Dungeon? They're like, well, it's turn-based combat, and each team has four people on it. And I was like, so is Darkest Dungeon a clone of early Final Fantasy? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like... Everything is derivative. Everything can be like, yeah, there are some actual clones out there, but I'm so glad there can't just be one game of each genre, right? <clears throat> if it's a clone, if it's a terrible game, then hopefully it fails or it will fail or whatever. But like, for me, I've always wanted more games in a genre that I like. Your mom is derivative. Everything is derivative. Everything. There's nothing new under the sun. Every story has been told. It's always been a weird thing. It's like, all right, so you really like the first Darkest Dungeon. Wouldn't you want more games that are similar to that style if you really like it? Like, no, I'd rather there only be a Darkest Dungeon 1, no other game like it ever, and them to never update it or add anything else to it. It just stays in its current condition. Like, yeah, no, no thanks, no thanks. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, tribalism around everything, just human nature. Now, there is also clones, right? Of course. Like, everyone, I think, has seen those advertisements for a game where it's like... It's like... Arthur... The... The Dread Knight. And it's literally Arthas from... From WoW. <laughs> Try our new game. Land of Battlecraft. With our lead character, Arthur. It's like, yeah, there are clones for sure, but... You had a Mega Spider migration. Oh, I haven't seen one of those in forever. You had a self tame. Man, Corey, you ran into two like rare things overlapping. That's pretty cool, yeah. I last time I had a Mega Spider um migration, which I didn't even know it could happen until that point, was like a tundra run like four or five years ago. <laughs> so Diablo 2 is a clone two is a clone of Diablo. True. 
buy so many tables. We have infinite steel. And when we do the ship launch, I'm going to be kiting around the walls a lot. And if someone's hungry or starving, it allows me to just run them in, let them eat really quick. So they don't get the minus three while we're out there doing all this. So might as well do it. Everything is team sports. You're a clone, Trisha. But yeah, just getting things ready for ship launch. Floodlights don't block wind turbine. Interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't check that. 3D rim rolls. Angles of giving birth. No, no, no. <laughs> so I've only seen one game with a live birth where you see it. And that's too many for me. Played that one on stream. Ugh. It was Outlast 2 for anyone that's wondering. Outlast 2. And the the camera's literally pointed straight at this woman's groin. Like, yeah, I don't need this. Was it graphic? Yeah. <laughs> no. People at the time were like, I don't know if you should be playing this on on stream. And I was like, I didn't know. But yeah. that playthrough is up on YouTube as well. I don't I wonder if it not monetized in the desert. So not sure if that makes a difference. Uh, there are only certain maps that migration can happen. Yeah, desert's one of them. But it doesn't give you like higher chance of mega spiders. So that's a pretty rare. Fair one. I had to watch a video of childbirth in health class. Oh. Ugh. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> First thing's alive, then checks out giving birth. Yeah, but I don't need a game zooming in on it. Yeah. Getting hung up about weird things. I'm not getting hung up about it, but I didn't need to see a video game zoom in on someone giving birth either, right? It doesn't mean that I'm saying all the other things are not as bad. The whole point of that game was to be gross, right? It's like we play through Scorn for Halloween as well this year. And there's a scene where your character is naked and you look down and you see his groin and this this device, this like Geiger device flaps up his genitalia and latches onto it and starts suctioning it. Yeah, uh, you know, the human biology is just just nature, but I, I don't necessarily look forward to seeing that part in a game. <laughs> so. But anyway. It's not like I wouldn't scrub my eyeballs afterwards and like went went to showed up to try to repent somewhere, but Scorn discussion? Oh man, my Scorn playthrough is up on YouTube as well. It's br it's such such a gross game. <laughs> Bows right outside, so burning them. Yeah, yeah, I am. It's a game, all right. It's not that I'm hung up on those things. It's just that that, along with a lot of other stuff in the game, are gross. But that's the whole point of those ones. Yeah. Prey was really good. Yeah, I really liked Prey. Thinking a dump is just nature, but you don't want a camera in a game to zoom up on someone's butthole. Yeah, that's that's a good point. <laughs> Synthread. I think Synthread kind of... That's another thing they, they should change. So Synthread, you have no real good way to get it yourself, and it's not a great material. I mean, it's fine. I think there should be a way to make Synthread, like... It'd be kind of interesting if you could combine just, like, a little bit of steel or something with cloth to make Synthread, you know? Yuck, other people's yums, God. Like super, yeah. It's just not a reliable material that you can get, right? I mean, neither is Hyperweave. Hyperweave is really good. Was it worse than the horror snacking on the children? Oh, and Gord, yeah. Oh, I feel bad about Gord. I actually liked Gord overall. I think it had its problems, and I felt like once I realized that I you needed to play it more like an RTS than a colony management, it really clicked. My Gord playthrough is also up on YouTube. The developers reached out to me and they were like, hey, we made... Thank you for covering Gord. They were like, we really had high hopes for the game. 
but it kind of flopped and it hasn't done very well but thank you for for playing through it we'd like to send you an art piece and they made me an art piece and shipped it from uh the uk or wherever they're from i just got it it's like a char it's a, a charcoal drawing from something from from gourd i didn't even yeah um but i felt bad because i actually liked gourd overall and it ended up being pretty decent but i guess the game kind of flopped and they were sad about it so Devs are one them to be rare and sensitive, yeah. Mod for that, that's right. Going Vegemite, they were the 21 months. Very much appreciated. Sometimes concepts don't take off. Yeah, so the thing about Gord is honestly, and what, like I said, what really made it click for me eventually is Gord looks like a colony management and builder game. However, how it actually plays even though it has that as the visuals is it plays much more like an rts where your colonists are like scvs or probes or something from starcraft whatever you want to call them when it when you start treating them like stupid workers as far as like you have to take care of them you can't have them mine minerals across the map and not expect them to get attacked that sort of thing the game felt a lot better and it kind of all like locked into place but they really did not go with that like RTS angle, I feel, on the verbiage of on the game page or like advertising or whatever. So I liked Gord overall. It was fun. Uh, I also feel like Gord didn't have enough replayability. But anyway, I, I liked it overall, but the developers very nicely sent me a charcoal drawing from the game. Gord, G-O-R-D, croak guy playthrough. Drunk. I had to start. Restart tomorrow. Wish you luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, that was really nice of him. I kind of felt bad. I was like, I was like, yeah, that is unfortunate. I actually really did like Gord overall. Ever played Frostpunk? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I like Frostpunk too. Looking forward to uh, the second Frostpunk. Um, get these extra chairs, Bill. I'll make some extra walls. And I think we, we should be ready. The queue. I know, yeah. I looked into that a little bit, but I haven't found... I had some people reach out on Discord that I need to reply to that might be able to code something like that. And check out Gord. I liked it, yeah. You can always check out my playthrough of it if you want to before you, you try it out if you want. It's, um, it's not edited, but the full playthrough of Gord, it's kind of edited. I, I cut each of the missions into its own episode. I'd also say that episode one is like the tutorial, so it might not look as interesting. You might... Might want to check out episode two to get a real idea of how Gord feels. Iron Hive, I haven't heard of that one. I will tell you though, I so Steam Next Fest, I usually try a bunch of games and I found something that we were talking about clones. It feels almost like a clone of Command and Conquer and I, I do not care. It is so fun and it's very much like, feels like the era of like Red Alert 2, Red Alert 3. And it's called uh, Tempest Rising, I believe. Tempest Rising. The demo is still up. Like, the music feels like... It all feels like Command & Conquer. I want a Command & Conquer Generals remake. Not associated with these people at all, although maybe I'll reach out to them. Tempest Rising, if you like Command & Conquer, like classic Command & Conquer. Uh, not class. well... Midlife Command & Conquer. It's it's basically Command and Conquer. Like instead of Tiberium, it has something called Tempest, but it's it's basically Command and Conquer. Right now, the demo lets you play one mission with each of the two factions, which is basically GDE and Nod, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, but it's fun. It's fun. I hope that ends up being a good game when it comes out. Hope every game is a good game. But are you going to make a guide on how to do the? Hang on. Kiting defense? I have a little bit of that. So I have a um, a guide called Combat Basics, and part of it goes over kiting. So if you haven't watched my Combat Basics guide for RimWorld, that one does have some kiting in it. But I am going to do a no kill box guide at some point. Uh, I'm still using Randy. Yeah. He's pretty active at the beginning of the day, but has gone to sleep a little bit. Oh, textiles are saying makes a lot of them redundant. 
Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what... I, like, that's kind of an extension of, like, we were talking about with recon armor. I wish that more of the options weren't just linear like that, right? Because then you figure out how to get to the top the best, and then you go straight to it. So having, like, more utility on some things than others, and there is a little bit of that, like, right? Like, some things were really cold maps you want instead. But I do wish, in general, there was more things where you had options rather than this is the best thing. And that's not just a RimWorld problem. Lots of games have that kind of thing, but... Yeah, it would be nice. Like... There's so much they can do with it, but... Well, the table's for it. So, at the end of the game here... Expecting guest. I'm gonna be kiting a lot of people and going out and attacking. And so, raids might get really long, and if someone is starving and needs to eat, I can let them eat at a table. That way we, get, we don't get a minus three for the mood, so... So it's just to have people run in and eat at... Oh, I was going to check uh, art. It's hero, okay. There we go. Yeah, I don't mean like for every circumstance, but it is kind of like unfortunate. Like we're talking about a recon armor where there's like, there's not really a reason to, to get recon armor unless you just like pick some up somewhere early or something. Because flak vest alone is better for survivability overall than the power armor after it, which makes not a lot of sense, right? But yeah, not everything has to be that way, but it would be nice if there are more choices instead of just like, oh, that's the best thing. Let's just get that. All right, so we got our bionics. We got our weapons. We're going to get some statues down. And I think I'm going to have some of my builders go build some extra wall. Like I might as well. ship crash no idea what you guys could possibly give me that I would care about no. all right just lost a wall out here them something to do while we're working on other things. <laughs> the, the Empire's like... Oh, you're building giant superstructures? Can you build hours while you're at it? Um, no, I can't. Sorry, busy. What's the die production? I think I'm just going to throw... Oh, God. I got to be careful with food. I, I got rid of that big patch of potatoes, didn't I? Oh, they can eat packed survival meals. Okay, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Ten resurrection systems. Do you always have planet escape in the back of your mind? Sometimes have quirky goals and no escape. Uh, I like to, at the end of every run, see the credits. So, seeing the credits isn't always the goal, but I always like to end a run with the credits if I can either way. So, like, 
the Sanguifage run was more about getting like crazy base built and lots of vampires and stuff. And the ending that made sense with that one was a uh, royalty ending. And so I went with it, but yeah. Hearing the credits. Do you think they should add more integration between the DLCs? I would like that, yeah. They have done finally a little bit of that, but I would be all for more of it, yeah. I hope Anomaly does some of that. We had a colonist that double generated parents. No, I haven't. He killed his dad. Ten minutes later, a new father showed up. <laughs> Might have been a mod conflict, though. Remember when every animal had a different type of leather? Yeah, a lot of them still do, but yeah, it used to be everyone. Not having armor for hands and feet suck. Yeah. I'm also surprised there's not gloves or anything in, like that in the game. There's a mod for that, I know. I know there is. Josie, uh, I am, but I, I understand. I've been talking about it quite a bit. I understand why it would be so divisive. Because previous, like, if you're someone that just doesn't like any kind of horror trope at all, like they're just not for you, whether you're fighting against them or having them on your side, you're probably not going to be super excited for this expansion. I kept hoping that there was other pillars of it that I've been talking about. Like, so what I mean by that is, like, in biotech, if you were someone that didn't like the idea of children in the game... Well, you still ended up being able to have, like, genes to mess around with and Mechanitor and stuff like that, right? There was other pillars it was built around. Uh, same thing for ideology. Like, there was so many ideologies, like, okay, maybe you don't want to be a humane leather cult, right? But there's so many other options. Uh, but with this one, it's, like, seemingly, so far, it's, like, Horror Trope 1, Horror Trope 2, Horror Trope 3, Horror Trope 4. For someone that likes horror-related stuff, that's awesome. I, I think I will like the expansion, but I can definitely understand this one being more divisive and why some people are not excited or maybe won't buy it because of that or might just turn it off more than any other DLC. Why wouldn't anyone... Yeah, no. What do you mean? There's people out there that don't want humane leather cults? I know, it's surprising to me too. Kim fuel production base, robots farming trees, as far as I can see, selling gas in the open market. <laughs> That's pretty cool, yeah. I like that. Do I have a recommendation on the best scenario to start learning? Losing is fun, 500%. I would say crash landed overall. So how it ends up working is the extra wealth you get from crash landed gives you about the same size raids as starting tribal because getting extra pawns gives you so many more raid points. With a crash landed, you start with a research, you start with a couple guns, including a bolt action, that's really good. So if you're just starting to, to learn, losing is fun, or 500%, the answer, is, as usual, is whatever will make you continue with it. So if you have more fun tribal, you can absolutely learn it tribal. That's how I used to, that's how I started 500% actually was tribal. But I do feel like it's a little bit easier to learn it on, um, learn it on crash landed probably. Rituals kind of won you over. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Rituals. They sound amazing. How's 1.5 running? 1.5 is running fine, but it's actually no better performance than 1.4, unfortunately. Yeah, I keep hoping that too, but with each preview, I'm thinking more and more that it's not going to happen, yeah. We shall see. Cherry picking a tough on for Ray and using the abduction tip ritual. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about us being able to choose who it picks. I thought it was gonna be like the join ritual. Hmm, that's an interesting thought, yeah. 
God, imagine trying to click through all the pawns attacking really fast to try to choose who to abduct. Oh man, you might be right. Right. You think they should make the scenario editor more intuitive? Uh, that might be a good idea. I mean, there are a lot of people that don't know you can fine tune, not even just the difficulty thing, but the... Maybe they should make the scenario editor part of the custom difficulty settings or something. I don't know. But I do run into that quite a bit where people don't even... Like, they'll see me make a custom scenario and they're like, what? I didn't know you could do that. Maybe making it more obvious at least. Yeah. I think Anomaly might raise the difficulty with all the crazy events. Yeah, I don't know. It has the potential to, but who knows? And turn on traits with T to look through pawns faster. I think that's a mod. Because T is just beauty here. Unless you're looking at someone that's, like, beautiful. But key in the base game is just beauty. I don't think there's any fast way to look through enemy pawns outside of mods. Base design for this is just for fun. Playing bigger maps might end up being more standard. Oh, I didn't destroy the door. Whoops. Shouldn't matter, but we have so many people. Oh, someone the other day was on the stream. I don't know if you're going to watch this or you're here again. But they were saying, why destroy the hives? The hives just go away on their own if there's no more insects it's it's not how it works it's the opposite so you might be you must be using a mod and i told you i would i would show you next time we had an infestation reproduces in 8.3 days and these will just keep reproducing if you want more bugs to spawn then yeah leave them around but if you don't want more bugs to spawn then you need to destroy them Out of way, please. Thanks. Bug juice. Doesn't come in a jar. You guys remember that? Oh my god. Forgot all about that. Uh, one of my, like, uh, my great grandmother had the Disney Channel for a little bit when I was a kid, and I remember going over there and there being a show on, like, a reality show that was just kids at a camp. It was called Bug Juice. <laughs> I haven't thought about that in a while. Well, I do a max map size run. Probably not, because it just makes the game run slower. A bug cult? Yeah, I've been wanting that. I thought we were going to get that when Ideology came out. So, for anyone that doesn't know, with Ideology, people, uh, when it came out, people, I guess you would call it data mine. Not, it's not really that, but... Anyway, people found in the game files, and it's still there, that there is a background in the game about a kid that was raised by bugs and is friends with the bugs, you cannot get it in the game. It's not a background that you can get. You can't even add it through dev mode, but it's in the game files as its own file. So were they planning on doing more bug stuff a long time ago and maybe having a background that was friendly with bugs or something? Don't know, but I was really hoping we would get something like that with ideology because some of the previews in ideology showed tunnelers having insects in their base and we were like oh tunnelers we're gonna be friends with the bugs and it ended up not being the case but
next DLC. I mean, this has been in the game files since right before Ideology, but I, maybe. Maybe. It is interesting that I think all the factions in the game, aside from Ancients and Insects, have had some kind of change and improvement over the years, right? You got multiple pirate factions, you got multiple uh, tr tribal factions, including the fire-breathing imps. You got lots of new mechs over the years and new mech-type attacks over the years. But the insects have only been nerfed. They've never had anything new added. So. I was kind of hoping, again, that this would be like an archaeology DLC and bugs would be a part of it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they did get a new way to spawn with the uh, packs, right? But I guess they got toxicity sensitivity, so they actually are stronger on toxic soil. So they did get that. That's true. It doesn't feel like much. Development doesn't remember everything. Oh, yeah, I know that for sure now because when I was doing some of the bug report stuff, like I said, in, in that development bug report forum, uh, there were several developers like, what? I had no idea that was in the game. <laughs> Which makes sense, right? I probably have more, like, actual played hours than most of the developers. Can't play without the insect joined mod these days. I tell you, I would hate a ranged insect, though. God. Ranged insects would suck. I think the only thing worse would be exploding insects, like banelings. No hydralisk? No, no, no. No hydralisk, no banelings, please. What about mutalisk? No, 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 no. <laughs> the Zerg expansion for RimWorlds. Also, never know, unless you're one of the developers, what changed to something else, too. Like, there very well could have been like, all right, we're going to make ranged insects, and then it didn't really fit somewhere, and then they do this horror thing, and then there's some kind of, like, horror, horror creature that has the ranged attack that they would have put on a... Because we saw in one of the preview images of what looked like acid spit from something, right? I think it was the flesh thing. And so, you never know, like, what was going to be and then it became something else. Uh, Kai in the sky. You're the four months British brat. Think of the 32 months British brat. Very much appreciated. I feel like that just happened to go to one of them was anniversary, one of them was resub. That's right. Thank you, British Rat. Thank you, Kai. Figure out why your base looks so strange. Is it the floor? Did you remove the entire mountain? This isn't a mountain. Uh that's all that's all concrete. So that's just concrete flooring. Have acid spit and but yeah, that's true, yeah. Insects from Factorio. Do you like a rimming ship with DLC? That might be interesting. Yeah, I don't know if they'll ever do it, but. I've made a parking lot, yeah. On the fence out the new DLC. You're hoping for more adventure and world stuff, yeah. Yeah, like, I'm excited about it. Like, any new RimWorld content is good for me. It's good for my family. It's good for my business, you know, and it, it will breathe some fresh air into the into a game that I feel like I have to play anyway. I mean, I still enjoy playing it, but, you know, it's going to be new stuff, so. But so far, based on the previews, it feels almost, depending on how the threats are and whatnot, it feels almost like it's one of those that you turn on for a couple of the benefits not like that you build playthroughs around, but maybe, like I said, who knows? We got one more preview and then we got the full um, full release, so it could be that we're completely wrong about it, but it does look more like royalty in that sense. Like, does anyone turn royalty on because they like 
fighting mech clusters, there's probably some people. Probably not. But there are people that turn royalty on and deal with mech clusters in order to get psi casts, in order, in order to get low shields, in order to get mono swords, right? So it might be the same with this. It's like, does anyone turn this on after a while because they want, what was it called? Revenants? Because they want revenants kidnapping their colonists? Or do they deal with that in order to get serums and potentially ghouls if they're good or whatever, right? Or the new weapons, you know, like maybe the Hellcat rifle is like the best gun the game's ever had. We have no idea, but I don't know. Time will tell, but yes, cataphract armor. That's right. That's right. Royalty just feels like normal game to you. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, that's another thing too, is it sounds like based on how it was talking, it sounds like you opt into these things for some some way. Like it almost sounds like someone asks you, right? Like I think one of the first previews was talking about like making a deal with the void. And is that literal? Like, do you have a dark figure show up and it's like, hey man, here's this awesome book. It's called the Necronomicon. <laughs> It's going to teach you a new way of research, but once you open it, things are going to change. Is it is it like that? Like, do you, I feel like it probably will be something like that because of how the Mechanitor works. Can you make a lowball offer to the Void? <laughs> That's a cool concept. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that one. That would be that would be pretty decent. That way you can decide whether like. Yeah, I want to dabble in the darkness and open this book and have this bad stuff happen. Or you could be like, nah, I just want to sit back and use the items that are new instead. There was a lock on the book in the preview, yep. I'm really interested in the new weapons because... I I want there to be more variety and good weapons. I'm really hoping the weapons are good. You know which one I'm really hoping is good? The crossbow. I base this on nothing other than what other games have done. For some reason, crossbows in games, a lot of them have the same problem that games have with shotguns. And it's that they're like, oh, crossbows aren't a long range weapon. It's like, are, have you have you seen a crossbow in real life? Crossbows aren't like, like, anyway, I hope the crossbow is actually decent range. Have you done history? <laughs> Have you ever seen someone hunt with a crossbow? Like, Jesus. Think and kill like an elk from freaking forever away with pinpoint accuracy. And I know Rimworld is not realistic, but I really hope that the crossbow is a decent range good weapon. That's the weapon that when I see the previews, that's the one I'm looking forward to trying out the most. But... I have a feeling that based on how all other games do with crossbows, it's not going to be as great as I'm wanting, but melee gods get their crossbows. <laughs> crossbows. Yeah, I'm hoping that too, because it says something about it having toxin, right? So it does nothing. Hey, anything to do with the horror and this is the first DLC you're not playing on Perch? Yeah, I was afraid about that. Yeah. Bariza incoming, yeah. It's uh, the obelisk. Maybe you activate it through. Yeah, that could be too. Yeah, that makes sense. Because that would be even closer to the Mechanitor start, right? As far as how you choose to do it. Long range. Yeah, and, and high accuracy is what I hope as well. Like if it's not long range, I hope it's really good accuracy. I've ever played Last Spell. I played Last Spell when it was in super early access and I liked it. But I haven't had the opportunity to go back to it. Hopefully sometime, though. Are we going to go out and trade anymore? If not, I'm going to get rid of these horses. I don't think we need to. Let's put one in here. I'm 
I'm sure that horse is going to be fine. Let me finish last spell. It's fun, but super brutal. Losing seven hour runs, which essentially is like ship launch. They're doing that again. Yeah, I got to show that bug to the developers too. Uh, someone else said they were having that happen yesterday. We don't... So we're sending a horse with brain damage that's pregnant into space. I'm sure she's going to be fine. Like, the space radiation will probably cure her brain problems, and she'll land on some planet and start a new race of, like, horse-dominant things. Hopefully she grows thumbs pretty quickly from the radiation as well. Give the horse Luciferium before we send it off. <laughs> hmm. Strangest thing you've sent into space. We sent a Thrumbo into space named Tesla. We launched today. I don't know that I have time. I was looking at it though. Specific philosophy behind the base design because you can't make any sense of what you're seeing. <laughs> so the base design for the actual base that we live in, there's no philosophy behind it. It was just for fun. We made an hourglass. The outer walls and all these things actually do have a purpose. It's for raiders to attack so that we can buy time to pop out and attack them. Also, I might want to put some extra auto doors in since we are now not using assault rifles. Like right here would be a good spot to put some. Now that I'm looking at this. Oh, yeah, that's... I never thought about that. Maybe in the DLC, we'll be able to send one of the horrors to space. That'd be pretty cool. What, is it, what do they keep calling them in the previews? Entities. Entities, that's it. Here is an awesome game called RimWorld, but once you open it, things are going to change. <laughs> and maybe not for the better. <laughs> He's a dark visitor. I knew it. Yeah, we might as well fix those too, yeah. We're we'll trying Amazing Cultivation Simulator. It's on my to-lookout list, I just don't have time. April was originally, if they didn't announce a DLC, April was originally going to be like, I'm going to try out a bunch of things. A bunch of games. But the RimWorld developers heard that and quickly rushed out a DLC just so I wouldn't. Hey, has anyone tested if raiders will attack? Um, nah, they, we tested. Never mind. We did test it. We tested it in this run or the. I was gonna say, will raiders attack the new uh, wall lights if they're they're on outer walls? The answer was yes. Yeah. Probably don't need to do this either, but might as well get that little bit of light increase while we're running out. Why not? I know. Might as well be a little over prepared. Of course, we can prepare forever, but I don't think we need to necessarily. Let me click that wall. Uh oh. Those are in the wrong spot. It's all right. No one's going to notice. It's fine. Um, do. We don't have, I'm not really growing anymore. I'll still use what we have, I guess. I mean, live, welcome in. Do you continue the game when you send off the ship? You can if you want. I typically just use that as a stopping point, but. You can definitely do so.
Oh, where are we putting that art at, by the way? Hero been making that? Now people will come in and think I made the get the base out of gold. Excellent. Oh, I never unspinned it. Alright, that makes sense. When in paint become a thing, 1.3. Yes, ideology, 1.3. Because Ideology has their own colors. And that added Pawn favorite colors as well. And that's when they added it. So Tinctoria and Die was added with 1.3 Ideology release. Oh, this playthrough. Me? No. no this one will end. Have you missed that all the time? I'm not sure. What is Tinctoria's fertility sensitivity? 100%. Okay. How much food per colonist? A colonist baseline will eat two meals a day. So if you're playing on like 100%, like standard difficulty, and you're harvesting and things immediately, replanting immediately, turning it into just simple meals, and you have year-long growing, that ends up being about 20-ish crops per person. Paint feels new even though it's not, yeah. What is my favorite color? Uh, my favorite color is blue. That's right. I'm just a basic so blue is my color. It's going, Nick, welcome in. Still no new bike, by the way, Nick. I just haven't had time. I had time. I've been saying that for two years, I know. He's wasting the umbrella. Yeah, we're talking about that too, yeah. <laughs> the friggin' paint sound on there have a please paint the one door in the top right of the hourglass oh yeah no worries i did yeah it's that same like orangey gold color as the rest of it yeah Two thousand blocks. All right. <clears throat> it's not painted. It is painted. You can't. That's not a material. Steel door. Painted. It's like pumpkin colored. Is there a way to automate die? No, I really wish there was. Wish. <clears throat> the door below that one? Let me check. That one's painted. It's just hard to tell because it's held open. The extra wall is the target rate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ever done a spiral base where the maze around it, the kill box, the little room scattered throughout? No, not exactly. No. Closest is probably the bullseye base I made in, uh, <laughs> made in the bow only run. How does things take forever to break? I was thinking about the racetrack today. I was as well, yeah. <laughs> That's the one reason why I did that. Yeah. I'll never forget. That's one of my favorite episodes up on YouTube. The edited episode. Which run was that? Anyway, the, the, um, the name of the episode is like 
the racetrack troll or something like that. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. It was the first biotech run. It's pretty good. I read, oh, I read that. It's so good. Yeah, it would be to hold all these open. Honestly, it would be better for me to just rip this wall down at this stage, but I have it just for the fun of the design in this one, but yeah, it would be better. Yeah. Why are raiders so stupid that they attack random walls? That's a good question. I usually don't even do this in no killbox runs. I'm just doing it to, to show it. So I have some extra time. When this drops on YouTube, you leave a dislike. It's already on YouTube, yeah. Feel free to go ahead and hit the like or dislike button over on YouTube now. It helps out on the stream, but also it helps out the algorithm after the stream becomes a VOD. All right. I'll paint the... I'll paint this. Okay. What color was it? Oh, it was orange. Right, right, right. All right, there we go. All right, come on. Come paint it. No die left. You're going to have to wait on the die. I'm sorry. Can we get a fancy door for no reason? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> for the autobahn trad, you place it at the end of the tunnel? Uh, I typically did, yeah. Because the raiders are going to try to break it if they can get to it. There's no dislike button on Twitch. You know what is a good wall to attack there's already some logic in the game on where certain raiders try to go so they could do that right but then you run into the problem of does that make every raider a sapper or breacher i don't know should it be that the longer a the longer a raider is on the map maybe they change their there you go look at that There you go. The door is painted. All right. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> Perfect. Beautiful. You tried in creating an enhanced AI mod, you gave up after a while. There's lots of things they could do, right? It's a steel door. It is, yeah. It's burnable, yeah. Do you think the new type of monster will attack raids and traders? Oh, like the one that does... Hey, I don't know. The one that does, like, the um, hypnotizing, kidnapping, whatever the crap it does. I kind of hope not, in a way. What if it could hide with the traders? Nice paint matching skills. Looks good. Looks good. A different color. Ah, they're both orange. Orange is orange, right? Orange is orange. I'll fix it, don't worry. Metal horror thing. Oh, the, um, those are the, the parasites, right? Yeah. Orange is orange. Heard it here first. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, uh, we can speculate, of course, like we've been talking about, but like, I, I hope that there's also, it seems like there will be. I was going to say, I hope there's also some, like, big events, not just, like, intra-colony stuff, like the, the thing and whatnot. But, I mean, we already read about the, like, cultists and stuff, right? So. Maybe you get infected from traitors. Yeah, that'd be kind of... That would make a lot of sense.
Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna go trade anymore, so... Fifty shades of orange. Paint your car's door. <laughs> That's a good idea. Like, have a white car, but the door is just, like, cream. Just slightly off. You're like, wait, what happened to your door? What do you mean? It's not the same color as... It is. Although these days, that's not trolling anymore. That's, uh... Gaslighting now, right? It's such a, such a buzzword now that's taking over everything. Everything you do now. You joke around with someone. You're gaslighting me. In fact, a wolf that visit your base. <laughs> Imagine... I don't... Man, I don't think they'll do it. I hope, though, that we can... The preview made it sound like we can be pretty evil, but I would love to have a playthrough where you get to be, like, the force behind this. So imagine, like, you can infect places with the parasite, you know? <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. I'm gonna... I'm gonna have this enemy base crumble from within. Get pranked, bro. Don't riz on your gas lights. Uh, Trisha is definitely, like, Gen Z... Gin Alpha, really. Right? Right, Trisha? It's way hype. <laughs> How was it you got to test moment five? And unstable? Anyone can do it, yeah. So basically, go onto Steam, right click on RimWorld, click on betas, and then from the drop down, just click on unstable. Unstable is 1.5. So yeah, I, I'm not doing this out of any special privilege or anything like that. Just anyone can play on 1.5, unstable at the moment. And that's how you do it. Just go to Steam, right click on RimWorld, click on betas from the drop down, just click unstable. It won't say 1.5, it'll just say unstable. I think it's like unstable test or something. What is that for? It's a monument to our glory. Did it say you can create monsters? Might have missed that too. Sounds like we can make uh, ghouls. I guess that might be. It's like the one in Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah. yeah. This is an ice wall. It's like a hundred stories tall. It's impenetrable, really. Nothing bad could ever get through the giant ice wall. Yeah, no problem. Massive eye. <laughs> Adds an anti-empire standing your deserter. That would be cool too. I always, I always wonder, like, what if royalty came out now? When they came out with royalty, they had hardly any staff, right? Like, the team was a lot smaller. The amount of money they had was a lot smaller. Like, what if they made royalty now? I would love for them to remake royalty or add on to royalty as maybe like a paid smaller DLC, but I don't think they ever will. Yeah. Royalty has a lot of systems in it that have a lot of potential that would be really cool. Like, that could have been where they added, like, the government and world research and stuff, right? But I don't think we'll ever get it outside of mods. Kind of hope they give royalty an overhaul. Yeah, that would be awesome, but... Polish joke. <laughs> Might be able to mutate animals into flesh beasts. Giant rat. Oh yeah, the the rat wolf, the rat ogre looking thing that I kept saying was a Skaven unit. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. You know, in the pin next to that, it showed a uh, a thrumbo shambler. Do you think that's no? It's not that. I was gonna say, what if that's like the a crossover between a shambler and a rat. Maybe the next preview is something that they haven't seen. We haven't seen anything in a single um, in a single preview. It's like crossbreeding animals. We were joking about that initially, Sue, because in the lore primer for RimWorld, it talks about them creating animals, including creating talking dogs and status symbol animals like Thrumbo. And we're like, what if we can make Thrumbo kittens? As a new RimWorld player, most 
games are for you, like mature language. Still don't get the. So, I think it cut off your message. So don't get what. Any bounties? I have a trailer bounty that's a minute long. Any more global events and stuff? Muffalo chinchillas and. <laughs> Marriage is on. Yeah, I don't know why I cut the message off it. But... Yeah, I'm really hoping there's something, a big shock behind the fourth preview. Hang on. What's been going on with these uh, marine? Like hardly anyone's wearing them. So they're either making really bad ones and they're getting smelted or. I'm going to keep a closer eye on it. Hmm. There's also a wedding taking up some time, so. I think the whole thing might be an extended April Fool's joke, I doubt it. Oh, it's all melee. that door open, kid. All melee tribals coming into 22 master work charge rifles. <laughs> I mean, is it what? I think he had a social fight. Yep. Now we gotta be careful because they okay, they're starting to get collision, yeah. Yeah, I think we're fine. <laughs> Probably done around, just so you know, when you prepare dinner foods. Um, whenever you can go ahead and do it if you. Well, I'm trying to decide whether I'm gonna see that movie tonight or not. What do you think? Do you think it'd be better for me to do that tonight or tomorrow night? Until so Tuesday, I already I'm seeing Godzilla Kong with Mod Wife on Tuesday. I want to do. What movie? Uh, we're gonna see Godzilla Kong on Tuesday. But I'm gonna go see Monkey Man on my own. Freestyle kill box, yeah. Run invalidated. Validated. Our armor for some reason, like once you make Masterwork Cataphract, they didn't want to wear them until you sign them to. Yeah, it's because the, um, it's because the, or usually, um, uh, flak vest are is so much protection for the chest. It's like marine armor on the chest, so we have some, like, there's a, wait a minute. Fourteen, any worker. Oh, we're out of uranium. Is that what? No, uranium's up there. Okay. I thought at first they weren't making it, but no, they have everything. Okay. Need to watch when one of these gets done, though. Man, it looks cool. Yeah, yeah, it should be fun. Thanks for the clothing guy. Oh yeah, my pleasure. For the first time in 400 hours, your people don't have to care about tattered clothing anymore. <laughs> An armor specialist? That'd be kind of cool, yeah. Grog 
great place, gravy girl. Out of all the places you could eat your, your paste meal or whatever you had there, I think it was paste. Now we're at six. Wait, where are we having tonight? Which one are we having? I'm leaning towards now. Uh, oh. Wait, what happened? Oh, when I move this, I never set the uranium one back up. That's what's going on. I can't believe I didn't. I never set that back up. When we redid the whole area, I just never put that back there. There we go. Growth moments. All right, kid. Sanguine. Excellent. Creamed corn pop tarts. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with either one. Whatever you want. If you end up doing the nugget thing, then I will just make my. Uh, strips separate. But if you do the cheesy pasta or, or tacos or whatever, yeah, I'm fine with going ahead and having it if you want. It's up to you. Good job, kid. Who's uranium? I build a base out of. This is all out of sandstone. This is out of marble, painted marble. but it's still banger. Eileen, the crow. Can I, Eileen? Thank for the 17 months. Twitch thieves, can't believe another heist on you. <laughs> oh, we can't paint that because it's under there, yeah. on walls outside the main walls uh, for enemies to attack them for enemies to attack them during the ship launch encountered the mech water raids yes recently got your base wrecked by them they seem to be active so much faster than infestations or drop pods it's hard to react uh they are a uh, attack immediately raid yep spot or two that was on purpose just a spot or two though what are the perimeter tables and chairs for? That's because when I'm doing the ship launch, if someone gets hungry while we're out fighting, I can just have them eat at a table really quick. That way they don't also get the minus three when they're already getting a debuff from, uh, from starving. Deadly Apes. New Planet of the Apes coming in May. I do like Planet of the Apes. Yeah, I like the newer... I didn't like the the most recent, which has actually been several years. But the new Planet of the Apes series, I mean, I like the original also, and I like... Didn't Tim Burton do one? Is that who did that one in, like, the early 2000s? That one was okay, too. But yeah, I did like all those. Um, we'll see how the new one does. Seems like it has potential, but also has potential to suck. Yeah, <laughs> so I guess that's every movie. The giant wall? Uh, how big is that? It's like 2001, yeah, and the Tim Burton one, yeah. That was okay. 65. <laughs> uh, it has to be a new account, I believe, text that. You could do what we did. I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but the first time we did Factor, I did it under my name, and the second time I did it under my wife's name, and the third time I did it under my business name. Um, probably not supposed to tell you that. But, yeah. That's what we did. Hairball, thank you for the 28 months. Ape kill ape. The Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah. So, 
the newer Planet of the Apes with with Caesar, I liked all of that. But the next one, the, the one that's upcoming, is like way later. Like, isn't it like a couple hundred years later? So like Caesar is obviously not in it. And he's pretty much been forgotten or something. I don't know. You, you order my kid's name? No, 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 I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Does painting concrete make it less ugly for the ponds? No. Step one, find wife. Yeah, I know it's not going to be the thing very one, but my point was if you have someone else living at the same address, you could, you could ask. Or if you, it might even work if you do a different email address, but I, I don't know. It's hourglass base shape just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. Yeah, no worries, just for fun. Do you think we can make this wall so big that... <laughs> I mean, we could stay here and surround the entire base in this. What's need to launch? Nothing. I just don't have time to do it today. So just preparing more just for fun. Um, But imagine having a wall this thick or more around the whole base and then seeing if all the... Uh, the raids end up killing each other before, before the ship goes. What would be a good design to base the world inner condition? The wall protects us. Yeah, I don't know that I feel like doing that, but that would be interesting to see because the raiders would be fighting each other, the ones that are in opposite factions. Mechs would be fighting them. But then you would end up with, like, a mech breach that would just drill a hole through anyway. Incapable violence run hack. <laughs> Siege. Well, I mean, we have mortars for sieges, but really it's the breacher. <laughs> the complete opposite of the no walls run. Only walls. How come the wall isn't made out of solid gold? Uh, solid gold just doesn't have as much HP. That's the only reason that I'm not making it out of solid gold. That's, that's it. When they give up... They would be giving up and they would fight each other too, yeah. Yeah, otherwise I would definitely make this out of solid gold, right? It's, it's just an HP problem, that's it. that's it. No one believes you. There we go, now those are coming out, all right. Are plastial perimeter walls worth it? Plastial walls are worth it anywhere that you need the extra HP, as long as you have enough plastial. Unfortunately, though, um, plastial is needed in a lot of important late game stuff. And so, typically, you only use it where, like, if you're using a kill box, you use it on walls that get destroyed often so that you have longer, before, better chance to repair them longer before they get destroyed. Use them for cover, things like that. Use them for, like, auto doors. But it's just like making your walls out of. If you have infinite plasteel, then absolutely. That's what you would make your walls out of. But generally, you don't really have infinite because you're using it on so many things, late game things. So if you have it, sure. But I would probably suggest saving it for more important things overall. But yeah, plasteel has the highest unmodded HP of any wall that you can just make. I wonder if the DLC is going to change that, actually. I'm still thinking this stuff in the DLC is just painted. We've seen a lot of different color walls, but... Uh, the only thing that we've seen that looks like something new... Oh, the floors. And they mentioned... Uh, what was it called again? Bioferrite floors, right? Maybe there's bioferrite walls. Maybe we'll finally get something stronger than Plasteel. That'd be pretty awesome. Floor is the same color as the walls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, if there's bioferrite walls, yeah, maybe maybe it's stronger than plasteel, or maybe it'll compete with plasteel at least. You know, that'd be kind of nice. Build your own flesh walls. Yeah. Did they talk about bioferrite walls? I I remember the bioferrite flooring. There's so much stuff in the preview. Bioferrite concrete. Lots of containment themes, yeah, so it would make sense that we get some kind of higher HP stuff in general, right? Granite is an option for a shotgun tunnel now. 
Uh, I mean, granite is the highest HP out of, like, the normal stones of the game. So if you do have that, then, yeah, make your stuff out of that until you can graduate to uranium or plasteel. Should you specifically go after granite? Yeah, I guess that's just personal preference. Yeah, I still don't go after granite, but... Guys excited for the new DLC? Yes, new DLC excited for. New patch you can already play. Playing it right now. New double doors, yeah. That'll be interesting to see what the HP on those are too. The ornate double doors are not functionally anything other than making a room fancier, which was what they were supposed to do. But uh, yeah, maybe the other ones will be... The ornate doors have less HP than using two single doors, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to the DLC. For sure. I don't think they can reach those right now, so. Wise colonists will also build separate containment cells using special biofarite flooring and walls. Okay. So yeah, hopefully those are super high HP. No mod? You can do exclamation mods if you want, but basically nothing. No pause and P music. Yeah. Do double doors also have the same trick? No, they don't delete heat. Ornate doors don't delete heat. Which is also weird. We can exclamation mods, towel, but yeah, pretty much nothing. Did you color the inner walls? Yes, you can do that. Uh, you grow Tinctoria plants, and then once you do that, you can paint structures or flooring. You're wondering what was going on with the... Yeah. yeah. The sand, the sand. What's heat delete? So you see this setup? This door deletes the heat of coolers, so you can use this under overhead mountain to vent all of your heat from coolers instead of having a needing like the roof removed somewhere or something but uh yeah the new ornate doors do not work that way for for waiting for the dlc maybe yeah people were saying that yeah yeah doors basically just get rid of heat so disperse heat delete the heat They're like a black hole or heat Um, we could just keep working on more stuff, but I'm just going to let it ride with what we have and wait until my wife tells me dinner's done. <laughs> door chain getting infinite negative. Is that patched? The door chain getting infinite negative was patched, yeah, but this was not. Just use your unstable play and it stopped working. Been working for me, yeah. I'd have to see the exact setup you're doing, but worked in both 1.5 playthroughs I've done. Does coloring walls have a gameplay benefit? No, unfortunately. So if you color a pawn's clothing and a certain percentage of their clothing is their favorite color or their ideology co color, they'll get a plus one mood. But it's not something you can automate, unfortunately. It would be nice if you painted things that color, if they would also get a mood increase from that, but they don't. They don't. The Harmony hadn't heard of it. Stopped working yesterday or day before. So made event room. That's weird, yeah. So what exact? How exactly did you have it up, set up? Did you have it out in the open? And was it under overhead mountain or something else? Because yeah, it still it still works. It's not hot out, so I can't show right now, but it does still work. What's those radio walls? It's just for enemies to attack. How do you learn so much about the game? Do you read the wiki? I don't read the wiki. 
A lot of the things in the wiki can be wrong as well. In fact, I think Smurf was starting to update the wiki. Yeah, he did. He did a stream where he was starting to update it. Um, so how do I learn the things? So a lot of it's through just experience, right? Like you said. But in addition to that, there is a lot of people that are at the stream or in the Discord, the community, that are figuring things out. And then they will share stuff with me or, you know, whoever. And then that will cause us to go test that stuff in, like, development mode. So you can open up dev mode and test stuff pretty easily. And so it's like, with so many people watching and putting hours in all the time, um, it's a pretty big, like, research group almost, right? And then when something is kind of found, we look at perfecting that thing, I guess. Or trying to just dissect how it works. Another thing, too, is the game actually gives you a lot of information that people don't look at. All those little information panes, like the things I tell people about the crops growing and how long it takes and how many you need and fertility sensitivity and stuff like that, that's all in those information panes. Like, you can just see that information in the game. So it's a combination of all those things. Oh, those freaking beavers didn't come to attack. Usually they'll aggro all of them. I just don't want them... You know what? I might just put a wall around the animate... Well, no. Oops, that wasn't a beaver. I say, I might just wall the animated tree into it. You have 3,700 hours as well. Lots of replayability. Writes the deep magic. Under a removable mountain roof, vented into door. It was fine for a few days and then no more. Try, try holding the door open. I know it sounds weird, but even with the roof still above it. Um, is any of it touching a wall or is it out in the open? Because the wall can screw it up too. But yeah, if, if you have it like this, like out in the open, try opening the door holding the door open and let me know if it's working for you. But yeah, it's still working for me. You already made an event room. Gotcha. Always try another small room if you want. Quick reference video, like five, 10 minutes of some basic info, like how many tiles of food. Uh, I have a few of those for some things. Yeah, there's more of them to do on my to-do list as always, but I do have a couple of those like combat basics. More on the way, as always, I guess. All right. Let's switch this back over. The huge sandstone wall is just for raiders to attack. But yeah, it's still working for me, but they're they're patching things like all the time with the uh, 1.5 unstable. So it is possible that they will change that cooler trick. I mean, I guess I can show it working in this room, right? Like I have the extra resources. I'll just here. Yeah, there it is, deleting the heat. Room's getting cold. That's roofed. Doors closed. It's witchcraft! I'm not sure why it's not working for you. Yeah, it's, it's also possible that they changed it for overhead mountain only. That would make sense, too. Um, I don't know. I feel like if they were going to change it, they would change it for all, right? 
Yeah, was yours touching a wall or was it just out in the open? You said it, you said it was the same, right? Just out in the open. Yeah, because it's it's a one by one room, right? So it like disperses, yeah, the heat from the from the rooms surrounding it. Rooms. There's a witch. Mm, okay. Yeah, I don't know then. Yeah. It, I guess it's just an anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> We are talking about that the other day, like, now, every time there's a bug, we have to say that instead. It's not a bug, it's an anomaly. Hey. I'm a devil strand. We're calling it a feature. You're a wizard. It can work different on different maps too, depending on the outdoor temperature, yeah. Some, most maps it works better if it's roofed and the door is held open. Why? I have no idea. Rimworld mumbo jumbo magic, I guess. But on most maps it works better if it, the door is roofed and open. Sometimes, though, it works better if the door's shut and unroofed. Sometimes, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. But. Game first, the colonist or the embryo? I mean, I'm not going to get into, like, an evolution debate, but I'm going to go with embryo. <laughs> it's not a debate, so. Hey, another marriage! Spaghetti code strikes again. All right, uh, we are going to take advantage of that marriage to do the ship launch. I don't have time to do the ship launch today, so I do have a quick trailer bounty, and then I'm going to go get some food, and we'll do ship launch tomorrow with this wedding mood buff. So, uh, and then the ship launch probably won't take the whole stream, so then we'll play around with some other stuff. I'm not sure what yet, though. And, uh, yeah, so let me wrap this up. I don't want to waste any of this marriage mood increase. I do have a bounty really quickly. They only let me do bounties on... Twitch, like, uh, so I, I do have to end the YouTube stream. If you guys from YouTube want to come over, they pay me just on viewer count, and it's just a trailer. So it's like a, a two-minute trailer for a movie or something, and they just literally pay me only on viewer count. So if you stick around for that, uh, it helps support the RimWorld content. Very much appreciated. But let me go ahead and save this before anything else happens. And we'll do the ship launch tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, those of you on YouTube, thank you again. Hit the like button before you head out. It helps the stream. It also helps the VOD after the stream is done being a stream. Uh, but yeah, feel free to come over and hang out on Twitch if you want to help out. No no hard feelings if you don't want to or can't.